back to Vault Tour 2024 Roseville. Uh, we're back with the Alliance format. We're in the final four right now. We uh, have started that a little bit earlier to get uh, through our day here. And so we've also started the stream a little bit earlier. Um, we don't expect the viewership to pick up until the regular scheduled time, but if you're here, thank you very much. And thank you for watching some Keyforge action. We are not going to have commentary on these first few rounds, but we wanted to make sure that the rounds were recorded so that people could look back on some of these top players uh, becoming hopefully the first Vault Warrior of the season, that new title that we have uh, for the winner of a Vault Tour event. So we're going to take it to the table. I'm going to hop out of the room. I'm Josh Swanner with Ghost Galaxy. Thank you for watching Keyforge. to do this, okay. mark of this, tilt to the image.
Okay, hello. Welcome to Vault Tour 2024 Roseville. I'm Josh Swanner with Ghost Galaxy. I'm back for a little bit to introduce a community member that uh, we've had kindly volunteer to uh, commentate this match for us. So we have uh, Gorlami here from the team Reap Out. Gorlami, how you doing? I'm doing good. It's nice and early. <laughs> had a long night yesterday, uh, but I'm excited to watch some Alliance ranking for here. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so I have a couple of tournaments to run. Uh, Gorlami, I'm going to leave you alone here. But uh, Keyforge fans, I believe that you're in good hands. And uh, Rebout's going to take it away. Uh, Sounds good. Thanks, Josh. All right. What do we have going on? Looks like Sunday has played a Winds of Death. Or it's in the discard from a boot. So coming kind of late. So forgive me for uh, anything that I've missed so far. Didn't see what the jar Arr. hit. Gonna I'm wondering play. if he uh, hit the wind of death. Capture one here with this. All right, so Zalador taking an amber here. Going to be doing a damage to the capture. So I assume for the cleansing wave in hand that I see. And then Commandeer is currently online, so that's going to be a nice little chunk of Amber Burst here, so he's going to gain two off that. One, I'll put it here, and then I will heal one. Nice, that's really nice there. Going to go up to a total of five. He's already got one key, so that's it's already a good start. Also love Sunday's Sunday sleeves, the Street Fighter, big Street Fighter fan. Um, all right, it looks like Vargast is taking a little bit of time before he passes turn. Sunday's deck has a lot of answers to a lot of things, so um, definitely have to take your time to figure out exactly what you need to be go ahead and pop this anticipating and for lots. Okay. for those next turns. So, ooh, okay. He played that. He he popped the Mina Jinx serum. Um, that got him a nice extra amber there. So he goes to a total of seven and passes over to some Haunting Witch comes down. He gains one off the Waste Knot, so he's not haunted. He draws two cards. I am not haunted. So now he is haunted. Circle life. And then I am going to ready and draw one card back up to six. Go ahead. One to six. And he passes turn. All right. So not not too many cards played by Sunday. Um, He's probably building up that archive for something for something real nice later. Let's see what Vargas is working towards. And Vargas is up two keys at the moment, but uh, Sunday can just come come back. And forge all the all three keys. I think I'm, logo, in one turn. Take my um, or, I'm not 100 percent correct actually. <laughs> play auto I think it might be two, but uh, he has definitely a lot of ways to swirl, come back to this. So he's not out of the game yet. I didn't see that two armor. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, alright. 
So gains two off of the entropic swirl. The uh, Zalador does have two traits, so you do a total of four damage. And so he takes two damage since the armor doesn't kill him. Auto encoder out online now. He's gonna play another munchling. And then most likely reap for two to go back to six. So here Sunday needs to have an answer, right? So um, takes him off a check or tries to win the game here. Let's see what Sunday's response is. <laughs> Looking to be the last few turns, if anything. I think Sunday might be looking for a creature in the discard pile for potentially BR Geist. That would have helped if there was any other Sanctum creatures with a capture icon. So if the Zalvador would have died, that would have spelled a little bit of disaster, giving Sunday one more turn um, to put his combo pieces together. I'm very interested to see you to learn what he jarred. Um, I know that was a topic of conversation for us quite a bit. Uh, and the second jar hasn't come out quite yet, so... Um, but the game looks... Uh, I, I mean, I think Sunday can swing this if he has the right cards. Um, well of Memory is one of those cards. So he's purging one, two, three. And what is he looking for? Fear Geist. And Boo. And I'll be a stray. Ah, okay. So there you go. Gets one more turn of... Of, of, of being able to take... Margast off key. So he's going to be our Geist the Infernus. He did hit the Infernus, so that hurts most definitely. And he's going to purge his cards, some of those extra amber pips. So great answer from Sunday here. I was arguing with this. Beautiful. I think he saw. Um, Vargast has experienced this one time before in in the Swiss rounds or in, in the two LO rounds. Um, so he loses three amber here, goes down. Um, in check, no longer. And Furnace is down. He definitely would have wanted to see that. And I'll be a stray will come out early. Capture one. Hello, Gorlami. I am back. How you doing? Doing good. The game's the game's looking real, real tight. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Okay, so um, I'm not going to be here for very long. Uh, hello again, uh, Keyforge friends. Um, I'm actually going to introduce you to uh, another community member that we're going to have in and uh, come in here and join Gorlami. Uh, so we have uh, a num another member of the Archon's Corner podcast. Uh, it is uh, Ewok Jr., so he's going to hop in here and take this seat, and I'm going to get out of here. So, Ewok, take it away. Good morning, Keyforge community. Good morning, JR. All right. Thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for letting me come on in. So, we <coughs> are, we just had Sunday have a big turn. Well of Memory, oh, to be our Geist, I'll be a Stray, and a Boo. So, he booed. Vargast, so he could hit some stuff with, so he could get the guys and yep. he hit Infernus. So he took him off of three, um, and took the Albia Stray for 
um, potential security there if he didn't hit anything that was able to take Vargast off check. Yeah, and the Infernus, I was actually talking to someone this morning um, about this matchup. Mm -hmm. having, be, having made top eight for the Alliance, uh, there were some really neat plays that were in this setup. Yeah. But I, honestly, I love Vargas' deck with the double I look up star. Text, yeah. So really, really neat kind of yeah, yeah, uh, MM really versus yeah, GR. Like, if you have a question, what card is it? I love it Jervy. too. I mean, uh, Jervy is a, but if I'm, uh, I'm just coming in, it looks like zero keys uh, to two. Yeah, so Vargas out to a huge lead. But I don't know what he charged, but I think that's probably pretty crucial and why Sunday is on the tail end at the moment. Yeah. There must be something that's stopping them um, from kind of progressing forward. <coughs> and not building up the archive. Are you familiar with what some of these decks is? Deck. Yes. Okay. So really going into that Witch Queen, um, mm -hmm. Winds of Death, Witch Queen. So let's see if that's what was kind of being buried, if that's what he is kind of delayed on. But I think it can definitely go off. And... Yeah, and I haven't seen. Do you know Vargas? Which deck? Queen, can you do which yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Does he have which scaling under control? Because that's going to be the big. The bring are, 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 okay. are what he has. Are so what he has. He has three of them. <coughs> and while bring row is great, it's not something that I'm going to be able to do. He's got a wall of text. However, Sunday does not have a core control. Center of my battle. Okay. So unless he's got to go ahead and be particular. Yeah, he has to be able to winds of death once Vargas does bring load. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. which I think is probably the better of his two options. Yeah. And I know that uh, Sunday does have the Reclaimed, yes. so that's going to be really big in yep. this matchup with both Auto Encoder <coughs> and Gosh. the Double Eatons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what's in his archive. He has Mark of Dis in hand, so he can mark them into Dis and You're give five, him exactly. an off turn <coughs> here. Well, and that's what was really interesting. You're talking about the B.I. Geist, and it's a great play to bring in the Infernus, but um, it, it really Love does open you up to Mark, where yes. you are just basically a time walk, um, which is obviously not what we want to see. Right, so. exactly. So um, that may have been a temporary decision with the Infernus, but really come back to hurt him. So it looks like Vargas is picking up the card. Yeah. He had it looked like two Locus cards, so he uh, might be no also anything else to bring maybe no trying to force Sunday back no to take him off of check again. Because Sunday did have to burn that well of memory. Um, I feel not in an offensive way, but okay. a defensive way, um, to make sure that he was able to take Vargas off of check there. And that's where well memory just has so much uh, like usage. Yeah, uh, I love that it can be very both offensive. And, yeah, offensive and defensive. Oh, this need to be is, careful. This yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's not a good sign. I don't. I don't want to blow it. But I know you can go yeah. off. So. Definitely very interested to see what God Jar. Yes. Um, and Sunday looks like he's only at five amber. All right. I'm hoping we see all of the amber here in the camera view. Yeah, that would be crucial if there's something that's missed. Just from our, our perspective, anyway. Okay. Yeah. Vargas de definitely taking a lot of time here. I think this is a very big, crucial turn. Ooh, and you saw how he kind of flipped forward. I think it's definitely Logos. Yeah, so I, he picked up his archive. I'm yeah, pretty you can sure he's see. going Logos. He's got three creatures on board. He can draw an extra I'll card do, with Quixo, uh, Logos. take out the Haunting Witch, right? Awesome. It only looked like there was two on the far right. Interesting. So it'd be two off of those. Plus three on three the board. Three amber. Yep. So, yeah, I mean. <coughs> yeah, he might have to read for all of them. But if you said that he picked up his archives. Okay, so I hear you. Very nice. Pips and capture. All right, so he was at six. Or he's at more than more than five. Okay. That's what we can see, yeah. so. Going to not seen everything, but it looks like maybe he took him off of check there. Alright, we're gonna click so into a haunting witch. Draw a card. He yeah, is drawing a card. Going. Okay. And I will play. I'm wondering if killing the haunting witch was more important than Archive going to seven. Card. Because he can just go back into Geistoid and capture one with Obvious Strike. Which, 
I mean, it does put Sundy on the back foot again by just playing, you know. Just keeping on the track. Yeah. I'll always be checking. Yep. Because there is not a lot of amber control in, in Sunday's deck. Twice. And he's reaping. He's going yep. to six. Go to six. Yeah. Force, force yeah. them to uh, respond, <coughs> right? Always the big <laughs> Unfortunately, LB Stray being out the reap to capture one is there, and that Geistoid can definitely do it. But it's turning off the Untamed, correct? which may just be enough to... Ooh, he is forging. So he <laughs> would have enough to forge. Okay. Leaving one question mark? I, yeah, one <laughs> question mark. Looks like Vargast is reshuffling. So, mm. so he's, we haven't seen the other <coughs> furnace. One. All right. Yeah, I think this is going to be pretty big here. Okay, yep. which one <coughs> comes yep. out? Um, Damn. Playing Kangafan. And Kangafans. And that's crucial to this deck, yeah. Oh, yep. And so Vargas had just cycled. Mm -hmm. That is Circle of Life. Big Amber coming. Should be three off of that. So that should put him at least at four. Yep. He's putting his die for rule of six. He's going to return that Circle of Life. Ouch, that really hurts to cycle. Once he brings back Haunty Witch for the first time. So do you think it'll be Haunty Witch? Waste not. To keep drawing cards, draw the answers. <clears throat> and he said that waste not was a crucial piece. So it draws two. Interesting. So I'm still seeing that mark of dis with Infernus, and so I, yeah, I'm curious if kill the Infernus. Yeah, I'm curious if I would have actually taking the Infernus instead. But that's, that. again, this is where Sunny knows this deck. He knows what he's got to do. Hopefully hopefully he doesn't have blinders, because I know there's been games where I've done that too. He's playing, he's used it. He's played and used. He should be four. That should be six. Yeah. Right? This should be six years? Because it was play, used, to bring back the Waste Knots. Play used this is number five. to bring back the waste. Not so, that should be yeah. That should this should be six. Yeah, I don't think he gets. He played that very fast, so. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. Well, he doesn't. He shouldn't have been able to play it on the board. Actually. <coughs> play reap. Play reap. You can only play. use it three times. Correct. That was a. No. Yeah. Play reap. Play reap. Play. Then he's gonna get. Play, and then the sixth time is going to be the reap. So he shouldn't have been able to. He should, the last one was yeah. off. So he did three times. So yeah, there was one more play than was actually. Should we call it off? Um, yeah, let me bounce out just to let him know because I think that's pretty big. Yeah. There was an extra play there. He didn't reap the first time? Yeah, okay. so he didn't reap. He actually used the waste not on it. Because you're... Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. Might have to go back and look at the... Uh, I mean, if Marcus is there, he probably... Oh, that was or, G. Or G. Yeah. So. They did a great okay. job. Okay, okay. He has a little tally sheet next to it, so <laughs> I trust him. So which of the Dawn here is a really interesting witch with which queen coming in and what you can bring back? And there's the haunting witch. Okay, one. Yeah, and you can see that reclaimed. Went yep, reclaimed. Yep. So he didn't. He, yeah, he didn't destroy, or he didn't jar the reclaimed. So that means that it's probably the wins. <laughs> I'm thinking, how does he take him off of check here, though? Four, and then we do one more time. Which the dawn? 
do it two more times. Yeah, good looking for the out. Oh my god. Oh, he doesn't. That's why. He doesn't have it. I had to do that at the end. Congrats. Vargas. That's what you were down there for. Yep. And so the jervy is his only amber control set in the deck. And so he has to be able to cycle it. Because then he can go ahead and roll six that for a capture. But it has to be on the jervy. So if he didn't see it. Damn. Oh, oh man. Well played. Uh, the, the, the wins. He, the wins. Which was critical. Yeah. Six cards? Yeah. No. That slowed me down Eight pretty cards. bad. Because he decided to use the waste knot instead of reaping. Oh, right. yeah. So he drew eight cards off well the wheel. Well done, so I got one off. <laughs> that would have. That would have. Yeah, like he gave him one more turn. Um, Wins got I'm wondering he how it would have played out the end, knowing that we were seeing the mark. But that can't be yeah. bad. Though. Yeah, congrats to Vargas. That was well played. That was really well played. Yeah, he kept the pressure on, right? That was the big thing. <clears throat> Sandy always had to. He had to be responding to it, always be gentle. Yep. <laughs> and that's crazy because that untamed can really go off. Yeah, um, that was, so I, if I had that jersey, I'm pretty sure I think I. Uh, that was what. Who, I don't even At know how whenever he got there, but that was that was incredible. We'll say a plethora. <laughs> That was incredible. Well played. Well played I know, I would have. Uh, that, that type of archetype for you uh, is just, just, just amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, insane. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure so, we'll see a lot yeah, more. I, was like, of it. I, was I, killed, I didn't know if I should kill a haunting witch there or not. Very well played to both players. I knew if you could take me so off and have and Bargas and was just like, you're going to get to read. Yeah, 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 I'm a monster. I'm a monster. It's like I just. Six is no different than seven to me. Captain Chris Bale. So. Um, it's like I can, I, my thought process was like, you have to eat just on my wins. Yeah, and Captain Crispy is actually who took me out for the top eight yeah. yesterday because we played uh, essentially the top eight uh, playing game. Well, I wouldn't say playing. The top eight yeah, the, game top eight. last it night. Was, it was just, really weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just <laughs> to make sure that we'd have enough time today. I hit the Eatons over your Captain Crispy's deck is real good too. I'm curious to see your build too. I know we were talking about it yesterday. I know we're on a time, but... I can get like, like 10, like 10, like 10 15 minutes. Yeah, so I, I basically nice. played Coda Rush, a Screaming Cave with triple control of the week. And, no and then it was triple uh, I knew I had Dust Pixie that, yeah. with Choda and double traditional hunting. Not haunting, but hunting. So really putting on pressure and like it moves. I mean, Coda Rush is Coda Rush. I had to take it There's like some, four or five different cards you can hit. some really, really good games. Actually was able to just sneak out the win against uh, Dave Cordero in round one. Uh, really cool in that he had his Rusty Guntis Morpheus lock, his World, World Glide lockout. Yes, but his turn one play was Rusty Guntis. And so I was able to take care of, well, I put out cards that would have been able to take care of it. He actually responded by killing it himself with three sure, fates because there were three uh, creatures out mm -hmm. um, and so he was looking for the exhume and he had it I mean that Logos just and, churns uh, through cards yeah. uh, I think on turn two he had thrown uh, out uh, uh, because so the double eye goes like there were six uh, or seven uh, three uh, logos yeah, creatures yeah, that yeah, out. I just took yeah, yeah. He, he talked to, to the the he locked me out. Out. Okay. Okay. So, we talked yesterday. He locked me out. So the, I, I, I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm just not, I'm just gonna make up the words. Yeah, no, he, no, he said it. I'm like, I like to at least, I think I'm playing from behind. Oh, yeah, that's where it's like, you don't have, it slows you down. And the only difference for me in my off-road is that my deck was so fast that I had gotten to two keys. And then I got the control like, so I could kind of go into the number two. So he had gotten to his exhum, yeah. but he, um, I would not let him play it. So I it really was, when was I going to go ahead and cycle and not hit my control of the week? And when I did that, I actually pulled three of the Dust Pixies. And that I had three Amber out, and so it bumped to nine, and he could only take me off nine. So he actually locked me out, but because I get to forge at nine, I still won. It was, that was, that was, that was crazy. Untamed to go on, so it's really, I mean, I will say that I'm, like, I'm not a huge Alliance fan, but it was a lot of fun to play Key Forge to be able to see it, and we're seeing a lot of different here, which is really interesting to me. Let's see, there you in terms of the set kind of distribution we saw, especially for top eight. It was three GRs, one Worlds Collide, one MM, and one Coda. One Coda and two AOA. So we had almost. We had a, a lot of the um, sets represented besides Woe, 
and DT. And that was interesting because um, I did actually face Woe coming yeah. up through, but um, it didn't yeah, make it in. It didn't make it in. Yeah. Well, I was expecting to see June's make it Woe, right? Correct. <laughs> um, that almost made it in, but Dave knocked her out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just, I mean, so many of the sets, right? Like, but we see Archon, there's, there's seven, seven GRs, out of the eight. Yep. For, for now, right? I think everybody's playing GR. They really like it. They want to figure it out, right? Um, it is strong, so. Uh, hoping we see some counterplay later uh, in the other the other VTs uh, in Archon, but I, well, I like Lions. It's interesting because when we first saw Woe last year at Philly, there was still kind of this, hey, we've been, I guess we really hadn't had competitive play. Mm -hmm. And so Woe didn't see as much play as people were, we were kind of feeling it out. Right. And so people brought their MM, people brought Worlds Collide, they just brought their decks that they knew well. Mm -hmm. And then as the vault season went on, we saw more and more Woe making it in yep. and kind of controlling. People wanted to play more Woe because they saw the they saw the potential, right? And they were Correct. like, hey, I already played the kind of the decks that I wanted to potentially, um, how do I say, uh, put in, like, play at a vault tour, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Because you want to test it and see, like, yep. is this good enough? Um, and a lot of people hadn't had that opportunity uh, because we hadn't had VTs for so long. Do you so. feel that it's different with our star championships because now people can go ahead and play their um, Grim Reminders decks? And, or do you think that, like, why the difference? Because it did surprise me. I, I anticipated <clears throat> we would have a higher amount of Grim Reminders. Mm -hmm. I would yes. like to see how many made it in the field, how many were played, and then right. what the percentage to yeah. top caught, because that would be interesting. I mean, I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see the stats. So, GG, when you guys get the stats, <laughs> put them out. Like, yeah. um, it, it is seven GRs, uh, four Archon, and one Worlds Collide, and we all know what that Worlds Collide is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's there. It, and that's not the Worlds Collide deck there. That's just a outlier for a player at the end of the day because I, I agree 100 nova is phenomenal quite possibly one of the like the best player i would say in keyforge so um she yeah she pilots that deck like no one else can and i think she'll pilot any deck <laughs> so i will say it won't show up in the stats but the final round before top eight for mm -hmm. alliance i faced a vault master 24 deck so someone did go ahead and roll with that. They were able to make it all the way to that final that, play in. That right but, final play in. Yep, my, my Coda Rush just narrowly <laughs> squeaked it out against that too. And it, it, it had some tricks. So yeah. it, was, it was interesting to put it together very, very quickly. Yeah. I mean, at least we'll see it in the stats in terms of one Vault Master 2024 yep. in the little, in little pie graph that we'll get, so. But Moise, actually, <laughs> shout out to you, man, because that was your idea. Um, yeah, there were there were two different decks that were put together because they wanted to have it on the pie chart. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I love that. Um, we did have DT in for Alliance. There was DT. DT? There was DT oh, that was actually um, played. Okay. So you, you again, Alliance. You did see quite a range. I I agree. I'm gonna say I the, um, I, I know some people don't <laughs> love Alliance, and I totally get it. Um, there's a lot of degenerate stuff in Alliance, but you can play almost any set, feels like, uh, from what we saw here today, right? And, and we didn't have a big attendance either, so I feel like that that's pretty telling. Um, and I think DT has potential. There is a lot of cool control, like, tempo in DT that can stop some of this GR stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, and you, if you see, the Chronophage is amazing. Um, Kalp, we, you still have eddies for key costs and stuff like that. I think it's a very viable set to bring an alliance for. A um, little harder in Archon. Um, I think you have to have one of those really top 1% for DT to bring it for Archon. Um, I'm not saying there are not any out there, but very far and few between. And when we just look at how many decks have been open for yeah, DT exactly. and for Grim Reminders, yeah. it, they're just such a smaller percentage compared to your old traditional coda. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. Um, what are your thoughts on F F seeing seven of the eight going back to Archon because that way we can talk a little bit more about that seeing <laughs> seven of the eight qualifying decks come from GR does that scare you a little bit You're... so I mean I, I have my own thoughts on GR at the moment I'll, I'll keep those to myself at the okay. moment <laughs> I tried community to try and uh, you... <laughs> weasel that one out and I failed 
you guys can message me if you want to hear my thoughts <laughs> on GR. Uh, but I mean, uh, GR is strong. Um, I think the set's really fun. Uh, I was much more excited to play Sealed this yes. this event um, and Alliance. Um, I think Archon is just very, uh, very combo heavy um, because of GR at the moment. Um, <clears throat> Woe has kind of fallen on the back end, but I mean, at my store champs, we saw a lot of Woe to try okay. to counter GR. People brought Bryo and Big Board, essentially, to try to be like, okay, you have Winds of Death. You got to get rid of all of this before. You got to get rid of Bryo and then get rid of it. Or yeah, get rid of Bryo so you can Winds of Death. Um, hmm. But GR has answers. Um, Green Reaper's floating around. I'll be a Stray's floating around. Yep. Uh, Fiery Jar, Snippy, right? Like all of these cards, you don't have to play an action to kill Bryo. So um, there's a lot of different things you have to do now uh, to protect Bryo at, at this point. Well, and what's interesting is uh, being able to go ahead, you see some of the better Bryo players placing another creature just mm -hmm. on the outside as that buffer. So that you have to actually have essentially two snippies. Yes. Or being able to look at the deck list can tell you yeah. too. These are the key cards to be able to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, there's some really interesting plays yeah. for counterplay. So I'm curious to see as we go forward through the vault season, what people are going to go ahead and suss out and figure out and say, hey, this really is a great counter. I think GR immediately jumps to the forefront as being strong. It's strong. But very, very strong. But there, mm -hmm. there are definitely counter plays. I just don't know if people have had enough time to Correct. figure that out. I, I think we, like, I mean, what we saw here in Alliance, right? Like, I think the somewhat answer is control tempo, right? Mm -hmm. Like Vargas deck was just make him answer me. I'm I'm I have tempo. I'm kind of rushing, but I'm also controlling and kind of disrupting your game plan. Yep. So um, you have to be defensive towards me, and you can't like you can't just have your game plan of I'm getting my combo pieces together and I'm going to win. Yeah. Um, because. And, and, first, right? and, and the best defense, honestly, is a good offense. Correct. I'm putting so much pressure. Yes. I actually had seen MM with even just the pips. So I didn't see all the pips that were in Vargas. Mm -hmm. But there's so much efficiency that if I'm throwing those creatures back and I'm gaining draw, you know, damage, catcher, amber as a whole, that adds another layer that do I really want to be sticking? And MM typically has more creatures, too. Right. So do I want to stick all those creatures in for Winds of Death? Um, I know there was a lot of worry about Winds of Death early. I think that it facilitates other things. Mm -hmm. um, that does not seem to be my main objection or, or frustration right now. But we'll have to see, how, again, how the rest of the season turns out. Right. Uh, I, I think the key card for me still is going to be Key Abduction. Right. Key Abduction yep. just facilitates a lot. Yeah. And I was seeing it in Archon, I was seeing it in Alliance, and seeing it in Sealed. So, yeah. I, so Winds of Death to me is the <clears throat> big... Um, it provides that kind of... It facilitates yeah, it. Yeah, it facilitates key abduction, right? Key abduction is the main... Uh, is just the the main card that allows for all of that just nonsense. <laughs> um, but Winds of Death allows you to get there a lot easier, yes. right? Like, we see like double, double triple targets everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. But there's definitely... Hello? Uh, I need you. Perfect, I can do that. All right, well, I guess I'm being called out. I need to go ahead and re-sleeve for uh, my sealed. I'll probably take just a couple little break, break while we wait for the next game, so. Um. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so, yeah, we'll catch you guys in a little bit, yeah. um, hopefully for finals, so. Um. Take care, guys.
Hello everyone, it looks like our casters forgot to change it to the we'll be back screen. So I'm gonna actually toss you out for a little bit here and then we'll be back with the final round of Alliance. So uh, stay tuned, we should have you in that soon. This is Vault Tour 2024 Roseville and we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hello everyone and welcome back here to Vault Tour 2024 in Roseville, Minnesota. And I'm Jeremy Culver, the marketing coordinator for Ghost Galaxy. And June is joining me once again. And we are going to be commentating the finals for Alliance. And we have Vargast and Captain Crispy making it here all the way to the top. A Mass Mutations deck versus a Grim Reminders deck. June, I gotta ask just because obviously you've been here, you've been competing in this. How excited are you to see this finals and what these two decks are going to bring to the table? I'm really glad that it's two different sets because Alliance is one of those formats that really can bring almost anything other than DT. And uh, Vargas deck is really interesting, sort of honestly like fundamentals Keyforge deck. Like it's got Infernus and Mark of Dis and two Eaton Stars because one of them's in Sanctum. Um, <laughs> But really, they're Vargas just trying to play Keyforge, right? Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, we have Captain Crispy, who's playing like a the new <laughs> the new sauce on the block with GR, mainly running a Doctor Zylo combo, like we were talking about for Sealed, mm -hmm. um, with an, uh, with the Implanter, which is a Mars creature that, after Reap, takes control of an enemy creature and destroys a friendly creature. Now the practical upshot of that is that um, when you're comboing out and going rule of six on all your cards, you're stealing six. You're st yeah, you're stealing five to six of your opponent's creatures, and you're using the destroy effect to put the rebel back in your discard. So you you go from getting like three amber to like twelve amber and destroying your opponent's or stealing your opponent's board. Um, really powerful deck, and uh, Captain Crispy, one of the only Geistard players I saw among the uh, top 16, who was not running Winds of Death, mm. um, using instead like a uh, Junk Restoration in here somewhere engine. Uh, I, I talked to talked to Logan before, and he, was, he, he thinks that Winds can be a bit slow for lines, which is true. Um, because it needs a certain setup to get to, so and if you don't have that, if you don't hit it, yeah, um, if you don't hit it, then you know, uh, Alliance will run over you. Um, so Kevin Crispy, like you know, trying to live by the high roll in multiple houses. We've got Vargas just trying to play Keyforge. I think it should be really cool to see especially in a best of three yeah for sure and and also as a good reminder with this being the first vault tour of the year the new best of three format instead of being uh, best of three untimed it is where each individual match is 45 minutes of course that still gives them a you know a full time to try to get their their win condition out there however of course that is something to keep in mind and does change a little bit of the strategy that may be used uh, here in the finals and and so we saw Captain Crispy, of course, start there, uh, putting the haunted house right away. And now we have Vargast um, go in and six pip turn. Wow, three pips and the bonus draw pip right there on the card. Uh, that is that is a nasty, nasty start already. Wow. I'd love to see what um, what Logan should do can do to fight this. Okay, starting off just. Rolling combo, maybe light letting this key run, run through. Milling with it in here somewhere. Hitting some of the uh, some of the Mars pieces, which is kind of what you want so that Dr. Zylo can um, reap and play a creature, a Mars creature from your discard. So it's kind of like tutoring him. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. As long as you can get the Dr. Zylo back. Yeah, and so it looks, of course, uh, Vargast already able to forge that first key, like we kind of talked, uh, you had said. Looks like Captain Crispy wa was going to have to just let that first key go through. Yeah, and it looks like uh, on seven cards in discard for uh, Captain play. Crispy. So Honor House not quite active, Alien Stray not quite active. Auto encoder. And an auto encoder to start. This seems like a really good start for Vargas. That is a, a very strong start. Two eclectic inquiries and a sloppy labyrinth. 
Oh my gosh, this is going to be six archives. Wow. All right. And three amber. What is her? Sloppy lab work. So there's the third one. Vargas has a clear idea of what he wants to discard. Hasn't even checked those archives yet. Not at all. Yeah, I mean, not giving any information to his opponent as well. I think he sees the lead, and he's just going to try to hold that till the end. Uh, that's the kind of deck it is. It just has 20 amber pips and, and captures, and <laughs> it does keep for it. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course, that is something that uh, I think, from what I understand with a lot of the members of the community, is that you know those, those strong mass mutations decks really a lot of the strength can come from the fact of all the bonus pips that you get across the deck. And so if you get enough of those, and especially in Alliance, right, you can generate those really, really quickly and, you know, get into the driver's seat so fast. Watch this. Logan just pulled out a piece of paper with his Mars cards written down on it. I think that means we're going to see a rule of six on a number of Mars cards. Yep, here it is. Yep. Keeping the creatures exhausted when they come in. Target. Archiving, perhaps an in here somewhere. Just keep that engine rolling, you know? Yeah. Almost certainly not going to be a Mars card, because um, I think we're going to see the combo out this turn, so you want those cards in discard. And this is, of course, uh, just to give compliments to our judge, uh, Marcus, who is uh, watching this match, is being right there, ready to go, to make sure that this rule of six goes through effectively, and as well as that no mistakes are made um, that could impact this match overall. You know, there is an upper limit on how many different Mars creatures you'll get out due to the uh, Iron Ix Rebels need to be run out. So it may just be that uh, archive and target is just better for next turn. Uh, tracking rules of six. I don't, think, I don't think we're caught up, but I think Logan may have decided we're not going too deep into it this turn. Yeah, it looks like he might have done that based off of just kind of the, the, the hand interactions we were seeing there um, to, to start as that turn started to unfold. Yeah. We can't forget, like, you know, this is an imperfect combo, and it's archiving <gasps> three cards and gaining however many amber. Should be pretty good. <laughs> Maybe getting caught up to Vargas. A few less archives. A few less amber, but a full board. This will archive. Proliferator will be not And I will pass... Good morning, George. <laughs> yes, good morning, George. Thank you for joining us here for the finals of the Alliance uh, Tournament at Vault Tour Roseville. We are definitely going to see a lot of reaping out, I will say that, <laughs> in, this, yeah. in this match. A gateway of death in hand. Now, without a winds of death, it's a tough, tough thing to get all those cards back from. The great thing is that a Doctor Zylo and a Rebel will just get the chain going. No. Yeah. All right. So Vargas checking the discard there, discard pile, trying to. I think obviously making sure that what he's ready to pull off might not be impacted too much. Um, but he's, he still hasn't picked up the archives yet, so I think I think he's just going to roll with what he's got in hand. That's one of those things about autoencoder is like, you can just store those cards forever, right? It looks like he's sorting out the hand of this. Yeah. So it looked like there at the last second he decided to pick them up, and as you said... Still thinking about the order of these cards, or even which house. Got a few options here. 
lots of Sanctum cards, but they're mostly the Amber Control. I don't see any Eden Stars out yet. Is this the Archon deck? When you're not using, you're using the Mark on the Earth a lot. Thinking about Mark Abyss, it must be. Really Captain carefully Christmas. thinking about what is in Captain Crispy's well, hand. Well, kind of um, yeah, yeah, looking at all the cards, I'm asking about the houses at the moment. I'm looking at them like... And I gotta ask now for our, our newer viewers who might be still getting into this. Can you explain a little bit about Mark of Dis and why that might be um, something? This whole factor of where Vargas is really trying to check what's going on. Well, in, like because in Keyforge your main resource is how many cards of a house you have. Um, controlling somebody's house at the highest level when you can really figure out what they don't want to do is. Uh, basically like denying them a whole turn, right? So if Vargas is really careful and really clever here, uh, he may have figured out how to um, give himself a full extra turn, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is important considering that he may be playing Mark of Dis, which uh, hits a, a creature, and if uh, two damage doesn't destroy it, um, your opponent or its owner must play that house. Um, now, a gateway to disc to follow that up means that this Mars turn, despite being run into Mars, is not going to be uh, is not going to have all these creatures on board to to work that out. So the mark of disc gateway to disc combo is like a really classic so MM combo. Let's destroy, destroy and Vargas yeah, taking the time to think it out. Got to respect that. Also an Infernus to consider, right? So all mm -hmm. these things coming down. An Infernus here for both Xylos could be pretty brutal. Oh, that could be actually really brutal. Could disassemble a lot of Captain Crispy's deck really early. And I wouldn't be surprised if that just kept pushing the lead. I'm not sure what he could do to get back. And yeah, Vargas really, really being methodical with what he's wanting to do here um, trying to really make sure that you know not just playing the cards is correct but the order as you kind of talked about what the order of the of they're going to be playing and and obviously potentially destroying as as he goes through this yeah there's a reason Vargas is uh in finals for uh for alliance and also in top eights for both of their formats <laughs> very careful player pretty clever uh, you can't you can't count him out at any time. He's gonna think it through. All right, taking a steal instead of a instead of the board. Uh, I think we have a missed trigger on Mehmet there. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um, yes. Go ahead and June take over there. It looks like they. All right, so we're just doing a double check just to make sure that the nope, Mehmet's um, ability did trigger. All right, and based off of based off the play, it looks like things may be going, but here comes the Infernus out. And so obviously, this is where things could get really, really bad for Captain Crispy. The Infernus getting played now. And now he's looking through, of course, making sure what is he going to purge and what is he wanting to purge, knowing what else is not in the discard pile. And June, uh, just to give an update, uh, was the Mehmet's uh, ability um, done correctly? Yeah, well, I'm just, these players are too fast for me to. <laughs> <laughs> and that is completely fine. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, of course, this is, uh, this is the finals. Um, and I just, I guess I will say again, a, a big shout out to our, our judge Marcus there being right on top of it and making sure that everything gets done correctly um, so that we avoid any kind of issues here at the final table. Yeah, one of my top two favorite judges sure here at the event. <laughs> Am I one of them? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I am not a judge. Don't even, uh, it's not even close for me to joke about that. <laughs> not un unless. Maybe, maybe the next ball tour. We're learning so many cards now. We are learning so many cards. And obviously for our newer players, we're doing it. And there is exactly what you had called out. This is, I believe there are only two Dr. Zylos in the deck. 
which, I mean, that's a good number, but uh, it's going to be a rough spot. Um, you know, March can still do combos, but it's not going to rule up six anymore, which it's going to be tough to come back from, especially once Eaton's jars start coming down. I'm not sure if there are very many, there's very, very much artifact control. There's an animating force in Geistoid. Now, animating force is a upgrade that enters play attached to an artifact, dragging it into your battle line as your own creature with versatile mm -hmm. and four power. Now, that doesn't help with Eaton's Jar um, unless you fight it into a creature or destroy it somewhere, somehow. It will help with Auto Encoder, though. That would be a pretty powerful play. Uh, and something to grab some, uh, grab some power back towards Captain Crispy's side. Yeah, and I will say from the experience of playing against uh, Animating Force, it can be very frustrating when it grabs a, a, an artifact that you really, really need to have or want to hold on to for a later turn. Yeah, I like Borrow, too. Borrow's pretty good. <laughs> and good morning to you, Devo. Uh, thank you for being here for the finals of the Alliance tournament here at uh, Vault Tour Roseville. We appreciate all you guys in the chat that are up and early and ready to, to see this finals go on. This is match uh, one um, of the finals. So we still have, of course, after this match, potentially two more matches to go. Um, and right now, of course, Vargast uh, in the driver's seat with the key forged as well as six amber um, towards that second key. And Captain Crispy sitting on six amber, but as we did see just prior, um, the Infernus really um, blowing up things a little bit on Captain Crispy's side. And so we'll see, of course, how that is going to impact the rest of this match for him. Mm -hmm. And not a bad turn coming out after a mark of this gateway. Um, looks like was able to dodge some of Vargas' uh, sleuthing. Uh, we're, we're seeing a steal off Brain Dart and then two archives off targets. Key abduction to bounce those back and get two more archives. Quite a good turn. Looks like Vargas never lost those chains due to um, his hand size from pulling those archives. He is in check and still forging. So Vargas now up two keys. Captain Crispy checking. And also setting up a key abduction. Let's not forget. Mm -hmm. um, so let's not, let's not think that uh, one key is, is not important. That one key might be enough. To, to push through. Yeah. I believe it's a one key abduction double target deck. It might be triple target. So now obviously he's looking at the hand of uh, Vargas doing doing the favor here uh, on the stream allowing us to see what he's got. He's you know got a hand hand size obviously leaning towards uh, Sanctum. I think for archives. Uh, looks like a, a Stopping a key with a bring low, which is going to capture uh, all but five of his opponent's amber. Just one, but stopping the key. It does exactly how much you need. Yeah. Also, a number of amber pips coming out this turn. Yeah, you can see on the on those on those sanctum creatures. It looks like each one has at least one amber pip on it. Hard to see with that one. There looks like a capture pip, of course, with it. This is commandeer. Uh, Every time you uh, play a card this turn, you're going to capture an amber uh, on one of your creatures. Looks like an archive off Bring Low. And it, the extra capture pip, I think it's a hell to Bring Low. Um, no, no, both discarded for archives. Yeah, really trying to to set up those archives and doing again just what Vargas did earlier archiving not looking at them at all not trying to give any kind of information over to Captain Crispy um, which at this point is probably a really good idea just because of course he is in the lead you know so far that it's you don't want to give any information over that could all of a sudden start to change things yeah yeah absolutely not um, I respect that a lot and looks like this auto encoder is mostly how Vargas is going to be drawing for a few turns. I lost one of those chains. And he's, you know, with all the pips in the deck and that auto encoder and I think three archives, this third key might not be very far away. 
There's the near future, future lens played down. Okay, so the, the pile on the right is going to be the deck. The pile on the left is the discard. Down there by the bottom. Okay, just, just pushing your hand, developing a lens, and revealing uh, four drawn cards. If I'm Vargast, I want to push Amber here. Body is the only Amber control, uh, Body and Palak are the only Amber control we're seeing, and Crispy just hit a hand of uh, Geistoid, which doesn't, uh, doesn't interact with uh, Vargast very much at all. If, any, if at all. Mm -hmm. Not sure what else Captain Crispy had in hand before the lens, to be fair. But pushing six is going to put him in a really tough spot. Yeah, and we see, of course, the Iron Next Rebel is the very next card um, on his deck. So I would assume Captain Crispy likely would have wanted that to be one of the cards potentially getting in his hands, especially knowing that there's the archive sitting there. We don't know what's in his archives, but of course it might be something that he's, is needed. Um, but at the moment, you know, Captain Crispy does have to try to figure out so, how he can get back into this. And as you said, if, if Vargas pushes that amber right now, it's it, he's already looking at his third key where Captain Crispy is really far behind. And here he is still pushing, pushing, pushing. Classic MO. Uh, two Lethalogica is going to be two Amber plus whatever he draws. Assume those get played. There's a Munchling. Not sure the value of that this turn. We'll see how Var Vargas values it. Uh, and to answer the question of Devin, no, none of the other top eights have started yet. Uh, this is, of course, the finals for Alliance. Um, the top eights for the other tournaments. Um, are expected to begin um, pretty much right after this, as we do have, of course, um, one of the members uh, here in, in the other top eights. Twenty-five minutes in a round, so they're both got plenty of time to get there. It's good that they're taking their time. Okay, yeah, Munchling discarded. Checking the archive. Alright, so there's... Okay, another pip. And I think it's exactly what you were saying. It looks like Vargas is really trying to push that amber now, knowing of course, what Captain Crispy at least drew uh, to end that turn, and knowing, as you said, that there's not much amber control on the board currently for him to, to get him off of check. Yeah, there's three possible captures. Um, if Captain Crispy goes Star Alliance, but not a lot of cards in hand to support that. And the card on top, which you can play with Lens, does nothing for the turn if you're not in Mars. Because it readies uh, neighbor Mar Mars creatures. And if you're not on Mars, you can't use them. So. Mm -hmm. I feel like not seeing this animating force has let Vargas kind of run away with the game, um, just building up card advantage. These triple eclectics and a double uh, Lethalogica. Play Eugenic Serum. Play Lethalogica. Uh, Joe Caruso, I will say, um, I know Vargast is in um, some of the other top eights. Uh, June, do you remember if Captain Crispy is in any of the other top eights? I don't believe so. Okay, so we do know Vargast is, though. Um, but we can get that answer for you, Joe, uh, here after this match, and we'll make sure that we um, pass that along. It uh, looks like Devin is saying that Vargast is in all three top eights. Crispy is in Archon as well. Oh, okay. So thanks, Devin, for, for passing that along.
All right, so at this point, June, I, I got to ask, of course, you know, things right now are, you know, not looking grim, but of course it is getting um, testing for Captain Crispy. What, what do you think his focus should be at this point? Do you think it should be trying to take care of this match, or is it trying to reveal as much information as he can to set him up for match two? What would, you, what would your approach be in this situation? Well, they know what's in each other's decks, right? So, you know, there's, there's, I feel like actually Captain Crispy is the one who will reveal more information by playing, because when you're put in the tough spot, how you deal with those situations reveals a lot about how your deck plays. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, doesn't want to give up any wins, right? So just gonna keep pushing this is a combo deck it can still combo seeing some careful choices um, archiving strength and diversity in new frontiers so Captain Crispy saying like okay we're gonna have to control some amber at some point let's set that up uh, I believe there's one mark of dis in deck so safe from being being pulled off that but there is there is some board control, so let's see how this goes. A second in here somewhere on that top there. Pulling two more cards. Pulling a Mars combo in with it, saying, no, I can do this in multiple houses. Okay, pushing nine amber, 10. And so he's gonna capture one, of course, um, Vargas wasn't uh, at six amber at the moment, but you know, hopefully in that sense, starting that amber control period, trying to make sure that uh, he's setting himself up for that next turn. We obviously he's on check for his first key at least. So, you know, mostly a go forward turn, but you know, planning, seeing seeing how we can close out the game, or get back in there too. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we're about to hit the 20 minute mark. Of course, Vargas on the two keys with four amber. Uh, Captain Crispy sitting there with 10 amber. Um, I think I see an Eaton's Jar and in Furnace in, in archives. So Vargas might be able to close the game um, off this disruption. Because the only way for Captain Crispy to control artifacts, I believe, is a Geistoid card. Now, we haven't seen it yet, so Touchstones, since Captain Crispy is... Oh, I don't believe he's haunted any longer. I think he just redrew through the deck. I believe he did. I believe he had to shuffle there at the, um, at the end of that turn. A few really clever things here, though, that um, Crispy has embedded into the deck. Um, Webster in Near Future Lens. Yes. Now, Webster says, after fight... Uh, for, for each damage on Webster, you may mill the top card of each player's deck. Now, since it's a four each, you can mill, use the lines to see if that's what you want to play, mill, check it, mill, and then when you when he hits the animating force or whatever he needs, use stop it, and then use the lens. Mm. I wonder if we're going to see any, any time for clever plays like that. And there comes the Infernus out, but of course, nothing in uh, Captain Crispy's discard right now. Okay. A huge bomb off the Infernus. Throwing a five amber. Those pips coming back. Yeah. And the gateway. That's where that amber control was it was on the brain dart and the uh, strength room diversity uh, 
four more chains, or three more chains again. Uh, we're on four. So, Vargas may never leave this game with, without chains. Uh, yeah, you might not. Uh, the Crucible Station, this is game one of the finals. Um, so no one has won, uh, of course, yet. Uh, right now, though, Vargas is in the lead, but this is game one of the Alliance finals. You could put the score after their houses. Uh, we will, we, yeah, we can actually make that happen. Yeah, that's actually something. Uh, good suggestion, June. We will make that actually happen right now. Oh, he's cute. It's a little face. <laughs> he's a little surprise guy. <laughs> he's all nervous. Okay, so the board wipe came down. Um, no check, though. Gives uh, Captain Crispy a little bit of breathing room. The tiniest, <laughs> the tiniest space to, to fit through. Does get the key, though. One amber lasts. You know, key abduction can push another, so can stall enough to get one more key. Uh, we could see the win. Now, there's that Eaton's Jar. Mm -hmm. We don't know what they call it. But it could have been any number of things that uh, Crispy's been planning. Since pulling that archives on that last Geist turn, we know Crispy has a lot of Mars cards in hand. Mm -hmm. um, because Drew predominantly Geistroid played him out. This actually might be really tough to play with that Eden's Jar. Uh, so Vargas may have known just what to hit, considering all the information around. And that's one of the cool things about GR, is that it throws so much information in the game and whoever can use it best is gonna get that little bit of advantage yeah there's all that mars I'm, i wonder if the rebels were hit or if it was um key abduction both would turn off some amber key abduction turns off the combo mm -hmm. Maybe something else, but I think those are some really good hits. We'll see based off the play here. Okay, not the rebels. Rebel? I think playing one rebel for one creature um, just due to uh, the second rebel coming out there. Reaps. Okay, two more is going to check. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to be set up for the key abduction any very soon, but... Uh, a discard pip. Throwing away a key cheat. In a, in a matchup that has uh, six different houses, I believe we can all, uh, or whatever that Starline's key cheat is, um, is gonna, would forge for six, uh, including the amber pip on it. Okay. Key abduction not Eaton's charge. Interesting. I wonder what that was then. Something else valuable, surely. Um, okay, so we are on the fifth use of Iron Age Rebel, I believe. I believe so, yes. Yes. Gonna push to 8 Amber. Coming up on Vargas Coattails. Or on his tail. <laughs> Pulling off the covetous double reap maneuver. And pass up. As all pro players do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And playing off the top of the deck, an alien okay, horror. On a stray. And revealing the next drawn cards. And I don't see a lot of answers. There are those cards in hand the um, Strength from Diversity and the New Frontiers. New Frontier is pretty valuable when you can see the top card of your deck. Mm-hmm, for sure. 
All right, so that was a, a pretty big turn there for Captain Crispy. So now, obviously, Vargas, of course, still in the driver's seat at this moment, doesn't want to let up. Where do you think Vargas goes uh, at this point to either push towards that victory or, at minimum, just try to continue to keep Captain Crispy in uh, in the rearview mirror? Another Eden Star would be great. Um, honestly, I'm not sure how much Amber control uh, Captain, Cris Captain Crispy can pull out seeing those cards played um i think only three capture up the strength of adversity and so gaining four here five yeah five amber from one card that those free markets getting better and better with every set as more houses come out uh, gains you an amber for each house in play other than Sanctum. Wow. So here, five houses. Yeah. Every house out, came out in play. Now, I think Captain Crispy going to only capture three here. I'll play... <coughs> I'm not sure what other tricks uh, he had up his sleeve. But here's where style comes in. Do you, do you play it out, or do you uh, hold as much information as you can? Or maybe I'm missing something. Maybe he's got a, another answer. Yeah, maybe he does have something in his hand. Um, because, as you said, the, the, if you kind of know, for instance, you don't have enough to get them off check uh, in the next turn, you could just concede and start to move on to the next round. Um, as you said, keeping as much information as you can in hand. Um, but it doesn't seem like Captain Crispy is ready to do that just yet. And obviously, Vargas is trying, going to be trying to do as much as he can to force Captain Crispy into making that decision. Yep. I mean, we know a good amount of Captain Crispy's cards, though, because of the lens. And those archives pulled um, New Frontiers and uh, Strength of Diversity. Discarding for uh, another another archive and reshuffling the deck. I believe an e Eaton's Jar is in hand. Oh no, it would have been the Sanctum one. So we'll see where that one ended up. Alright, so there's the second forged key. And Cap Crispy has two key cheats, I believe. So we're getting in a spot that gets scary. And pulling up those Star Alliance cards. New Frontiers, I wonder if that's going to be Geistoid uh, for that in here somewhere, or if he's got other plans uh, for what he needs in this matchup. All right, so of course we didn't. Saw a second haunted house, at least, uh, in that. It was a Geistoid call. So Haunted House and In Here Somewhere archived. Developing an Island of Misfit Toys would mean a lot. Um, that would mean getting through all those cards and uh, throwing them back out. A fight is going to capture some Amber. Just onto the Iron X Rebel. Getting down to... to Seven. Yep, he's at seven right now. Strength and diversity already played, checking at seven. Nope, and that's going to be game. So it looks like Vargas, of course, takes game one um, here in the Alliance Finals. Uh, so really strong play. Uh, that that Infernus early, really disrupting, uh, I think, what Captain Crispy wanted to do. And credit to Captain Crispy, as we already obviously know, with uh, getting to this point, there's a lot of tricks and things to pull out in your deck when something is your main driver is taken right. out, um, but really making it close and interesting there towards the end. Yeah, playing it out, uh, pushing all that amber, getting Vargas scared. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, that was a that was a great match. Yeah, honestly, really close. As much as Vargas pushed the advantage. Yes, very much so. And of course, uh, that means that you know Vargas has that one win in hand, um, making it obviously he is one win away from getting our uh, our title here at the Vault Tour Roseville in Alliance. Um, but that doesn't mean, of course, that Captain Crispy is out. Still has that second match. Can push it to that game three. 
obviously we've seen what Captain Crispy can do even when his main driver is out. If he yeah. can get that to go early and avoid, um, you know, the Infernus from really purging that out, yeah. obviously that makes it, that's going to make this a really interesting finals. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm wondering how much... Um, how much Vargas is going to have to deal with um, a 12 amber combo early? There's really just capture. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to get that amber back if it happens early. Late game, and it's going to be a big, big story, but we'll see what happens. All right, so we will see what happens. Of course, we're going to take a small break while the players, of course, also take a small break. Um, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more of the finals here at the Alliance um, in Vault Tour Roseville 2024. So make sure you got your water. I know if for some of you it's probably really early, so make sure you got your coffee if you need it or anything, and be right back for some more Keyforge action. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. 
Alright everyone, we are back for game two here at the Vault Tour Roseville 2024 Alliance Finals. Of course, Vargas took the first game if you did miss it. And now, of course, Captain Crispy, one win or one loss away from, of course, being removed from the tournament and Vargas taking the, the victory. However, we did see Captain Crispy 
do some things there towards the end, even when his uh, his play style was purged out by Infernus, yeah. that really made it interesting. So I'm actually really excited to see how things change here, knowing what Vargas did in game one. Does Captain Crispy change up how he plays his cards a little bit to avoid maybe some of those things? Yeah, yeah, I mean, Crispy never hit any of those combos, so getting the time to do that would really change the game. And it was a 3-2 win last time, so... We'll see how close these games can get. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, technically speaking, Captain Crispy was, if it got to his next turn, potentially going to be threatening for that third yeah. key. Um, but as you had said, uh, Vargas towards the end, because of the near future lens, had that information that Captain Crispy didn't really have a lot of amber control and so just rushed amber. Uh, and, of course, as we saw once the turn ended, Captain Crispy played a couple of cards and then said, you know, that's, that's my turn. And so... Congratulations. So now, of course, we are here at game two. Um, and so good morning to all of you that are here to check out the finals. Uh, we will be doing Sealed right after. Sealed will be right after uh, this, and we'll be getting that going um, for the next top eight. Um, but we are all good to go. And time <laughs> has started. And so, of course, 45 minutes is on the clock for game two. Oh, same, same thing as last game. Yeah. Now, we did see, of course, that Captain Crispy has two haunted houses in his pod. Um, so there's a chance, of course, it may not be, you know, the same haunted house. But, yeah, it's the very yeah. same start turn. Yeah. And, of course, Captain Crispy going um, first uh, again. Important to note, Captain Crispy is running a double Awakenings uh, and one battle-tested deck alliance which is really cool we get to see two different borders yeah and for those that don't know of course the battle-tested decks was a uh, border card um, grim reminders decks that were given out at the store championships and of course that means uh, captain crispy was one of the the ones to grab one of those so we just saw uh, a eclectic inquiry uh, archive two cards missing the card that uh, vargas may have wanted most let the logic into an auto encoder. Now that is going to be another, like, very similar to last game. These two creatures might just be thrown out for uh, some extra cards, start pushing that advantage, and uh, get another huge uh, free markets this game. Yeah, we're, you know, again, getting that uh, the encoder out early, just already starting to, to set Vargast up for what he wants to do later on. Yeah. And I think off the end of that last game, Captain Chris Crispy might feel that that free market's imminently coming. Maybe maybe there's chances to play around that. I know that uh, he's got two really important artifacts in different houses, um, so that makes it tough to play around. But controlling your opponent's board, controlling your Mars, um, could could help a lot with that. Wow, what a turn. Is that five cards in archives or something? It looks like it looks like it's I think six. So. Oh gosh. Oh, discards the mutagenic serum for the extra archives. Gonna really push for those Eaton stars, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, has nothing to really answer, so why not? Yeah. Boo. It's probably an in here somewhere to collect the key pieces, I'm thinking. Yep. There it is. And so what we, from what we saw getting discarded there, what do you think that Captain Crispy is grabbing? I didn't pay that close attention. All right. <laughs> um, but it looks like it was in Dr. Zylo and an animating force. Animating force, like I said, so key. Hitting that auto encoder might just change the game, change the story from last time. Yeah, and that was something that we, we made mention of, that he never seemed to get that animating force out early. Um, it couldn't even seem to hit it, and now, of course, gets it in his hand. Yeah. Well, now archived. So I'm really interested to see how um, Logan utilizes that to um, whatever ends he needs. Because those Eaton stars are also going to come out. And I believe that's the only answer. So depending on when they come out, I think both players are going to be very cognizant of the Eaton stars and the animating force. Um, one thing that Vargas can do with the Eaton stars is not put out a creature that the Eaton star can fight into. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, no. There's 
Seven pips in hand and furnace in Eaton's jar. What a turn coming up. What the, Those archives really hit something good. Yeah, for sure. I see I see the, the value of our ass play now is discarding all those cards in the mutagenic serum even with the pip. Made this incredible turn. All right, so of course, uh, Vargas looking back at the discard pile, trying to figure out, of course, what uh, what he wants to do here. So then there comes out the Infernus. Wondering what this Eden Star is for. Has to know that um, it, it's not permanent. I wonder if it was even animating force to protect the other Eden Star and the auto encoder. Hmm. So he purges. Two in here somewhere. Could have even been Iron Axe Rebel too. Iron Axe Rebel is a great, great piece of this deck, and one enables the combo. It works off key abduction, gaining five amber. <laughs> yeah. Good. Just this is a very. Not the same, but similar to last game, where just rushing out with all that amber to start off and getting that first key very quickly. Um, it's it is exactly what we saw last time, and obviously it seems like Vargast is going going to try to do it just once again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and what a beautiful this house. Yes, like it's full of pips, which is something this can't always reach. Right, <laughs> it's not always great at amber. Uh, it's got amber control. It's got so much disruption. And the, the two gateways solves a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. Especially against this deck. It's not always great into the, the alliance meta, but we see it paying off. The opponents lined up well, and Vargas has been playing well to reach those good matchups. And I think this might be one of them. Mm -hmm. So obviously, did the uh, the Haunted House to get the Amber, and it's now in, in Mars. You're seeing here the, the power that MM has leveraging card advantage. Uh, so these turns are, are, are tough, but Captain Crispy has got to find the time to uh, set up a big turn. Vargas to key ahead has some time to, to just uh, keep pushing card advantage or maybe just pushing Amber. Oh, a mark of this here. We saw that. Um, Captain Crispy was uh, just developing cards. We don't know if anything really of value has been drawn in Mars. Um, and if the Proliferator gets destroyed, then it's going to be a really rough turn. But we'll see what Vargas does here. Obviously, just like last game, very, very slow in his play, very methodical, trying to make sure that he, he does the moves in the correct order and the correct way that he wants. And so, of course, goes Logos now in this turn. Did see two collective inquiries in there. Wow. And pushing a second key already. And I don't recall the capture pit being used there. There were no creatures. Oh, the, side. yes, you're right. You're right. Based off of where the board is, sometimes it's a... <laughs> Auto encoder and mean sort of creatures. What? <laughs> I mean, if you threw an animating force on it and yeah. somehow, but of course that's not in mass mutation, so you can't do that. <laughs> Animator. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the artifact that has action. Uh, put an artifact into his battle line and it becomes logos. There you go. For the turn. It is helping out our 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 newer Keyforge players, like yeah. myself. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right, a Starline's turn. New Frontiers hit a, uh, a card. I'm wondering what that was. Uh, I think it was a uh, oh, nice it. hit. <laughs> I think it was a uh, Geistoid call, though. Uh, so, Proliferator off the Badge of Unity. Going to get to reap. Archive a card. Again, Captain Crispy taking the time to find, find those outs, find uh, the pressure that's gonna put Vargas in the back foot. But losing those double in here somewhere is 
It's going to make it really hard to get that card advantage back. Mm -hmm. um, it's really just Proliferator and Targets and New Frontiers now. All right, and it looks like Vargas picked up his archives this turn. Yeah. Purging those in here somewhere is also devaluing the Island of Misfit Toys a little bit, uh, which grabs all your Geistroid cards from the discard. Forward-thinking plays. I'm wondering if we see a Sanctum Eaton Star this turn. Going to play Mark of this. Oh, the Mark of this. And he puts it on Quartermaster Body, so of course that's going to mean that he's uh, locked into Star Alliance next turn, is that correct? Yes. Um, that'll have to be the case unless you Mark of this is another creature or something. And there comes out another Infernace. Wow. Really finding the time to disassemble that deck. Um, Looks like it might be just purging out the Geistoid. Also searching for those pips. Wants to just keep the advan advantage on that Amber. Which Vargas has been doing. That's what the deck does, it seems. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yep. So is the... Hitting pips. Another two there. Progress now sitting a, a clean seven amber ahead. Oh, nine amber ahead. Wow. And ten from the steel. That is, you know, that's rough. So there's there's eight in the pool plus the six from the key. And Captain Crispy's on zero keys, three amber. Yeah. Gonna need to find answers. But I didn't see a lot of amber control in the deck. There was the brain dart, um, the strength from diversity, uh, a couple creatures that can reap and fight. But it's pretty combo centered and not hitting those combos yet. And the Eden start to disrupt it. I'm not sure what that's hitting. All right. And there was the, the second key, so it looked like uh, we're now back with Vargast, of course. Oh, yeah, that was a pass, wasn't it? <clears throat> yes, it was. He passed it over to Captain Crispy, and Captain Crispy seemed to just pass it right back. No star lines to play. Oh, no. This is a bad spot. Uh, forging the key and pushing a third. This is... This is a faster race than we saw last game. I mean, Vargas came out very, very quickly in the last game, but this time really, really seems to be putting the pressure on Captain Crispy, and Captain Crispy has not really, hasn't been able to do much with it, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Looks like going to stun his own creature. Or he may be able to stun all mutant creatures and avoid that. Yeah, I think that's what just happened. All right, sitting on eight amber, uh, threatening that third key already. Wow. <laughs> Cap Crispy on no amber, no keys. What a comeback it will be if he, if he takes it, though. Yeah, all the amber that he had generated, of course, is now captured onto that creature on the field, and he's got to pull out a Hail Mary at this point. I don't know what he can do to to capture th or delete three amber without a board established. Mm -hmm. That time walk last turn really hurt. Yeah. I wonder if that may have been the deciding factor. Okay, pulling archives, grabbing that Hail Mary, <laughs> taking the Eden's jar, and running it in. Okay, I wonder what that opened up for him. <clears throat> oh, wow, the Mars turn that's been waiting. If he can buy the time, that's, that's exactly what he Nope, needs. and that's oh, it. Wow. wow, congratulations to Vargas taking, <laughs> taking this here. Um, and becoming the winner of the Alliance Tournament at Vault Tour Roseville. Um, June, we obviously 
got to see the last game. It was so close, Captain Crispy pulling it back. This yeah. one, Vargas was in the driver's seat from the beginning and never let his foot off the pedal. Um, I guess it just in your your view, just like how how efficient was that that turn or that that game? It just seemed like everything that Vargas wanted to do just came out. Six card turns over and over again. That's the power of Auto Encoder, Eclectic Inquiries, um, and maybe just some solid draws. Um, hitting that encoder the first two turns, both games, put, uh, put a really tough uh, question for Logan and not something he was able to answer. Not, not, not really at all. And I just have to ask because, of course, you competed in um, Alliance. Just from what you've seen so far and you've watched uh, the games and talked with the people, just like how, how did you feel about the, in a sense, the diversity of the decks uh, being used across it? I mean, obviously, we even see, see Grim Reminders at the top table, um, Vargas pulling out Mass Mutations. What was your thoughts of just like overall how the field was looking? Well, there were a lot of experimental decks, uh, a lot of Grim Reminders to try things out. I think Captain Crispy has been working on a lot of different builds. And um, the thing is, like, the meta is brand new, right? Mm -hmm. So you can really bring anything. We saw AOA, we saw Coda, Mass Mutations, uh, Grim Reminders, Winds of Exchange, and even Vault Masters 24. Uh, someone opened up their decks yesterday, uh, Friday, and said, let's run it. There you go. <laughs> That's an also a, a great thing to hear. Of course, everyone trying out so many different things. Yeah. Um, okay. And so, of course, everybody, that is, again, uh, the Alliance Finals there. Vargas is your winner. Captain Crispy uh, coming up in second. So, obviously, congratulations to both of them. Um, we are going to take a small break. And as I said, when we come back, we're going to be getting things going for the sealed top eight. Um, so, don't go anywhere so you can catch all that action. Make sure you're hydrated. June, thank you so much for joining me during this time frame. I'm so happy to be here. I'm glad I got to commentate my co-victors uh, last game in finals. Uh, I, I'm so happy to be the uh, Archon champion and <laughs> Vargas V Alliance, as I'm sure will happen. <laughs> well, we'll see. Of course, the, the queen is trying to defend her throne here, um, so we'll see what happens then there. But again, everybody, be right back from that. Make sure you guys are all ready for some more Key Forge action coming from you at Vault Tour Roseville here in Roseville, Minnesota. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you.
right, everyone, welcome back to Vault Tour Roseville here in Roseville, Minnesota. We have actually switched to doing the Archon um, find top eight at the moment um, due to, of course, uh, some people's travel schedules. Um, so we're hoping that we can get through this and still get um, all the matches in um, without any issues. Uh, and with this happening, June, of course, has stepped away because she is in the Archon. And so, of course, my buddy Miggy is going to be joining us here to do the commentary. And so, Miggy, thank you so much for joining us. I guess for you, how excited are you to see uh, this matchup that we actually have at our uh, streaming table? Yeah, no, I'm super excited. I've heard a lot about Nova's deck and that just can outpace most things. So really excited to see uh, what Ewok's yeah, yeah. got. I actually don't know what he was playing for Archon. Yeah. So. Yeah, and so we're actually getting a chance to see see that deck uh, here. It is uh, the Stoke Waste, the Swindler Zoom Master. It's a Grim Reminders deck, um, bringing Equidon, Geistoid, and Mars to the table. Um, Miggy, I, just from your experience with Geistoid so far, or not Geistoid, Grim Reminders so far, um, just like seeing the, the houses here with this deck, uh, I guess, where do you think that um, things lie with this and like what, what kind of style he might be going for to try to take over Jacques, which we've seen Jacques a lot, of course, so across the past ball tours. Yeah, so definitely see the Winds of Death key abduction. A lot of people are running that. Flea Market's going to be really interesting to see what they can randomly pull out of someone's hand if they can pull that off, potentially getting who knows what out of Jock, right? And that just random disruption to be able to play a card, even if they don't necessarily want it, but keep Jock from having it, could also be a good chain in this matchup. Yeah, and so of course we'll see how that all unfolds as the match uh, gets going. And, you know, with, with this, of course, those that may know Nova as well as Ewok, uh, these are uh, our two friends and teammates here, um, you know, taking it out on each other. So, of course, uh, I, I imagine that they're both um, unhappy that they had to play each other in this first round, but, of course, excited at the same time to see um, which one is going to be able to, to move forward. Um, and so, of course, Ewok uh, getting here within here somewhere right away and already just milling the top of the deck. Yeah, Nova skimming through the discard, which is so important with Grim Reminders to just see what they've pitched already to kind of plan out what you're doing next and see if are they pitching a lot of creatures to set up that wins of death or something similar. Oh, and scrap abilities are so good. Just being able to discard Snippy to get rid of Eddie instantly. Yeah, uh, definitely. And we want to, again, say a, a thank you to all of you who are here um, tuning in for the uh, top eight of Archon. Um, it's very appreciative that you guys are showing all the support here for Keyforge action in the kickoff of the Vault Tour 2024 season. Um, always uh, appreciative of the Keyforge community. All right, so going Logos right away. Yeah, just love that efficiency. Tau Tau Vapors is such a great card. Draw two, archive anything out of your hand, and see an archive over there building up slowly. Definitely getting rid of the Eddie early, slow to jock down a bit, but probably be perfectly fine. Yeah, and so now, of course, the, the turn is passed over, it looks like, to Ewok. Uh, but at least just at the moment, of course, Ewok is uh, being ever so kind for us, showing us his hand, and he's got the Mars uh, pod there that it looks like he's gonna rock. Um, ooh, getting the scoop up. Yeah. Which looks like he has a full Mars suite and has the full combo, so he's gonna play Doctor, probably Target next, and then uh, ready both to reap. Oh, okay. Went ahead and pitch permanent record. And has a discard pip on it. Yep, and then target the interesting curious what the archive here. And this is one of the hardest choice that Grim Reminder gets you. You get so much back out of your discard. It's what do you want now versus soon versus later. And counting out like what how much of each house you have and all that stuff of what's coming next, what houses you want. So many more complex choices from previous sets. Now, that's also important, I think, to keep in mind um, with Jacques, knowing that, it, uh, if I remember correctly, Jacques has some Infernus uh, in there. So I guess, Miggy, in your opinion, w knowing that you know Nova has that at any moment, how 
how even more important can that be when it comes to making those decisions and pulling them into your archives? Yeah, it becomes critical. So if you're looking for a combo like key abduction, winds of death, if you discard winds of death, you need to get it in your archive as soon as possible. Otherwise, you're going to be really crippled for that combo. Um, and it looks like Zoom Master only has one winds of death. Um, so even harder at that point where you only get one time to really do it. Yeah, so the, of course, there's the combo that you talked about, putting the Ironix Rebel down. Um, and, and of course, uh, generating quite a bit of amber there. Um, at four at the moment, of course, not not uh, quite yet at a um, check, but now, of course, doing the count for Haunted. And I, it, he went quick, pretty quickly. I don't think he was Haunted yet. No. Yeah, sitting at eight, it looks like. Yeah, and this set's been a very interesting efficiency where it's not draw, it's not archive, it's just discard and then redraw at the end of your turn. Um, so it feels real refreshing at the end when you just say, I have no cards, draw up to six. Yeah, and, and obviously uh, Nova looking at the discard again. Very key for the, the Infernus, but also just uh, the, the play style that Nova does. Uh, you know, a long-time veteran player here, very much always trying to make sure she knows exactly what is in that discard pile and what's been played and keeps track of the cards that have been put on the field um, to this point. Um, so I'm not surprised to see her pick up that discard early and start counting uh, and looking at them. Yeah. Yeah, and this set gives you an interesting choice too because a lot of decks want to be on it. So creatures on board aren't always the worst thing because you killing them puts them in the discard, which means makes them haunt it for their next turn to uh, in here somewhere and all those good things to just have more options. So it, it gives you a lot more complex choices that you really have to think through and think about what your deck wants versus doesn't. And also, of course, makes, uh, you know, more more uh, tasty options for Infernus because you're going to have a lot of cards in that discard pile. Yep. Yeah, so timing it versus holding it is always so critical. Okay, so we'll see. I, it looked like she already does have uh, an Infernus in hand um, from that quick little look that we saw. Uh, she's cold, holding the cards close to her chest. She doesn't want to let us uh, let us at the co the casting table know what's going on, but we got a little bit of a peek. Yeah, I see a peek of an Odoak up there. Which, for against Grim Reminders, there's not a lot of stealing. So, Odawak, great for other sets, great for too much to protect, but in this set, with Don't Believe Your Eyes, Hypnotic Man, it's just as good. And for our newer players, uh, what does that card do uh, in general? Uh, for Hypnotic Man? Uh, yes. Yeah, so for every Mars creature you have, a fr enemy creature captures from its own side. So, it's a bit of a slower steal, but being it's not the word steal, Odoak doesn't do anything for it. So yeah. it doesn't just outright block it. Okay. Ooh, Buzzle, go to Purge, ready. Ooh, two Infernuses in hand. Yeah, so that's where the harder choice came in. So now they could fight with the Buzzle and get rid of the combo. So kill the Rebel, Purge. Uh, Doctors sadly loses. It wouldn't get anything, but... Can at least get half of it. Yep. Yep, and then you, you you called it right there. <laughs> fought fought right into the Ironix Rebel, gets it off the field, and there's the purge. Yep. Uh, Ironix Rebel and a scoop up with that one. Yep. So get them get rid of a little bit of amber and get rid of a combo you don't have to deal with later. Ooh, and then the second Infernus. I, I very much expected that was going yeah. to be back to back there. Um, so of course we didn't didn't really fully matter what was the first two because that was going to come up at, at some point with this second Infernus. But uh, now it'll be interesting, in my opinion, what what we see next. Oh, oh. what's well, upside down? What card is that? Uh, if if I remember correctly, that is here. We will do a double check here. Yeah. <laughs> I recognize the card, but it's more so I want to, don't want to give the wrong name, especially for our newer viewers. Uh, we don't want to give false information at the table. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just got just enough glare where I can't really tell. <laughs> that is the energy vampirism. Mm, okay. 
Uh, so for their newer players, it's a play cap uh, creature captures one from its own side for each amber on that creature, deal one damage to a creature, and it has a, an amber pip on it. Yeah, so more of that slow steal that then will kill the creature potentially, which can really do a lot of great things for you. Oh, I see that Ewok has an extinction. So it really feels like, of course, right now, um, very much trying to stay calculated, stay composed, figure out what's going, uh, what what that next move is. Obviously, Ewok has a second Ironix Rebel in there, so mm -hmm. even though the one got purged, that doesn't mean that his uh, combo is done yet. Uh, but it does, of course, mean that it won't trigger as often as if he had that second Ironix Rebel um, ready in hand. Yeah, and make it harder to rule a six with it. Yes. Because uh, we saw that in the Alliance Finals. We did. Where they rule a six with Rebel and just kept going. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's brutal to see someone just reap for six amber. Yeah, and of course, uh, speaking on that, right? Oh, and then that's go. where uh, Vargast, of course, um, you know, it furnished out the Iron X uh, Rebel as well, trying to stop that. And then, of course, here comes uh, uh, Ewok pulling out the moves there, and you see the die to try to keep track of the rule of six. Obviously, we have a judge um, wandering around too, but it's always great um, at this point where judges are um, looking at various matches that the players themselves are keeping track of these uh, rule of six um, interactions. Yeah. Yeah, in the finals, the judge had a little piece of paper off to the side to rule of six all the different cards because there were so many <laughs> that it just becomes a lot to keep track of. All right, so there's there's two uses, five amber. At this level, it's so important to like walk through all this stuff because online people go through it quickly, and sometimes we we'll even just skim over things, even in person. But every little detail can matter, so it's really good to see them just walk through the whole thing. Yeah, and and this is where, of course, uh, both these players being longtime KeyForge players, they're they're their veteranness is showing at this point, doing exactly that, as you said. Um, you don't want to make those mistakes at the table that could end up being a deciding factor later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like they're talking through it right now, um, making sure all the counts are right and all that, because you don't want to mess up a rule of six and be too high or too low with it. So, of course, uh, Ewok now getting up to seven amber because of this this combo. Yep. Um, Which, and this set is very common, actually, because both Rebel and uh, the Doctor there is common card. So it's pretty easy to get something with it. It's just having the other tools in the deck to really make it shine. Yeah. So it looks like Ewok's trying to decide what he wants to do next. He's getting really close to, of course, hitting the rule of six with Iron X Rebel. Um, Doctor there, of course, still has a little bit more, but once he hits the rule of six with Iron X Rebel, he won't be able to pull that out anymore. Mm -hmm. So there goes the extinction, and they're calling a trait, most likely Demon, I believe, is all of those. So everything but the Imp is killed. Gaining two chains? Yeah. And so, of course, it's still Ewok's turn. Um, seeing the cards there uh, hasn't passed turn, so likely still just doing that same thing, just trying to figure out what he, what, what he wants to do before, of course, uh, he, he hits that rule of six and then, of course, ends his turn. We see him pick up the cards again. He doesn't have any more Mars in his hand. So it's very much going to come down to what he wants to do on the board. Yeah, and seeing if he has any other creatures he wants to play. 
though. I think the only other one I saw was Snippy, which has a play effect, deal two damage, which could finish off the Buzzle. So he might be thinking, just go ahead and burst up, kill the Buzzle, and next turn, reap and keep going. Yep, so he hit that six with uh, Iron X Rebel, of course. That's why it looks like he rep, uh, reaped there. And then we move it off the board. Um, so looks like uh, he didn't grab anything there. Oh, I believe it has to be a Mars creature. That's right, for Doctor. Okay. So being nothing died, there's nothing in there for him. But shedding a chain and drawing up. Yeah, I'm curious how Nova's going to respond. Now, of course, uh, Ewok threatening that first key on check. Um, Nova, no, no Amber at the moment. Um, we're just under 30 minutes left in the round. Um, so, Miggy, so far, how do you feel like each player is playing to the strengths of their decks? I feel like they're playing great. Nova knows that you have to get rid of the combos in the Zoo Master deck because, as we just saw with that rule of six, if there were double Rebels, it could have been double the trouble, right, where... Not only do they rule a six between two creatures, now you can do it between six or more. Um, so definitely trying their best to keep that at bay. Uh, the Infernus play was great play on that part. Just get rid of some of that combo, some of the things that they will want later. Um, and then looking out for wins of death key abduction, getting rid of creatures is really good. It doesn't give you the full value of a furnace, but keeps them from forging keys for free. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, and Ewok made an interesting choice leaving Buzzle alive, where now if he was able to go again, a creature lets him fight to kill it so he can start bringing it back with Doctor. Mm -hmm. So that combo, if you don't have a way to kill it in hand, it, leaving a creature is good for you in that sense. So double auto act to capture two. Definitely no stealing going on now. It looks like they're talking through and just reading through the cards again, which always good to do at this any game. Just double check what's on board, what it can do, what it can't do. Elusive sometimes has the full text, sometimes it's short. So you, yeah. you want to make sure you don't miss anything before you make a call. Yeah, and, and just again, because uh, I know we do have some newer uh, viewers that are dropping in, checking out the game. Oh, could you explain what Elusive is? Yeah, so Elusive is the first time the creature fights, no damage is dealt. So... It's basically a miss on the first fight. So the second one, you need two in order to actually do any damage and potentially kill it. Yeah, which of course can be uh, a real pain depending on what you want to do on the board. You know, having to waste essentially two creatures uh, actions to try to take it down. Um, and so, as you said, if it doesn't have the full text sometimes, especially for those newer players, it's important to, to walk through everything. Um, but these, of course, two, two veteran players, um, but with the stakes on the line, of course, the winner going on to the semifinals, you got to make sure everything is, you know, I's are dotted, T's are crossed, you're ready to go, um, and no mistakes are made. Yeah, Nova's doing something we see a lot in these higher level plays, like the Alliance Finals, where you double check your deck list to see what's in your hand, what's in your discard, what's in your archive, and what's left in your deck, just to give you a better sense of how the rest of the game is going to go, and if you can keep the tempo you're at now, or if you need to do something else. Oh, nice. You're getting a nice little board wipe there, getting rid of a lot of key, th key things that have reap effects and all those, where now the rebel by himself just has a play effect, so not as eff eff effective on the field. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. It's very much, uh, I think, again, a smart move, leaving that Iron X rebel there, because it its effect is... It, you want to play it to you know do it, to get those readied creatures. Once it's sitting on the field, it's... It's just a, a two-powered creature. It doesn't do too much for you. Yeah. And Nova definitely thinking about Winds of Death coming and thinking about, hey, I have a big board. I've, I know I've warded some of it, but giving them too many creatures in the discard. Uh, and we see first key coming out. Yep, there's the first key. And, and going back to what you said with the Winds of Death, knowing that the other Ironix Rebel is already purged, you know, his combo is is currently on the board, you yep. know, in that sense. So if he is to, to play it, if she had removed that, 
that just plays to the strengths of knowing that in the next turn, he once he picks up those archives, he's yeah, ready to go. Back, yeah. So we see Ewok with a uh, shopping spree in his hand. So he'll be able to discard every card in his hand and then draw that many. So potentially we'll let him cycle into something he's looking for. Obviously getting more cards in his discard is good at this point, uh, especially without Winds of Death. Oh, and he has Flea Market, which personally is one of my favorite cards. I love anything that's a little bit of randomness, a little whimsical. So uh, for those that don't know, it's an artifact that comes into play. Uh, when you action to use it, and we see again played now, uh, he's able to uh, reveal a random card from Nova's hand and may pay one to play it. So you don't have to pay one. You get information out of their hand, and you get this nice effect that you potentially can slow them down or get a key thing out of their hand. You have to pay for it, but it could be very much worth it, especially if Harry has a Amber Pip on it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, looks like he played the shopping spree, drawing back up. Yeah, Nova going straight into Saurian. Pterodactyl is so good, but comes into play stunned, which is unfortunate because it just slows it down a bit more. Um, stun is your creature, uh, you have to take its action to unstun it. So otherwise you just can't use it. No action effects, play effects, or loop effects. Okay. Nova looks like they're just going ahead and setting up a big board to just prepare to next turn, hopefully reap out. Yeah, it'll be interesting, though, um, if the uh, Winds of Death comes out, um, just because, of course, that will clear the board um, for her, what she had set up. But maybe she has an answer. Maybe she's already thinking that that could happen, too, and yeah. has something in hand ready to counter that if that is to come out. Yeah, and luckily she already has the Ludo out, so the amber on top of the Odoax will just disappear and go back to the common supply, uh, thanks to its ability of giving all other creatures that destroyed effect. Miggy getting some love in the chat here. Uh, and I want to say a thank you again, Miggy, for joining me for, uh, you know, this, this match here and, and helping, you know, our players understand a little bit more of what's going on on the board. Yeah, no problem. Happy to help. And I was going to watch these matches anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> Why not watch it from here at the commentary table, right? Yeah. There you go. So I'm, I'm not, I believe we're still on Ewok's turn here. Um, yep, and so he's going, he's going Geistoid this turn. Yep. Yeah, it's a sign that he may not have Winds of Death right now, being he's playing creatures instead of just discarding them to archive them all later. Mm -hmm. Which, that, going back to what you were talking about earlier, you know, with the, uh, the flea market being able to get some information, this is one of those other ways that you can get information is based off of how a player is playing and mm -hmm. what cards they decide to use. Knowing that he has the Winds of Death, if he's putting more creatures on the field, that's counterintuitive to what Winds of Death wants to use. Yeah. Yeah, and at the same time, though, you're just giving your opponent something to answer, right? Because if every turn they can just reap for six, they're in a good position to kind of close out the game. Yep, so he plays the in here somewhere. So yep. he's looking to archive two things, which going straight for the extinction, board wipe with chains, but not quite the winds of death to get the archive going. He's probably just thinking, how can I slow down Nova long enough to get the last combo I need to go into Key Abduct? Yeah, and I think this, this, this second one decision is the one that's obviously very important, trying to figure out what is that second card there. Yeah. And, and sometimes I, it's good to pick a mix of houses, right? So they don't know exactly what's in your hand still, exactly what you want to do next. Yeah, but of course, go in with the doctor there, uh, archive, um, knowing exactly the, the combo that he was going for makes a lot of sense. 
Uh, but it does remove him from being haunted. Yeah. I don't think right now that's a, a, a big deal, knowing like what he has on the field. Uh, not yeah. too much that really ma- matters with him being haunted in this st- at this state of the game. Yeah, and already getting the value out of it with Amber staying in here somewhere, being not being haunted anymore. It's fine. And he is in check for his second key. Yeah, not being able to see Nova's hand is very curious what's going through uh, her mind at the moment, just in terms of choices. You have that big battle line, but what's in your hand can make a huge difference to the choices you're about to make. Yeah, for sure. And uh, and this is, of course, Nova um, being on stream before. This is something that we're, we're, we're used to seeing. She very much keeps the... Uh, the card's kind of close to her chest. And I think part of that is also, you know, you don't want to accidentally lean a little bit too far forward that your opponent then gets a quick glimpse um, at yeah. your, your deck. And, of course, uh, for Nova now, it looks like going into uh, Dis. Yeah, playing the Evil Eye, upping that key cost to stall out Ewok a little bit longer. Uh, fighting with Buzzle. And then is able to purge a creature next to it to ready again. Fight again. Well, it looks like she's she's thinking on it. Yep. Yeah, an incompetitive play. Take backs are at your opponent's discretion, and very few will let you. So typically it's best to hold it and think through before you say and finalize your actions. Yeah, and, th- and that was the, very much as you were saying, you know, Nova holding her hand on that card, kind of basically saying, like, I, you know, I may put this into effect, I may not. Um, it's a very smart move to do that. Yep, and based off that archiving, go ahead and then get rid of the rebel, seeing it as a huge threat. But having to fight through that taunt definitely cost it a lot of creatures in purging. Gonna fight again, but of course, he's gonna purge just to ready it one more time. The last one looks like it'll be a re. Interesting. Oh, that's more interesting. Hysteria. So Hysteria will put every creature in play back into its own hand. So I'm curious, with with uh, Hysteria being played there, the obviously right before um, Nova had purged uh, or fought into um, the, the the card there, then purged to reap, and then do Hysteria. I wonder what the thought process there was to not just reap and then play Hysteria, not having to purge that extra creature. Do you think it was because she was trying to, um, you know, make her deck more efficient? backing down uh, some of the creatures off the fields, knowing that now, obviously, in her deck, when she cycles through, there's less um, excess creatures that she may not want to be using or playing. Yeah, definitely efficiency is in mind here. Also, just want to make sure you get the Rebel off the field, don't give them back in their hand to give the combo. Uh, and then, most likely trying to... Oh, discard the puzzle. Uh, also, just trying to catch up at this point, so stalling out is the best you can. Chaining up their hand and instead of destroying for wins of death is great because now they either have to take a total turn to discard or they're going to draw less on their next turn. So Hysteria just a great card around all around for those big boards. All right, so so far Ewok's been in very much in control so in this game. Um, but of course we have you know just under 16 minutes left in the the round. Um, so, of course, Nova, definitely knowing this deck, knowing that it's won uh, previous Vault Tours, still has a lot of answers. But right now, um, things are looking really good for Ewok. Yeah. Yeah, definitely has lead, one key, seven amber, more than enough for the next key, and a ton of cards in hand. So reading through all of them carefully and weighing out options is a key thing at this point to make sure you don't go too fast. Uh, something Rim Reminders gives us an interesting thought about is, because uh, I see UFO in his hand, 
discarding is good, but too much discarding can be bad. So if he discards, hits, wins of death, but gets key abduction, half the combo is gone, and if he doesn't have another way to archive it offhand, could put you in a bad situation. It looks like he is picking up his archives and most likely going Mars. So War of the discard Worlds pip. with a discard pip. Go ahead and get that board wipe, get the amber off Odawak. And they do go for the UFO. All right. Let's see what they discard. Generous offer, ecto charge. Sad to see that. There's wins the winds of death. Of death. Mars card, so they will now do it. And Nova, as you should, when any bulk discards happen, says, "Let me take a get Leander at it and see what all hit the table." Yeah. So, and it looks like Ewok only has one card left in deck so if able to he can probably read through everything and figure out what exactly it is and there goes the target most likely getting back wins of death yeah yeah it'll be interesting to see the way he plays now because with knowing exactly how many cards are left in your deck and knowing you don't want to shuffle for wins of death He'll probably may even hold things to potentially check that. Yeah. Uh, oh, and it looks like he wants to not finalize Winds of Death just yet. Yeah, and this is a obviously could be a big decision here, trying to figure out what exactly he wants to do. Um, yeah. And as you said, you can see, I believe just looking at it, it looks like he just has one card left in his deck before he would have to reshuffle. And then obviously, you're, as you said, the entire efficiency of Winds of Death goes out the window and it's no longer important that you have it in your hand. Yeah, and same thing with Ecto Charge at that point. That last key for free, oh, looks like he's going to try for the Ecto Charge next turn instead. Which luckily will be a turn faster because Winds of Death and the key yeah. abduction will take two turns, whereas Ecto Charge... With enough amber, you potentially could get it next turn. Mm -hmm. Nova doing a check again. Yep. Uh, it looks like he just passed his turn, too. So Nova really going to take some time to analyze before picking how she wants to proceed. And so she's currently sitting at the five amber. Um, as we said right now, uh, still a key behind. Ewok threatening uh, a second key there. Yeah, and, and having to end the game. Yeah, I was gonna say, charge. and having Ecto Charge in hand. Now, do remember, of course, with the post uh, um, Master Vault uh, or Master Rulebook update, Ecto Charge does has have a minimum um, six Amber count. However, I'm assuming based off of that, uh, how Ewok is playing, knowing that he put that in the archives, is he has a way to generate the extra three Amber that he may be looking for to get to that final six. Because right now, of course, once he forges, he will be at three Amber. Yeah, and. He only needs two because Ecto Charge comes with that pip. So you are correct. Yes. We see Nova going straight for the exhum, going straight into the discard. So Purge is also interesting with key, uh, Ecto Charge because now less cards in the discard mean a more expensive key potentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, curious what Nova's choice is going to be here, thinking about not just right now trying to maybe burn some amber from him, make sure he doesn't have any recursion, but also later down the line thinking, okay, if I can stall him now and keep going, what else do I want to make sure he doesn't draw back into? Yep. And so there's the there's the other Ironix Rebel. Um, so it's going to, of course, uh, remove the, the play that Ewok has been trying to utilize um, and then, you know, does use... Uh, the 
Um, I cannot remember the name of that card there, but it does have the amber pip on it, as you were yeah, saying, trying UFO. to, yeah, UFO, that you're correct, thank you, um, trying to remove some of that to there. Of course, there's the second Infernus. So now we'll see what's the next choices there. Yeah, and Ewok, either way, with this Infernus play coming out, it was going to be a rough choice. Uh, if they went wins of death, Nova could have saw that and just instantly went all creatures. Um, now knowing it's Ecto Charge is going a bit more Amber Control on this play. And getting rid of World of Worlds, yeah. Jacques definitely wants a board present, so great pick. All right, so... Nova passes turn, so that is going to forge a key for uh, Ewok. As we know, his Ecto Charge is sitting in archives right now, uh, but he does have the the one Amber. So now it's kind of deciding where do you, where do we think he goes from here? Yeah, going up from only needing two to now needing five, it's a big difference. So probably changing what he had in mind when he initially had archived it. And it looks like he's reading back through his cards, so debating if he goes Mars, what options he has in terms of creatures that can come into play. Yeah, and we just passed under 10 minutes left in the round. So, of course, uh, this, is a, this is a very um, important time frame, both for Ewok and Nova. Ewok obviously trying to continue to stay ahead and, of course, try to forge that third key. Nova, it's very much important to try to keep Ewok slowed down enough, especially if we're going to get pushed towards the, the, the time limit as well as the time breaker. Um, doesn't want to be too far behind where, of course, neither of those come into effect of being able to push uh, into a victory. Yep. And, yeah, we see Ewok go ahead and grab the dice. Even if he doesn't have the combo, he knows he does it a lot, and just go ahead and grabbing it is always a good play. Uh, plus, good Play a little psychic game with Nova and make him think he has something he doesn't. Okay. So he's going to play, which will make him discard. Oh, and he's looking to stall a bit by upping the key cost on the reap effect. Again, I'm just gonna point it out one more time. It's, as we get to the, you know, the final minutes of this game, that's a, a very important. Yeah. Even when being ahead, you know, just continuing to stay ahead. Yeah, and it looks like he might. He's baiting probably now. Do I want to get rid of those infernuses again, or do I want to hold this so I can draw just one card and hope for that ecto charge next turn? Which too bad to see. Never got a chance to use the flea market. Yeah. It's yeah. always just fun to see. You never know what you're going to get out of their hand. And <laughs> it could be something great because this could be a very different game if he had got the Exhum at one point to get a Rebel out and potentially do some more interesting things. Yeah, it looks like he passed turns there, draws the one card. So definitely threatening Nova with that Ecto Charge. Nova information exchanges to steal one, make it a little bit harder. And Eddie to up that key cost, so Ecto Charge will have to be for a decent amount. I think there's two in the archive right now. Yeah, it does. Uh, he does have two in there. Yeah, so it'll be key cost plus 20 plus 22 minus however many uh, is in his discard, which with the amount of purge, the judge will probably have to double count this. Looking real thin, though. Mm -hmm. uh, but he does have the cards in hand. He could potentially pitch and just go through. Um, yeah, it looks like he's trying to count it out because it's a critical moment in the game. Where yeah. He could lock it or could stall and give Jacques a chance to come back. Yeah, and that's, a, that's the thing that um, I think has been uh, great about this matchup is that despite Ewok being up, uh, despite the fact that right now Nova has not forged a key, it, it's felt like this entire time that 
Jacques could turn things around yeah. um, at any point. Yeah, and at this level of play, you just see that back and forth a lot. Um, even if someone gets a heavy combo, gets off to a great start, the other deck will have an answer and just slow them down. And so it looks like uh, it looks like Ewok did pick up his archives. Okay. So we'll see the final count here. Hopefully, they have enough. Oh, they went Mars. Interesting. Oh, I see. They're trying to get rid of the... Yeah, so got rid of the Eddie to down the key cost to make that key abduction just a little bit easier. Throws out the Doctor. Reap up the key cost again, so looks like Nova will be able to forge, but it will cost nine instead of the traditional six. And we are about to hit what appears to be four minutes left on the round. Now, I will say, of course, the, the timer in the upper left-hand corner may not be completely official just due to um, us uh, trying to get everything ready for the stream. Um, but we are right around that four minutes left in the round. Um, and obviously, Nova now finally forging that first key. It becomes important of can Nova um, continue to push this and get closer to forging that second key and tying it up to get to the tiebreakers. Yeah, and Ewok did a great job of getting in check, having Ecto Charge in hand to uh, threaten to really end the game next round. So Nova has to figure out how she wants to go about answering it. And it looks like the answer is Twin Bolt and Eddie, and it's now awarded. So upping that key cost by three now and making it a lot harder to just end the game instantly. All right, Miggy, so we're at this point, three minutes left. Um, as you said, key cost just got raised, so you can't uh, forge just this moment. Um, but what do you think is the play from here, looking at what we can see from Ewok's hands and knowing the, the board state and knowing that we're about to hit that time limit? Yeah, I think he's got to try for the Ecto Charge. Um, discard anything without an Amber Pip, play the Junk Restoration, and just keep threatening with Amber. Uh, the Eddie is warded and on field, so it would be nice to have a few more creatures, but uh, depending on the count of his discard, he still potentially could bring it off, but it's definitely going to be close. Because Nova looks like they've purged 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 cards, and the total deck's only 36, and plus 20 is definitely going to hurt. So just as you said, discards the two uh, Geistoids without a pip on it. Yep, and he's got to count it out. Put out the Junk Restoration, of course, getting to... So it looks like he has 22 in his discard by a quick count, which, forgive me if I'm one off, <laughs> uh, and is deciding what to do with this last creature. And is asking how many cards do you have in your archive, because it matters a lot for the Eddie. And is picking to play it, go ahead and play that creature, comes to play ready due to being haunted, to reap to get one more. And there's Ecto the Ecto Charge out, and that's and the game. got it, yep. And yeah, e it was definitely a close call, though. Had to count out every last card and triple count and see if the reap was more worth it than the card in the discard, and it turns out it was. Yeah, and as you said, I mean, I would just want to uh, point it out. You kind of talked about the amount of cards that were purged there really started to become a, a you know, that factor of having to car count everything and make sure there was exactly that. And, of course, it was exactly what he needed to get to the to forging that, that third key. Uh, and, and moving on to the, the next round. Uh, Nikki, what did you think overall, seeing, seeing that, that matchup and, of course, seeing um, you know, Jacques in the Grim Reminders deck uh, of Zoom Master um, battling it out? Yeah, I think we definitely just saw the efficiency of Grim Reminders, right? Nova had a hard time drawing into everything she needed, even though having Logos is normally the efficiency you always want. But it's just that discard and always drawing up to six really is 
a bit more efficient than other logos we've seen. Yeah, yeah. And so, of course, uh, you know, congratulations to Ewok for moving on. And, uh, you know, a big congratulations also to Nova. Unfortunately, uh, her run ends here. But, of course, a, a um, strong player, a veteran player. And I'm sure we'll see her in some top eights uh, here in the very near future as well. Yeah, for sure. And maybe even still running Jock. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. Um, but, uh, of course, with that being said, we are going to take a small break as we get ready for the next uh, semifinals. Um, and with that, we'll bring you some more action so don't go anywhere uh, make sure that you guys have all your snacks and food and water and ready to go because we have more key forge action coming to you from roseville minnesota here in just a little bit <laughs>
All right, everyone, welcome back to Vault Tour Roseville here in Roseville, Minnesota. And joining me now for the semifinals is Sydney S.E. Steele. Sydney, thank you so much for joining us. I am us. so excited to be commentating this game. Yes, because, of course, on stream, we have June versus Captain Crispy. Uh, June, of course, the current uh, reigning Vault Tour champion in here Rose in Roseville. Uh, and Captain Crispy, we obviously saw him in the finals for uh, Alliance earlier, and now, of course, in the semifinals trying to push into the finals again and you were talking just a little bit before we did this how you knew June's deck very well mm -hmm. um, and you didn't know uh, Captain Crispy's but we did look at that so yes. looking at these two decks what do you kind of expect to see with the how these it's going to unfold absolutely so what's going to happen is you are going to see the coolest amazingest untamed witch pod you have ever seen and the rest of her deck kind of supports that but also it has a lot of tricks in it so the uh, the Untamed Pod all centers around Witch Queen having it in the center, and then the uh, Kangafant is going to allow her to uh, reap, kill things, and then bring them back. And so she can make, she has made over 30 amber in a turn because of that uh, combination. And uh, one thing I want to say about, about Captain Crispy, just fun fact, uh, all of his, his, his Pods for Alliance and his deck here all have the special borders. All of them have been uh, Awakening and Battle-Tested decks. Yeah, yeah. And so as I did mention earlier, if you are uh, new to um, the stream, uh, the Battle-Tested decks were, of course, the decks that were prizes at the store championships. So, of course, that means Captain Crispy was one of those that was able to secure it. So it's been really cool, I will say, for, of course, seeing the different borders uh, on the cards and, of course, being displayed here on stream. Totally. And I think that um, the the Geistoid pod that he has here here is a very support pod because the the Brobnar and the Mars that he has is the Mars is really going to go off like that's what I expect to see here mm -hmm. yeah I, I actually just wanted to talk about that because of course um in uh the sealed tournament uh you you were in that and of course we got to see on stream your Brobnar pod oh my gosh. um and so you talking about of course uh you know this this Geistoid pod uh being more supportive can you explain a little bit about like the Brobnar pod that you know Captain Crispy kind of is bringing and why for some uh, decks instance that Brobnar pod can be very key. Oh, absolutely. So, I think what when I when I saw his list it had important key actions and so those are going to be the things like memorialize the fallen is going to be something that june has to watch out for because she's not afraid to have her creatures in her discard pile and so there there are other things there that are, are disruption and big bodies are also going to be hard because if she gets all of her um, untamed creatures on the board they might not see play for more than one turn all right, so of course we're you're seeing things unfold a little bit. Obviously, June already at the five amber, um, and as you had said, she, she can generate a lot of amber. Um, and of course, here comes Captain Crispy with the Brobnar pod, and immediately. That is uh, the Cacophonous Riot. Yes. And so he's going to ready and enrage uh, creature in each of its neighbors. So he probably he chose the um, flank creature, so he didn't enrage his Geistoid card. But then that is a fantastic card for not only clearing your opponent's board, but also if they have no one there, it readies three Brobnar creatures so they can reap. It's fantastic. And yeah, he went right into the Haunting Witch with it, getting that off the board, mm -hmm. not allowing June to uh, be able to generate Amber just from playing creatures out on the field. And I, I believe she doesn't have a marker um, on there, but she has told me that she turns her deck sideways when she's haunted. So, of course, seeing the discard pile sideways there means that she is in Haunted. So getting that out now uh, or getting it off the board, of course, is uh, very good to have that early on. Absolutely. It was risky putting it out there early, but I can see because she has so many ways to get things from her discard pile, it actually might advantage her that he killed it, put it in her discard, and now she's Haunted. Yeah. So let's see, of course, what uh, goes from there. It looks like June's you know, calculating what she's going to go. And she, of course, comes out with Untamed. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah, her Waste Knot is the beginning of her huge turns. And usually she'll end a really fantastic Untamed turn with um, the the uh, untamed card that lets you uh, do a damage for each of the amber in your pool. So once she has a lot of amber in her pool, she'll just 
wipe the opponent's board as well. It is, it's incredibly beautiful. Now, I feel like you're testing my knowledge here, but I believe that's Amber Storm. Yes, thank you. There we go. I remember, so some people out there may not appreciate the art as much as me, but I love, I know most of the cards more by the art than I do the name on the card. <laughs> <laughs> I will very much tell you, I, 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 and like you, I pretty much recognize the cards, um, and most of the time I'm having to do the checks real quick to be like, what, what was the What's name, the of, that name card? of that card? Because I don't want to share the wrong information, obviously, for our <laughs> viewers, but that was one that I do remember. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Ooh, everything in her, in her discard pile now. Yeah. So, of course, unfortunately, um, some of the glare sometimes can be a little bit rough with uh, some of the, the card sleeves, so I'm not I quite sure. Boo. Oh, that is Boo, that yes. Boo. Discarding yes. 10 cards. He doesn't have a marker, but he's definitely haunted now. Oh, for sure. And they both actually have a lot of um, haunted effects. And June, forging the first key. There you go. Ace of keys. Cards have words on them. I, I, I hate to break it to you, but they do have <laughs> words on there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, here we go. Unfathomable. Getting that covetous Hema behind taunt, super important. Yeah, taunt with the poison because yeah. it, it being haunted gets that plus two power in poison. So seeing a lot of Mars in Captain Crispy's hands, he's probably going to try and go off next turn. He's doing us a, a very nice caster <laughs> favor there, showing the showing the cards. Not every player uh, does that for us, so yep. of course uh, it makes it a little difficult sometimes, but it helps with that when we see it, that we can kind of look at what what is that next setup, what is that next play potentially Ooh. going, and you were right, going right into the Mars pod. Dis discarding um, uh, that Mars creature that makes you capture it from your own side, so he's probably going to try and wipe them. Oh, drawn up, so just taking the amber off, making that covetous team a very, very juicy target. And with her keys costing more now, it's going to be hard for... She's going to have to try and get that off the board if she's going to get all three keys. All right, so it's curious to see what June decides to do um, off of this. We haven't been able to really see what's in her hand quite yet, so not quite sure uh, if there's a, a set uh, hand crafting that has been d established yet to what she wants to do. We see, we do see a couple, couple untamed, and then right. looks like it's the witch queen yep. right there. Yep. So if she's going geistoid, she's definitely hand crafting. But if she goes untamed, she might try to go off. I see multiple cards in there. The geistoid also might be to get the other witches back. Ooh, an unfathomable too. So there's been a lot of uh, a lot of talk about um, what other witch queen uh, pods could possibly even remotely reach the level of this one. And I think it's funny, I think the Kangafan the one where you uh, reap and destroy yourself makes this the, the exponential crazy pod that it is and it's not even a witch. So you can have as many witches as you want, but you can't uh, reap and kill yourself or fight and kill yourself because they have skirmish with the witch queen now. Mm. So that's why the uh, King of Fan is so important. Well, there we go. Yeah, now- And there, now. there is, yeah, and reclaimed, okay. We don't have an artifact on board yet, but I, I see. Geistoid turn if she wants to handcraft, or an unfathomable turn if she's going to use the board. He discards the Geistoid there, so... Oh, puts out the Grim Reaper. The importance of that is she doesn't want her board too big, because Witch Queen has to be in the middle. Yeah, and we actually, uh, speaking of that, on Friday saw that kind of come into play. It wasn't a big board, but it was mm -hmm. one of those where it has the Witch Queen out, plays a second card, now it's no longer in the center battle right. line. It's both flanks, and so the effects that the, he was looking for, uh, fire, um, fire spray actually was looking for, did not trigger and um, yeah. changed the, the, the complexity dynamic. of that turn. Absolutely. And so she doesn't really want a big board up until the Witch Queen turn. Oh, there you go. Covetous Hema giving up all that amber. Making it to check.
her rolling. Does this mean we're going to see some rules yes, of six here? Yes, this is rules of six. This All is right. rules of six. And there's four of them out there. So, of course, uh, for our newer players, uh, get ready. We're going to see a lot of things going on. <laughs> there, yeah, absolutely. And so now it's in the middle, and it comes in ready because of the Witch Queen. So, Witch of the Dawn has a play effect. And so that's what's going to pull from the discard pile. And then if it reaps, it kills itself, so it goes into the discard pile. But the other Witch, Witch of... Uh, uh, which of the, the eye. eye will come in ready and can reap and bring back which of the dawn and because of the Kangafan, each reap puts them into the discard pile and so that's how you end up getting the rule of six but also how you get to keep the witch queen in the middle because you just put it on the flank and the Kangafan keeps the witch queen in the middle for every witch that comes out wow all it's, right it's beautiful Haunting Witch. And because she can play the Haunting Witch on one side and the Witch of the Eye on the other, Witch Queen's still in the middle. What is, what is your guess for how much Amber you think this turn is going to make? Ooh, well, you said earlier that she can generate 30 Amber in a turn. Her, 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 her best has her been 34. Yeah, <laughs> 34. 34 has wow. been her best. So even more than we thought. Um, I'm going to go with, just because I, I'm a terrible guesser, if you gave me the <laughs> jar and said how many you know, M&Ms are in the jar, I'm always really far <laughs> off. I'm going to go with the even 15 All right. um, just the because <laughs> it'll help out. With that. Fantastic. I'll go, I'll, go with, I'll go with 19. We're going we're gonna to give her a little bit here because the... Um, Rule of Six hasn't gone off too much for the other two witches. And there is the um, multiple other things she can take from her discard pile to bring in ready and reap. And then because uh, Witch Queen's in the center, bring back to her hand. All right, so there's, of course, the Witch of the Eye, as, again, being used, bringing out another Waste card. Not. That's also going to be helpful later because she's going to use that once the rules of six don't allow her to manipulate um, who's in the center, she's going to use that to kill a creature to even out the, the um, flanks so that the Witch Queen stays in the center. And then draw more. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> it's, it's funny that that's like the end result, you know, the mm. side effect. Loving all the different ambers she has. The, the pink one there. Definitely yeah. a, re a reward from the past. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, looks almost like a you know, the the gym leader collection here. Yes. Just seeing a bunch of different uh, options and, and looks. Absolutely. <laughs> I forget the reason why Captain Crispy is holding some of her cards. It could be, oh, cutting her deck. That's right. Oh, that was her. That's what she had left in her deck. Oh, she doesn't want to flip, though. Too early, while she's still pulling things from her discard pile. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're up to nine, so we're already up to a key and a half. Yeah. And... At this point, I don't know if Captain Crispy's going to be able to take her off key. He has two turns to stop her. But he also has to clear her board. Or this happens, you, you get a, a beautiful show next turn, too. Wow, all right. <laughs> so yeah, we'll have to see what, what kind of answer Captain Crispy has in his deck for this. Uh, I should say right. in his hand. hand yeah. He's not even going to have a board after this. Yeah. I, I'm, very, I'm pretty certain she's going to be able to get her hands on. Although if she flips it, because the um, the Amber Storm, mm -hmm. because the Amber Storm um, is in her discard pile, if she flips it, she won't be able to get it with Witch of the Eye. And the manipulation of these cards takes so much thought because if you need to bring them back to your hand consistently and remembering everything that's on board, getting an amber each time for, for a haunting witch and continuing to play things over and over and over again, let alone reaping. So reap with haunting witch. 
And of course, here's where oh, you're no, kind of waste, talking. Waste knotted with haunting witch. Yeah. And so that can be repeated. You witch the eye, the waste knot, bring it back, and you draw over and over and over again. Yeah, this is a this is a very scary combination right now for she, Captain Crispy. She's looking to beat her record here. How much amber? <laughs> yeah, and starting to stack, so it's yeah. even hard to see what's, <laughs> how much we got there. But Oh, my gosh. So what kind of things can you do against this when something like this happens? So I guess if you if the the witch queen is going to be the like the pivotal thing so i guess hand manipulation is something that you can try because if she's going to hold on to that that's mm -hmm. going to be something that she she's going to make sure doesn't get um like it, she'll chain herself with that mm -hmm. but also um the kangafant like without that this is a very very good turn this isn't an exponential amber earning turn mm -hmm. so those two cards are going to be the most important for her to have and so with knowing that, um, obviously we, we don't, we haven't seen the other cards in the field uh, at the moment. Of course, we're looking at these two, <laughs> but like, what is a card that, um, you know, would be something that, uh, or a couple of cards that's something that June may not be wanting to look at, uh, at running into in the, if she were to move on? One of the big ones is because she does have some creatures in the other houses that are worth playing for her, especially the Comfortus Hema to keep the opponent off until... Um, she gets this combo, or maybe she plays out one or two of her untamed creatures to try and dig for the others. Catch and release is a really big issue okay. because that deals with multiple cards in her hand. Now, it is a risk for the opponent because it might not hit the cards, but um, there's, there's also, um, from Woe, Abyssal Sight will absolutely, oh, yes. like being able to pick out literally the Kangafant or Witch, well, you probably don't want to target that in her hand because she could just get it mm -hmm. by having the Witch Queen. Um, but if the Witch Queen isn't there, then the other ones don't come in ready. She has to play them to get the Witch Queen from her discard pile. And so you have an opportunity, uh, like a turn there, before she can go off like this. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a, that coming out, not being able to come out ready, at least buys you right. one turn. exactly. One turn to do something extra. Mm -hmm. And yes, as you said, I, I don't even know how much Amber is there, but I definitely <laughs> can say that is enough for two keys. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there there could be there could be some Mars shenanigans in Captain Crispy's deck that can raise key costs and if you if you raise that enough, um, I think I think he had some rebels in there so they can come in ready. I, we saw his hand and it did have some Mars in it, so we did have a, 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 a person in chat actually throw out a card that I, I think could actually work too, is Cursed Tomb. If she runs oh, into a Cursed Tomb, yeah. that could be a very important thing because there's not Amber um, on creature. there, so they get yeah. purged, which makes that even more uh, risky. Yep, you do, it, you do it once. At that point, she has to change tactics. She knows that unless she can deal with the artifact, like she isn't going to get... 34 amber so she has to she's going to do it once mm -hmm. and then maybe move on to something else because purging her creatures out from untamed there's enough there where then she's into another house more often like it does speed up the rest of her deck so she can have more efficiency there because if she can get all of these purged in one turn that's a lot less cards a lot for one house she doesn't have to call yeah for sure still going love this although rule of six at this point so we're coming to the end of it and archiving. That is the end of her turn. Wow. All right. Oh, good for you. There we go. Yes, so we got great. six, we got 12. 12. Uh, There's a 12, 18, 18, 24. 24 Amber. 24. That is amazing. Yeah, I. Uh, oh. Oh, he did he? No. He didn't. He didn't concede, but the turn went right back to her. Maybe. Hmm. Oh, I think this, he could be, he could, they could be chatting about, interesting. He passed turn. They could be done. They could be chatting about the game. No, it looks like... Oh, a, no, he, he... What did he play? He played... I mean, I see the two haunting... Uh, the yeah, the haunted houses and just, in the island of Misfits Toys. Oh, he's probably played for a good next turn. He's probably going to go off in, in Mars, hoping that he can OTK. Here we go again, ladies and gentlemen. You did say, if it, you know, <laughs> yeah. we saw it last turn, you were about right. to see it another turn, and here we go. This, this is a uh, 
a fantastic repeat performance. And we get to see even more than we did last time because she's, she's going to have to make sure that Witch Queen is in the center. Amazing amount of untamed creatures. I think like only th three action, Waste Knot, Amber Storm, that, that could be it. Now, I, you, you touched on this a little bit earlier, but I do want to um, bring this up, especially for newer players who are getting into, into trading card games or games like, obviously, Keyforge, mm -hmm. is we talked about how you know, mentally focused you have to be Absolutely. with these things. And so, like, talk about, like, how mentally taxing can something be like this, not only knowing that we're at the semifinals, yep. but with a deck like this that requires so much precision and, and the turn orders and the spacing that you need. So I think one of the things that benefits June is that she has played this deck so many times that because it's this portion of the game doesn't take any decisions of interacting with the opponent, there's a lot of experience to go on. So unless there's something like a curse tomb affecting her from the opponent's side, she knows that just like the basic check mark of things. So you keep the witch queen in the center, you have to have Kangafant, and so there are some combinations of these that might actually change the game like if you don't have it out and you need to get the kangafant out then um the the reaping might change putting down creatures might change so it's really slow in the beginning but once you have them all out there then it's 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 kind of muscle memory at that point mm -hmm. especially once you have it and you're you, you're doing it six times you can do probably like three four and five the same way and then, like, once you get to six, you're deciding, how do I want to end the board state? So we saw her archive at the end last time mm -hmm. because that's, she wanted to make sure that those cards were uh, untouchable. So the, the, the middle couple of rule of six times are, are a lot easier than, like, the first and second and the sixth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, again, June being a, a Vault Tour winner, uh, you know, is used to this situation, is used to being in here. And as you said, the more you practice the deck, the more it Absolutely. does become muscle memory. Um, but you always don't know what what's across the table from you every Absolutely. game. And we see her playing the Reclaimed by Nature. We saw that in her hand earlier. She held it. She held it because she wanted to get, um, a, she wanted to hit a, an artifact that might threaten her. Ooh, already archiving. So she's she's not going for doesn't look like she's gonna go for a third turn of this in a row if Captain Crispy could stop her. Mm-hmm. And, and again, because we were getting the, the encore of the last turn, you just see that Amber Pool really just continue to get up there. And, Absolutely. Um, I, I, I will say, I don't know too many cards in um, Grim Reminders that are going to be able to really like pull her off of that. And like right. you said, yeah. really it's going to come down to, does, does Captain Crispy have enough to just mm -hmm. end it in one turn? Right. So he has memorialized the Fallen in his deck, and had he been able to last turn possibly clear the board and then memorialize the fallen he could have taken her down a lot but that might not have worked because two turns in a row is really hard to do that without bringing it back out of house mm -hmm, for sure that waste knot is is clutch for for getting anything that is left in the deck that is part of this combo and it's it's interesting too because it can go off in so many ways with only a fraction of the pieces as long as you have witch queen and kangafant uh the the which of the eye, I think she has two of those, and um, Jarvi, and uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So she actually was uh, brewing an alliance deck with this, and it's not only is it insane, but she, she loves this in Archon because the, the field in Archon is something that she feels this deck can do better against than the field of Alliance. Because in Alliance, you can tech against things that you see, and Alliance is a lot more scaling Amber Control. Mm -hmm. So if people in Grim Reminders are going to go for the really fun combos and the really big uh, Winds of Exchange key abduction, Grim Reminders has less huge scaling Amber Control. Mm -hmm. So uh, she, she feels like this deck is, is better in Archon. Yeah, and I'm looking at the board. I'm just, I'm really curious what we'll see when the turn ends. You know, when when June finally decides, you know, I'm <laughs> done with my turn. 
what is Captain Crispy going right. to do? You know, is he going to play it out? Does he actually have an answer? Or will we see, you know, of course, the, the moving on at this point? But we're 20 minutes in, um, <laughs> uh, and we're looking at two keys forged, a bajillion amber on the field. Um, and Captain Crispy, of course, is just really far behind at this moment because this uh, Vandola is just going off. Absolutely. It's also refreshing to see this in Untamed because there is so much of uh, Geistoid and Mars out there. And this is something that those houses just can't do. Mm. I wonder how this would do against other sets, like how she would play this deck if there was a too much to protect in the field or if there was an interdimensional graft. Like, if you if you can imagine um, Binate Rupture interdimensional grafting her, her pile, she doesn't have enough amber control to deal with something like this either. So, yep, and go. there it is. There yep. is the, the concede from there. So, June uh, taking the win here and moving to the finals where she will defend her title. Oh, my gosh. Um, um, and that is a, a, a fantastic thing to see, as well as, of course, this is a, a new deck bringing to the table. Yeah. Last year it was uh, Becky, and this yeah. year, of course, we're getting Bandola, Bandola. The, the, the double bees. Bs. <laughs> <laughs> and so, of course, um, you know, just seeing that on stream, um, that is a very strong, powerful combo. Absolutely. Um, we don't know exactly yet what's going to, to, to come up against her. Right. But uh, I guess I just got to ask you just from, you know, being here and being at this weekend, just how do you feel like June's chances are right now, knowing that combo at least exists solo in her deck? If that combo comes early, I honestly think she has it. I, I actually, I, I put all my money on her uh, before before the event even started. But I, I do think that there there are a couple of really good decks in the field. We saw, um, I, we don't know who is uh, who else has won yet, but we did see Nova versus JR earlier. And the so uh, JR's deck has a lot of uh, like Mars shenanigans. And so his Mars shenanigans is a, in a very similar boat mm -hmm. where it can rule of six, it can't get to 30 something Amber, but it can get to 12. Yeah. And so that is enough that where, where he's not gonna be prevented from forging keys. And so she is going to probably have to be a little bit more offensive mm -hmm. against some of the other decks in the field right now. All right, well, we'll see how that goes. But of course, thank you so much, Sydney, for Absolutely. joining me so here. happy to be here. And everyone, I hope that you guys are ready to get towards the finals here. We'll be coming back here very shortly from Vault Tour Roseville 2024. So don't go anywhere. We got more Key Forge action for you coming up just very shortly. <laughs>
Here we go. So we are ready and starting the finals for Archon. We actually have a rematch of last year's Vault Tour here in Roseville. It is June versus Ewok. Both of them bringing different decks this time. And I also am bringing a different co-host for this finals. I got Mammon over here to join us. And Mammon, thank you so much for jumping in. Of course. Obviously, you've been seeing a lot of these games so far. How have you felt that this tournament's going? And also, how do you feel about seeing these two here at the final table? I think the weekend has been great. Um, this has been probably the most fun I've had at a vault. Um, last year was great too, but I've really been enjoying this year. Um, I always love watching both of these people play, honestly. I was just talking about June's Alliance deck and how much fun it is to just watch her play extremely complicated hands. 
and Ewok is obviously a thinker, and he'll take the perfect turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And, of course, it looks like uh, June got the first turn there. Starts with the Untamed Pond, and uh, Ewok going right into Equidon. Um, and, of course, we did get to see both these uh, on stream um, earlier for those that uh, were catching this stream. So we know kind of with June uh, really trying to get that, um, that Witch Queen combo going off uh, and it just snowballs from there um ewok really seems to want to do his uh iron x rebel combination with the doctor uh and did in the semifinals match uh just as much as he did in the match against nova in the quarterfinals um use that ecto charge to to finish the game out um so when you're when you're looking at these two matchups and you're looking at these two decks, I guess where where do you see uh, the opposite side being able to counter kind of what each one is wanting to do? Like what what can June do to try to stop what Ewok is looking for, and Ewok try to stop what June's looking for? Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch those games. <laughs> I was a little busy, but um, looking at the list, I'm assuming that Briar's Arc does work uh, on June's side. And then it looks like the Witch Queen Jervy, I'm assuming, is going to do some heavy lifting. Um, really just getting able to pick a card you need at the right time is, is so key. Um, I don't see a spooky charge in there, so I'm guessing it won't be a quick finish on tame turn at the end of the game, but definitely can build up a lot to whatever else you need in the next turn. Yeah, for sure. Um, Ewok's deck, I see some steel. Uh, see some capture from its own side. It looks like there's a good amount of stuff I can get that Echo Charge off, which is nice. And you've obviously got a Winds of Death that I'm assuming he's doing, going to do his best to get a lot of the Mars in that archive. Mm -hmm. Double Rebel, Double, double uh, Deloxal Frax, or however we're designed to pronounce it. <laughs> I just call him Doctor. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's going to get a lot of Amber. That's going to be a huge problem to deal with. Yeah, yeah, and and we saw in Nova's approach um, with her with Jacques trying to um, you know purge out a lot of the combo that yeah. uh, Ewok was looking for. Unfortunately, of course, they didn't purge out just in, you know enough to to take the victory. Um, but it did change what it looked like Ewok was trying to tackle there um, with June uh, in that last matchup. Once once she got that Witch Queen combo out there, uh, just the the Amber Pool just really was uh ballooning from there and so yeah. obviously right now of course ewok establishing the board still with those the equidon um june not quite so much with a, a board just yet but of course we're still early um, i don't know if you saw the the bryo is in the discard now so oh. i don't know how big of a hit that is for this deck but it's certainly not great yeah <laughs> this yeah. early yeah for sure and just to, just for our newer players um can you explain what bryo's arc does because uh, that is something i think that is important absolutely um essentially it blanks the text on your action cards and destroys a flank creature instead. So what you want to do is stack up creatures on one side of it so that every action they do, they'll still get the amber for the pips, but it's going to kill a creature instead of doing the intended purpose of the action, which can really uh, hinder a lot of the plans that most decks are trying to do. Um, creatures are great, but a lot of these top tier decks rely on heavy, heavy lifting actions mm. um, to start gathering their plan early. All right, so of course, uh, at this point, Ewok threatening first key on check um, with six is not haunted yet, uh, but I don't think that, of course, at this point in the game, uh, that really is impactful to him. Um, but of course, there's the, the Witch, Witch Queen coming out. out, and that, of course, usually means uh, that she is ready to pull off her combo. There's the Haunting Witch. A little uh, early, but still good to have it ready. I don't see a Haunted Indicator. I'd be surprised if June was haunted this early. Yeah, I don't think she is, but she did say before um, she normally turns her deck, uh, her discard pile sideways when she is haunted. Mm -hmm. It is sideways right now, but I agree with you. I, it doesn't look like she has enough in there, so maybe she turned it sideways um, uh, preemptively, expecting yep. to kind of get there. And Waste Not uh, lets you destroy the Haunting Witch, and even though you're not getting the extra Amber for playing Haunted Creatures, it still comes back to the hand because the Witch Queen and comes in ready, and you get to draw. Just a good good combo. Yeah, for sure. Oh, and she chose to kill a creature. Um, the Witch Queen will be giving it skirmish because it's in the center of the battle line, so um, that was an interesting move. 
Yeah, and uh, obviously um, staying to that point, keeping the Witch Queen in the center again is, is so important. Um, and for those that don't know that are newer to the game, again, Skirmish um, allows when you attack for the first time, uh, you do not take damage back. Um, however, of course, Skirmish uh, is, is not there when it comes to on the opposite turn. So we'll see like how things work uh, in yeah. this regard. Uh, skirmish is actually any fight, not just the first any time. Any fight. Um, so basically, your creature can fight and not take damage, which can be really powerful for certain things. Um, usually you're not fighting with the Haunting Witch because it's weak, and it's going to get you a lot of amber later in the game. Mm -hmm. um, now, the Witch Queen has a really interesting interaction because it does give them Skirmish, but it also gives them effect where they are destroyed and they return to the hand. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of a double-edged sword there where you need to make sure that it's in the middle when you don't need them to die um, so that they have Skirmish and they can fight. Or if you're trying to recur them and play them again ready to reap... Um, or, or fight a couple times to keep playing them, that um, it's not in the center when it needs to die to a fight. Yeah, and we saw during that uh, during that time, um, Ewok actually played Scoop Up and picked up the Witch Queen, threw mm -hmm. it in the archives. Um, so that's going to be. I'd be surprised be... if he takes that archive out. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think you're going to see him pick up the archives for quite a while, at least um, until he's probably ready to you know, make what he wants to happen go. Yeah. Because, as, of course, once he picks it up, it will, the Witch Queen goes right back to June. And yep. and he just uh, hit the UFO, which let him take War of the Worlds into his hand, um, which will blow up all those creatures. And because he's already archived the Witch Queen, that Haunting Witch is not going to go to his hand, or June's hand now, um, which is going to be much better for him. Now, didn't play it right away. This could just be Ewok thinking, but... There's every possibility that he's thinking of holding it. Uh, if there's more problem creatures that he's worried. Nope, there nope. it is. Goes with it. And it has a discard pip on it. So, of course, it has to discard something to, to use it. And it looks like it's the junk restoration there. Yep. A good card to have. So, I'm betting he's holding on to something good. And, of course, uh, Veteran Move asking which, uh, which order do they want to do um, putting in the discard pile because, of course, that can become important. Yep, and I'm now very certain that June's not haunted because the uh, Grave Pixie would have archived itself if she was. Correct, yes. It looks like June's doing just a double check as well. And there comes the Doctor, and I think here we go with... Uh, Target will archive something. very interested to see what he takes here because remember that witch queen's in the archive so if he archives something he really needs mm -hmm. when he takes it it's going to be a critical point because that witch queen will be going back yes no yes. you see the dice coming out yeah uh, i'm guessing that means he has a ironic rebel in hand which will let him uh actually i don't know that he can rule of six here because usually what you want to do is kill the rebel so that it's in the discard, you reap with the doctor to bring the rebel back, um, ready, which readies the doctor, and you kill the rebel and continue reaping and, and rule of six both of those cards. Mm -hmm. But June doesn't have any creatures, so I'm not sure if he's going to actually be able to roll a six because he won't be able to kill a rebel if he has it. Oh, yeah. he took War of the Worlds. Okay. So he actually just readies them both. I think it's exactly what you yep. said because there was yeah. no creatures on the field that didn't allow um, that recur, you know, reoccurring effect to keep going. Yeah, I'm sure June's feeling relieved. <laughs> so <laughs> saw those dice come out, and she's, I know what this is about to be, and, and it didn't happen. So it's yeah, great for her. Yeah, and normally I will say, uh, at least based off of the previous matches, Ewok normally brings out the dice once he's ready to do it. So I think, mm -hmm. of course, in that situation, June just being preemptive, yep. uh, helping out with that. But um, I think that it. Obviously, it was very telling in that regard that Ewok yeah. was like, I don't have that combo yet, so we're not going to pull it out. And I will agree with Ace of Keys in chat there. This is a, a good lesson in um, clean play. Um, a lot of the these two, again, were at the finals table last year against each other, but with different decks, um, know each other very well. And I think, of course, uh, also understand that how important every play and every move is in this regard. Um, and it's also helpful giving a shout out to our judge, uh, G, who is watching this match to make sure that there are no mistakes made uh, in play. These two are also both fantastic 
community members, but also just fantastic people. And I know they both have a lot of respect for each other, so they're going to do the best they can to make this game good for each other. Yes, which yes. Which is what you want to see. Exactly. exactly. Um, now, I did see that this Wakolia has a discard pip on it, and when Ewok played, or uh, June played it, rather, um, she discarded the Jervy, um, which is a key witch in her deck, because if she ever gets that Witch Queen back, she's going to be able to play it ready. So when you when you uh, scrap Jervy, its effect is that you can archive a card from your discard pile. And she chose to archive it because mm. it's in the discard pile for the uh, scrap effect to happen. So you're able to do that. Um, it also has a capture pip on it, so if she can recur that a couple times, that's a, a couple capture. So if that Witch Queen ever comes out of Ewoks archives, I'm assuming we'll very quickly see that Jervy come out as well. Yeah, yeah. Or worst case scenario, you can take it out, discard it to another discard pip, and uh, archive something else important later. I think that's a very good setup move on June's part. All right, so it looks like it looks like a, I was gonna say it looked like it passed to Ewok, and then Ewok ended up passing it back, but I'm not quite sure right now. Possibly checking discard piles to maybe count cards to see if maybe she's thinking about holding on to a card okay. and trying to predict what he's doing next. All right, and so we're getting a, a quick glimpse of that hand, and there's a lot so of a lot of Geistoid in, in that hand, and of course it looks like they are going to go Geistoid to start it off. And of course and the glare... She's checking to see if she's haunted, so that's a soul vial. Um, any creatures that have amber on it on her side of the board will archive themselves when they're destroyed. Okay. Um, this Hallowed Festival is going to discard off the top of the deck, and for every Geistoid, one of her creatures will capture one. So now that Gatewatcher will get archived when it's destroyed. Um, that actually could be very interesting later with the capture pip on that Jervy. Mm -hmm. um, if she continues to fight it, if it's ready because of the Witch Queen, um, she'll be able to take it back in her hand and play it, continuing to take down the board, but every time she plays it, she can play a capture pip. So if there's other creatures there, you're just setting up a full board of things that can get archived. All right, and I will say, now we know that June is haunted because she is using, actually, the uh, haunted card that was given out at the store championships. Um, obviously, nice. using that to what its effect is, is to have an indicator of, hey, now we're now we're haunted. So this will help out knowing exactly going forward what uh, June plans to do to indicate her haunted status. Great, that obvious straight came in ready as well. Good timing there. Oh, and there's that. Ecto charge, charge just for the amber. Yeah. I was gonna say I didn't think she had enough there, but winds then of, of course death. there's the winds okay. of death. Uh, I'm assuming the winds of death here is out uh, almost out of necessity because she wants to take out that doctor and the target before Ewok gets into, into his rebels to be mm -hmm. able to use them multiple times. Yeah, and that um, will also potentially force him to consider picking up his archives, Yes, which will then get that Witch Queen right into her hand. So mm -hmm. it, it, And in addition to that, she just archived the two creatures she had on board because she captured onto them. Mm. So that Soul Vial is already doing a little work to build up a future turn for her. There you go. And you get the Briar's Arc back <laughs> with a bunch of creatures in hand. That's, that's an excellent play. There you go. Now, Ewok is in check as of right now. Mm -hmm. Wasn't counting how many cards June played. I don't think she has a lot left. Nope. And it looks like she's going to let him have that key to, uh, to set something up later. Oh, and she forgot to archive the, the two board creatures for the soul pile, so that's being corrected right now. There you go. Oh, I see G's hand put in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would dare say that was a big setup turn for her that, as you said, also stacks Ewok's Archive, which is going to be tempting to give that witch back. Mm -hmm. I think that was a, an excellent reason to give someone a key. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, of course, uh, you know, being on two keys now, it's a, a little bit more pressure um, on June. However, um, as you said, if things... Um, progress. There's a chance that she gets that uh, that witch queen back, and then it comes down to can she do enough to keep um, Ewok off of third key? Yeah, and that's going to be important because she is obviously down right now. 
the only key cheat card in her deck is that Ecto Charge that's in the discard pile. So um, it's really going to come down to, I think, control on her part, mm -hmm. which uh, I, that Jervy with the capture pip. Um, if Vivok plays a bunch of creatures, I'm assuming she'll fight them off to capture as much as possible, as many turns as she can, just to keep that down. Both of these two are amazing to watch play. They, uh, I know we can't see their faces on stream, but I like to look up at them and the, the amount of thought that's going into every one of these turns. Oh, for sure. And, and it also, uh, just, just giving uh, you know, compliments to that, it it's also shows in, in just the, the way they play as well, right? Yeah. Is that they don't rush a lot of their moves. They no. take a lot of time to do those. You that could hand them two sealed decks from Call the Archons that they know like the back of their hands, no questions about the cards, and they'll take just as much time to think out their turn. Yeah. And it's, that's always also very important at this stage of the game. We are in the finals. Again, it is game one, so of course uh, neither player has the advantage, so to speak, in, when it comes to the best of three series. But, um, you know, you want to make sure that you do everything to the T, dotting those I's, because of course every, every play and every card action could very much uh, impact just how the, the future turns look. Yeah, at this top level, every... Every play is important. Um, I always like to say to people starting out in the game, hold as few cards as possible. You know, um, every card in your hand, when it leaves, is a draw. Yeah, and that's one of the things about keyboards that's so different from other games. But it also makes that decision to hold a card that much more important. Mm -hmm. um, now I saw. I unfortunately just missed what she archived, but saw her scrap that jerby with the same discard pip on the Wakoli that she did before. And we can see her stacking. So, if I remember my cards right, the side that she's currently stacking is going to be the one that the actions will destroy. And she put the Wakolia on the other side so that it specifically will not get destroyed by Ewok's actions because it has a reap at two key costs. Mm. So clearly she's valuing that increased key cost right now. Yeah. And the Kalp, um, second to the end on the other side, is going to stop Ewok from playing more than one of each type of card per turn. So that's going to slow him down a little bit because he's going to have to play two actions to kill the board as is, um, make it three now, and he's not going to be able to do that in one turn, no matter what he has in hand. Yeah. So probably going to need to do something like play a creature, but it is under taunt. So this is a very hard board to clear, and because it's Amber Control on board, I think June has just set herself up very well. Yeah, and um, especially with uh, a, the name escapes me right now, but the creature on the end there. Yeah, the uh, being covetous on, Hema. There you go. Uh, being on flank, obviously um, having the elusive, it's going to make it obviously that much harder also to get that amber back. For sure. Um, and so, of course, we talked about at this point with uh, Ewok having two keys and June needing to kind of just stave him off that third key. Yep. As you said, she's setting herself up pretty well for... One, forcing the key cost up, but two, also um, keeping that amber away from him from even getting too able to forge a key. Yeah, now because of that Bryozork, the most he's going to be able to do is play one creature, one action, which at this point will kill the Hema, but isn't going to get him anywhere closer to clearing that board. And we know that June has a handful of creatures, mm -hmm. so if she calls a different house next turn... The, the the side of Bryo that is going to take care of or uh, be taken care of by all those actions is just going to grow. Yeah. And as we know, if she gets that Witch Queen out, she could play Witches over there that'll just come back to her hand, and it won't slow her down because if the Queen's out, she can play them back ready. So it's almost as if they never left the board. Yeah. So this is a very very hard board to come back from. Um, and and Ewok is looking at his archives right now. It doesn't mean he's going to pick them up yet. He, Maybe. Yeah. The fact that he even looked tells me he's tempted to yep. to take it, but I, I know that he knows that queen could be devastating. Yeah. And I also, I, I know I've pointed it out quite a bit uh, across the stream, but again, it's for those that uh, are, are newer to the game or are catching up um, into the, the changes that have been going on. Um, remember, 
Ewok does have an Ecto Charge. However, in the most recent Master Rulebook update, um, Ecto Charge has been reverted back to its anomaly form. So there is a minimum six Amber key costs that will need to be uh, be there. Um, so even even if he had a ton of um, cards in his discard which would have normally allowed him to forge that key for free now he still has to have six amber to do so or i should say five with the uh the, the amber pip that's on ecto charge yep. um so that's also important to keep in mind too it's going to be very hard to get to without creatures and without actions yes <laughs> um just double checking the effect on the flea market the walk has on board and i think that is Unfortunately, not something that's going to help him right now. He can reveal a random card in June's hand and give her an amber to play it. But because of Kalp, if he plays a ac an action, then he can't play one of his own actions. Mm -hmm. So he may use it because you can look use it to just look at a card. You don't yep. have to choose to give him the amber to play it. Um, he may use it to look or to p play it in place of one of his actions just to get it out of her hand. Yeah. But giving that one amber at this point is a tough decision. Um, so but that's the only thing he has on board that he can currently use. Yeah, and obviously right now he is looking at um, June's Archon card, um, likely trying to keep an eye on what is on the field, what is in the discard pile. He knows that he has the Witch Queen in his archives, so trying to get an idea of what could be in her hand. And like you said, we know there's a lot of creatures, so it could very much be a number of those those witches that potentially trying to do stuff uh, with, which is, of course, going to potentially doubt him from mm -hmm. picking up the archives. I do, and I'll say that Kalb is probably also steering him away from the archives just because anything he takes will be stuck in his hand. Yeah. He can discard of the active house, but because there's multiple houses where the creature's in there, it's going to prevent him from drawing. Yeah. And I've... And as you said, because of the Briarzark uh, wiping action text, even if he tries to play Winds of Death to get this out the field, it'll kill one creature. <laughs> exactly, it's not gonna it's not gonna do the the effect that he wants. Yeah, I do see in his hand a lot of Equidon right now. Um, well, he's got his archive now, but last time he picked up his hand, and unfortunately, it looks like there's a lot of actions. And those actions, I saw permanent record, and I saw hmm, a card that I'm forgetting. Um, oh, permanent record and generous offer. So both of those steal. Generous offer would require a creature out, but none of them have amber. Mm -hmm. um, so while they're great cards to have, if the text is blanked on them, you don't even get a pip for playing them. And that's really a tough hand to come from. A couple creatures out, and he could take... More a full key worth of amber or more from her right now. That was the fourth time he had picked up the archives, and he finally did pick them up, moves that was the a Witch tough Queen choice. over there. Yeah. You could just see him thinking about it. Yeah, the fact that, as you said, the fact that he picked up the first time, mm -hmm. told that he was looking at it, and then he picked it up again, and then again, and then finally said, okay, I'm, I'm picking it that's, up. That's him analyzing every possibility, and I hope this isn't true, but I feel like he took it out of desperation. I think he knows that this is a board that's going to be almost impossible for him to come back from right now. So his only hope may be to slowly gain Amber and hope that June can't outpace him. But with that number of creatures of one house, and now she has the Witch Queen um, to bring back Witches Ready, that's two houses that she can have readied creatures in. Yeah. So this Belligerent Guard comes in ready. It draws June a card, which is another tough choice to make. Yep. Um, at this level of play, every draw matters. And giving her more cards that it looks like I can't count in what's Discard. in her hand, but she may not have drawn anyway because of the big archive take. Yep. Um, even if she played Untamed or whatever, she may not have drawn just because of the amount of cards in her hand. So that draw becomes even more important because yep. they're handing her a card that she wouldn't have gotten next turn anyway. And so he played the estate sale there, and I think we just saw the you know the effect of the Briar's Art because the... Um, yes, he wasn't able to do the normal effect to purge and gain two. It did kill the Covetous Hemo on the end. That does get him his three Amber back. But again, he's got so many cards in hand that don't have Amber Pips that it's going to be a very tough choice. Now that Tudor Benrillo in hand, I know he is unhappy with right now. That card, when you scrap it, both players draw a card. And right now, he's already played a creature. So if he's trying to clear his hand out of Equidon, he's going to have to scrap it. 
which will give June another card. And two cards in one turn is a lot. Um, it will give him a card, but unless it's an upgrade or an artifact, no matter what, he's not going to be able to play it. Exactly. Because he's already done an action on a creature. This is a really tough choice. Um, I would, I'd kill to know what's going through his head right now. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very curious, uh, as you said. I mean, knowing, knowing the situation, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not dire in, that, in this sense because, of course, he is up. But what it is becoming a, a concern about is more so around the fact of does does he have what can he do to get to there to the point that he needs which is getting the Briar's Ark off the field mm -hmm. allowing him to play his actions and right now it's just continuing to not look good oh well, there's Jude laying out her hand look at that yeah <laughs> yeah I I'm can't see house distributions this way but uh, it's pretty clear that she probably was not going to be uh, drawing any cards yeah. next turn and uh, Ewok does choose to take the guard and kill the Wakolia to get rid of that Amber Control. So I think at this point, he's hoping to just get as much Amber as he can in the next couple turns. Yeah. Um, the, um, the big Unfound board here is one of the reasons that I could watch June play games all day. She has this very unique ability to look at a pod and just see the potential in it. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, this, this is a great deck, but it definitely requires some good timing and very specific interactions mm -hmm. to play. Um, as we saw, she was very, very much behind for most of the game, and she's now two keys and some amber behind, but she's put her opponent in a state at the perfect time to stop him from winning potentially long enough that it's going to really hurt him at the end. Mm. Um, coming back from a two-key lead is tough, but I think we might be about to see a deck that can do it. Yeah, and now, of course now she's doing what she needs to, which is trying to get the, the Witch Queen in the center battle line. So you see all the creatures coming out, obviously, on our visually um, left flank, her right flank. Um, trying to get her in the center. You see the dice come out, so we're about to start, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Bandola's band uh, move here oh, and yeah. just starts playing a lot of things. We're going to see that Amber Pool really start to jump up, and so it's the, already starting to jump up. The important part of this combo right here is that exhausted creature, the Kangafant. Um, that makes every creature on both sides of the board uh, gra get a reap effect that destroys them after they reap. And because the Witch Queen is out, all of those witches are going to go back to her hand when they're destroyed. Mm -hmm. So in essence, while you would normally reap and not be able to kill your creatures to play them back ready, uh, that Kangafant is enabling just a lot, a lot of Amber gain. Yeah. And on top of that, there's the Witch of the Eye. We may see, towards the end of this combo, um, June try to grab the Ecto Charge with that Witch of the Eye mm. um, to see if she can win just a turn faster with that cheat. That I believe is still in the discard pile. Yeah, and I, I was gonna say I was trying to get, trying to get a, a a look at at how she's um, looking to play this out, and as you said, is uh, what if it was in her hand already, or if it's in the discard pile? Um, and you just see, of mm -hmm. course, like we said, the 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 pool there of. Um, of Amber just really starting to add up. So she does have to be very careful with counts at this point because the Jervy and the Witch of the Eye um, are both able to put cards back from the discard into her hand, I believe. I think Jervy's scrap is the archive and the Reap puts, it, puts cards back in hand. And um, that's removing cards from her discard pile which is going to potentially unhaunt her. So when she plays back those witches, she's not going to gain the amber from the haunting witch that's mm -hmm. sitting there. So it's a very careful count of how many times can I reap and take cards on my archive without unhaunting myself. So I gain the extra amber by just playing creatures. Yeah. Yeah, and the last game uh, that we saw with June, um, I believe, if I remember correctly, she ended up getting 24 amber off of this combo. Yeah. 
That's insane. Yeah. And so, as you said, now, of course, trying to make sure how much, how staying haunted, mm-hmm. where is that going to lead? Obviously, we're still seeing a large generation of Amber here. Um, but it, it is, the, of course, she will get to a certain point where it will run out just because of the, the haunted factor. Um, yeah, I think currently the fact that she's playing against another Grim Reminders deck is in her favor. Um, now, the Bryo sort of negates this at the moment, but a lot of older sets have heavy scaling ever control, so going to these high numbers is dangerous because mm-hmm. it could potentially benefit your opponent more than you if, it ha- if they have the right cards in hand. Um, if that Bryozark wasn't out, something like a Too Much to Protect could just ruin this whole combo. But that ensures that you're safe against any set. But even in just Grim Reminders, there's not a huge amount of scaling Amber control. So you can get this combo off and almost not worry about losing all that Amber mm-hmm. the next turn. Yeah. I mean, with the amount of Amber she's about to gain, she could potentially Ecto Charge at full cost if she needed to. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's And, and that's where I was going to get at. It's kind of cu- curious in a sense of... It, when she decides to grab it, knowing that she's potentially getting herself unhaunted, mm-hmm. um, wh- when is she planning to play that? Uh, because she's going to have a lot of amber. And obviously, we know that Ewok at the moment um, is, again, still going to be limited on what he can play. Sure. Um, my, is, my guess would be that that would be the third key. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, at this point, I don't know what he could possibly do to get himself into check in the next turn or two. So in that case, she should forge her next key off of Amber. Mm -hmm. The following turn, she'll forge another one. And if if all goes according to plan that I think she's doing, that second turn, she'll also use the Ecto Charge and just get three keys in the next turn, two turns. Yeah, and while we're nearing 12 minutes left in the round, obviously, um, you know, that is a factor of just knowing that it's going to take multiple turns to get there. Having the Ecto Charge to try to forge, even if it's at full cost, yes. is going to, of course, um, you know, be something to consider. But uh, you just still, you're going to need a couple more turns to get things through. Um, so that's going to be the thing I think that June's probably keeping her eye on as, uh, as this unfolds, is making sure that she still is able to hit the, the keys when she needs to, um, knowing the time limit is coming and what you know, extended time may be given in that regard. Yes, and combos like this that are rule of sixing up to four cards, it looks like, um, take time. Mm-hmm. They just take time to do. So at this point, I think she'll be okay because she, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. But, um, you know, without enough experience with this deck, without enough reps trying to practice this combo, um, you'd have to spend more time thinking. Yeah. And obviously that's allowed but it's never fun for your opponent to just sit there and watch you play the game. So I, I know that she's probably doing her best, and we just saw the Ecto Charge yep, that go in exactly. the archive. Yep. Um, doing her best to maximize her turn without hindering the game progression. Yes, yes. So again, you look at, you, you know, I know it's still June's turn, but like you see, you know, Ewok's hand. We know, of course, as you said, with the comp on the field, um, you know, he's he's limited on what he can play. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in your opinion, what would be kind of the the move you'd go? Maybe not necessarily what exact cards would he be playing, but what would, what would be kind of your focus? Because clearly, board wipe is not on the table for him. Yeah. Um, so if he has enough Equidon right now, if that belligerent guard stays on the board... What he could do is fight the Germinator off on the side that is not under taunt. I believe it's off screen. I believe that's the last card on Uh, that flank. Last I saw, yes, that was it. So he could fight that off, use the next action to kill the Kalp, and from there he can begin to play his other actions that are left in hand. So he can start killing the board. It's probably too late. But I think that's probably his best move now is to try to get the Kalp out. I believe June also knows that. Mm -hmm. So we may see the last plays on some of these Rule of Six creatures. Um, We may see one go on the other side of that Germinator just so that it makes it that much harder to get to the Kalp. Yeah, and and actually um, saying that last part there, that's 
that is actually a, a really good thought, and I'm probably, I agree with you, the move that will be played, um, making it, again, as you had said in an um, earlier point, taking more actions to try mm-hmm. to get to that point. Um, and obviously, you are currently with Kopp on the field, you're not going to be able to do that. And uh, I don't believe Ewok discarded a lot of those heavy amber gain actions. Oh, there we go. That guard is out. And uh, so I guess in place of playing more creatures next to the Germinator, June went to uh, just kill the guard instead, which is probably also a very good move because she just gets whatever witch she just fought in back into her hands. Yeah. All right, I'll so be honest, I do not pity Ewok's last few minutes. <laughs> I, I don't either. I'm, um, you know, it's one of those things where if I was in those shoes, I'm feeling for him right now because you're just the, the, the field, the cards on the field right mm-hmm. now are really, um, you know, against you at the moment, basically. Yeah. That, that Tudor Ben really he played um, to me is a sign of a desperation move at the moment because uh, no matter what you do with that card, if you, well, I'm not sure how he. He looks like he used the scrap effect with S- Snippy. Oh yeah, there I missed the discard pip on the two of Okay, so the Calp is out now. There's and a possibility. Queen is not centered anymore. A uh, possibility that he could get to check, which would make June's next turn very important to take him off a of check. So that she can get to that second key, so that she can key cheat. Okay. So there's a. So he did pass turn. So there's June's first key. It was Again. a really good play on his part. I think that's probably the only thing he could have done at this point. Yeah. Obviously, still with the Briar's Arc out there, as you said, um, you know his actions are going to be blank. So it's again, wind, uh, winds of death, uh, mm-hmm. not going to be uh, something that. If he's able to to pull that, I don't recall if he has it in hand right now. Um, but I don't believe I saw Winds of Death, but he did take his archive, and I believe he archived the um, War of the Worlds. You're right. Earlier. So he there did. is a board wipe there. Unfortunately, at least four of those creatures are witches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so even if he manages to kill the Briar's Ark, um, they are still going to go back in hand. And yeah, so I guess to, to add to that for our newer players, you know, of course, Witch Queen gives a lot of benefits. We talked about the skirmish. Um, however, that's a that's one in the center. Could you just explain a little bit about what Witch Queen offers even when she's not in your center battle line? Sure. The most important part is that your other witch creatures enter play ready. So witches are usually strong cards no matter what, and the payoff for them is that they're usually weak. Um, you can see all three on the board, except for the queen, are three power. Mm-hmm. So they're easier to kill. They're not elusive. Um, but they come with play or reap effects or uh, the haunting witch or in, uh, in an older set, the hunting witch. Mm-hmm. It just gains you ever for playing cards. So they're, they're usually very powerful cards. And I believe that witch should have gone to June's hand. Um, but the witch queen lets you play them ready. Mm-hmm. And then you can also get it so that they come back to your hand. So no matter what, um, you can replay them. Not... Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm double-checking, Yeah, I'd love to double-check that card. Um, I'm misremembering which, which effects need to be in the center for it. Yeah, that's what I'm, uh, I'm double-checking as well. So there's the Witch Queen... Okay, so they, she does need to be in the center for the destroyed return For the destroyed effect, okay. So even without that, which is coming down ready is very, very good. Yes. Most of the time. Um, but I guess Ewok needs to take this opportunity while she's not in the center to take out some of those witches. Now, at this point, I don't know that it matters because a lot of what those are doing oh, is... Oh, and there it is. Oh, there he is, yeah. And there it is, of he course. He knows she can Ecto Charge this turn, so forge that key for Amber, and with the Ecto Charge in her discard, I think she has enough Amber right there in that pile to, to just get it, so... Yeah, yeah, and that... Look, I, I you know, Credits in that game, because um, we saw in the previous game uh, when uh, June was on stream that, you know, the, the, the Witch Queen combo was the big play there, mm-hmm. but... 
as you had stated when you saw the unfathomable move, um, June set it up to get herself ready and basically force Ewok to start considering picking up those archives, which kind of spelled a thing of if I don't have a way to win right away, June knew that it was going to turn in her favor. And yeah, we uh, saw her give him that second key, even though she had the captured Amber, because she knew that the right amount of that combo was in her discard pile, that it would be so, so difficult to come back from. Yeah, yeah. So that was a, that was a crazy thing. And I will say, giving credit to you, you said it's really hard to come back from two keys to it nothing. Is, he almost had it. I think maybe one more turn, and he would have had a little bit more of a chance, but... That, that key cheat being archived is really what was able to help. Yeah, so of course, uh, you know, Mammon, I appreciate you joining us. So we're going to take a small break between uh, game one and game two uh, here of the finals. So don't go anywhere. We have some more Keyforge action coming to you, and we'll be right back with some more Keyforge from Roseville, Minnesota. <laughs> Thank you. 
right, everyone, we are back here getting ready to start game two. Um, again, in the first match, June took the win over Ewok, uh, and it was a, a close one. Ewok really pulled ahead to start it off, and then finally June was able to um, get things going. It started with that unfathomable turn. Um, yeah, that and was of a stressful now, game for both players. Um, we just saw both of them uh, take a well-earned break, I think, on both sides, that was stressful. Yes. And they know they've got one more to go. <laughs> for sure. Least. For sure. At least, as you said, because if Ewok does take this, then it pushes us to the game three. So, again, I hope you guys are all excited for this, seeing how things go. Again, this is a rematch of last year's Vault Tour Championship um, here in Roseville. Uh, June did pull that one off there and, of course, is trying to defend this her throne uh ewok of course trying to to take things in this time uh and of course starts it off uh looks like goes mars of course plays the doctor out there and uh we'll see how that goes after that yeah i didn't get a good look at his hand there but it's hard to tell if that's setting up next turn or uh taking a, a single house card out so that he can draw into a bigger turn yeah yeah Oop, and it looks like uh, the Ecta, uh, if I remember correctly, it's Echo Guardian, right? Echo Guardian. I think, yeah. uh, I think Ewok just started a little bit early with his first card. I think June's still mulliganing. Oh, so okay. That's what we're seeing here. Okay, that makes more sense then. Yep. Yep, and there's I guess a. He knew what he was playing, regardless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it looked like there was the, the you know, the kind gesture, a uh, little fist bump there, of course, um, off of that. And looking at the her hand there, of course. Uh, has the witch of the eye there, but yeah, I, I'm haunting not, witch. Not not convinced she's happy to see those witches this early. Um, even without the queen, the haunting witch doesn't get its effect unless it's unless she's haunted. So correct. That's a tough get. The witch of the eye is a big target because it brings cards back to your hand. So um, having both of those on the board early is a little bit rough if you don't have a good way to recur them. Now we know the winds of death is there, so it's not a death sentence for the untamed, but. It's probably not an ideal opening hand. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, we didn't get to see what it was before she mulliganed. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm assuming, of course, uh, again, a hand that she was not happy with was trying to take that mulligan, get to something better. And then now we're here uh, to start this off. Yeah. And, of course, throws the, both the witches down. And as you said, likely because she has the, the winds of death there. So it's not you know terribly sad if they go into the discard pile. Um, but yeah, definitely I, not wanting to play early. I believe we were able to see Amber Storm in her hand. I think I did and see that one. Right now, if she played it, she would get to draw a card, but it would only do one damage because it doesn't do a damage for each Amber in your pool. Um, my thought is that she's maybe going to attempt to go untamed next turn. Um, you could reap with the Haunting Witch to get an Amber, play the Amber Storm, and then reap with the Witch of the Eye to bring it back and play it again, which mm -hmm. will kill the Doctor and anything else that Ewok might play this turn. So, depending on, I'm sure, what she drew into, um, that is something she might be hoping to do. Uh, as we said earlier, holding cards is a big decision point to make. So, um, clearly she's not willing to play the Amber Storm for a single Amber. Yeah, for sure. All right, so uh, Ewok goes Mars for a second turn in a row. Um, obviously played the UFO to start it. Now archives that Archive UFO. It. Oh, and I see the Ironix Rebel there. So now he doesn't currently, I believe, have Mars cards in his discard pile. So the reap effect of that Doctor isn't going to come into play. So he's also maybe not off to an ideal start for one of the powerhouses in the deck. Yeah, and I was going to ask you that: is that you know having the Ironix Rebel this early, knowing that you don't have much in the discard pile, how much does that impact things? And I think you just nailed it right there. Mm -hmm. And um, now. It might not be as detrimental for Ewok for the same reason it's not that detrimental to June. If he can force her into the Winds of Death, or does he have one as well? I believe he does have they one do. as well. well. We can double check that real quick. Um, so looking at his... Do you see a Winds of Death deck. on both sides? Yes, so he has a Winds of Death as well. Both of them having important creatures out early isn't the biggest detriment solely because um, they're both going to be able to recur them in bulk mm -hmm. later. Uh, we'll, we'll see who gets to play that first at their own time. Yes. Obviously, both of them are going to wait till the ideal time when they can get as much of their combos as possible in the discard. 
we'll just have to see who gets get that first. Yeah, for sure. You now we saw uh, Ewok fight the target into the Witch of the Eye, because if he reefs with it, it archives itself. And what he's trying to do here is play it with the Doctor, and maybe even take out the Witch of the Eye. Yep, there yep, we go. And there he goes. Any recursion is powerful. Yep. Right now, and uh, that Witch of the Eye just taking any action back in could be could be terrible. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I want to just thank you guys all in the uh, chat that are helping out with the, the stream and also all of you that are lurking in there to watch this, this finals here. Of course, again, um, two incredible players, uh, two veteran players as well, um, coming on to, to the, defend basically a repeat of last year. Um, it's been a, a great exciting event so far and we still have more to come even after this if this were to end and the and uh, archon be over we still have sealed where you're going to be at um yeah. so of course we have a lot Excited of keyboards still to come and of course uh right as i was doing that um she plays the amber storm yep, we did see her go into untamed i think she knows how important it is to get that doctor out um because if she doesn't take it out now he could start recurring Mars creatures and continue to play them ready before he even gets the winds of death to make the big sweep turn. So mm -hmm. you don't want to let him get that early lead just off of two or three creatures. So she took a very small turn to take a very important move. Yeah. And of course the the judge hand sneaking in there from G, just trying to move <laughs> the, the damage pips off the, the table so there's no confusion there. Do you find it interesting? Obviously, you can't control the cards in your deck, but Ewok has two cards in Equidon that give his opponent a draw. Now, the Belligerent Guard, you can choose to discard, but the Tutor Bin Rillo in his deck, whether you scrap or play it, your opponent draws a card. Mm. So it's it's a bit of a rough card to have because the better your opponent's deck is, the better every card is. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, the rest of the deck is fantastic, um, and he's doing a great job. It has great combos, but I'm... I, Bet you he wishes that tutor was gone for almost any <laughs> other card. And of course, that is uh, again for for newer players. Uh, what Equidon does, they you know do a lot of trading of um, things. You get something, I get something, and of course, sometimes it's good mm -hmm. enough that you you're mm -hmm. ex you know happy with the trade, and sometimes uh, you know as you said, it, you, you wish you had a different one that was in the, in yeah, the pool. Yeah, their entire house is very very interesting, and that the whole theme is uh, very good benefit at a cost. Yes. Now. We're watching June discard. She didn't play any creatures. I don't know if she doesn't have any in hand, but that is the Hallowed Eve Festival that would have let her capture, but she has no creatures to capture onto. So she may be doing it just for the discard. She may not have any creatures. I don't know why she wouldn't want to capture at this hmm. point in the game. Yeah. It doesn't... Thinking I don't see any guys to creatures. Yeah, I don't there. see any guys to so a creatures. So a bit of an unfortunate amber control, but it does get her much closer to the pond, which is, as we've seen, very important. All right, and that's her turn. Not able to get to check, unfortunately. And I believe that is her checks of she's haunted so i think she's sitting at 12 um in there if i'm correct in her discard yep and there's the the haunted card come out no nope, there's that tutor in ewok's hand <laughs> <laughs> he's got a very rough house distribution in hand right now my bet is that he's going to go equidon because if you count the usable creatures on the board and in hand yep there we go uh, it's much bigger turn than anything else. Having two, two, and two of, of each house is, is a rough hand to have, but yes. at the very least you can get some benefit off board. Yeah, it's one of those where even as a newer player, when I, when I grab the 2-2 two, two hand, I immediately mm -hmm. go, Oof. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not, not what I want. Sometimes that's just worth a mulligan off the bat. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't have one very good card. Um, he does have the flea market out, so I'm sure he'll use it to look at a card in her hand. Yeah, he didn't use it at all last game. Um, yeah, so I, I wonder if it's because he never, almost never plays the card, 
Um, but you'd think that you still want to get a look at one card in there. Uh, any knowledge is always helpful. Yeah. And Ewok is using the tutor's effect to, on play, your opponent draws a card, but you get to discard up to three cards. So it looks like he's using it to clean out the rest of that hand that he can um, to hopefully draw into something better next turn. Mm -hmm. And I don't recall what he has in Archive right now, but um, I will say, you know, knowing that he's trying to set up a future hand probably is also considering what he had in that Archives mm -hmm. um, to, to see, you know, the cards in my hand right now are not beneficial to me. Let's get that out. Let's draw up to six and see what I can grab um, to to prov get ready. And, of course, here we go. The... I kind of figured, as we had seen June put the dice over um, on the side there, but here comes out the Witch Queen, the Witch and Queen. here comes the, the combo that we saw earlier. Um, uh, and getting it this early is, a, is really nice for June. Yeah, she can pull ahead. We've seen what she does when she's behind. Imagine what she can do when she's ahead from the start. Yeah. Um, uh, Ewok had a bit of an unfortunate discard there. His... Uh, his three out of his three cards, two of them had good scrap abilities, mm -hmm. but they required the opponent to have creatures. Yeah. So he did clear out cre uh, cards that weren't helpful now, but any creature on board, and that would have been a little bit better of a turn for him. Yeah. Now I will uh, give a shout out to not tonight in the chat. He did uh, help give us a clarification. The flea uh, the um, flea market was purged out by a state sale. It was purged. Okay. Yeah. So. That would, explain, that would explain why it's all the way over there. I did have a feeling that something was going on with it, um, but of I course... I remember him playing it, so... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, let's so, a little clarification here on uh, so here's, something regarding the Eagle Six. So here's the... Yeah, this is where, of course, again, a shout-out to our Judge G, who is um, here on the finals, that is sitting there watching this uh, very, very closely making sure that everything is going correct. And, of course, it, as you said, seems like there is getting some um, clarifications pointed out with some of the Rule of Six. There might have been potentially a, um, a, a move done one too early, um, but we'll see what happens. Um, June, uh, just to answer the question for P-Rod, um, June has played uh, with the cards upside down um, this entire time. I believe she does the cards upside down uh, to help her opponent with reading the cards. You know, that's something that I've been doing lately, too. Um, now out of habit, but we've started to get some new people locally. Mm -hmm. And what I find, especially with Grim Reminders, because it's a fairly complex set... Um, for new people, the, the best thing you can do if you know your cards is let them read them easier. So that way they're not checking cards every time. They don't misread something because it's upside down. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that's just a, a kindness to the opponent. Yeah, I would say uh, as a, a player, that would be very nice for me. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I am definitely still the player um, who has to read a lot of the cards, especially as uh, many of you all know, uh, if it's not Winds of Exchange, where of course I joined the game, um, I'm very much having to read all the older yeah. cards. <laughs> Yeah, I've caught myself doing it here out of habit to people that don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she's so there's gonna, the Haunting Witch coming she's in. She's got a really good combo going on right now. The um, uh, Witch of the Dawn uh, and the Witch of the Eye are going to allow her to just keep bouncing the two of them back. Um, Witch of the... Dawn is, and both of them are actually going to be taking cards out of her discard, so it's another careful not to unhaunt yourself situation here. Mm -hmm. Although a little less important this turn, I don't think any of these cards currently need her to be haunted. Oh, and the Amber Storm's coming back. It's going to be a lot of damage because of her current pool. Yeah, I have a. I will say, I know that in the chat, you guys are all telling me to hydrate. Uh, unfortunately, between rounds, I seem to have uh, left my water bottle <laughs> not near the caster stable, um, so I can't hydrate. But I will make sure that I hydrate quite a bit um, after this uh, this this match gets un underway or unfolded, I should say, because uh, don't want to step away and miss the action. He 
Tamers and Tame Turns are really something to watch. Yeah, they, they very much are. And again, it shows the 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 reps that June has with this mm-hmm. deck, you know, being able to keep track. Because, you know, as I was talking with our, our Judge G right before this match, you know, not only is a rule of six always tough to track anyway, mm-hmm. but when you have so many cards in your combo, that rule of six all at the same time, um, it is that that much harder. So imagine being that player that has to do that too. Hitting that number almost always requires multiple cards. So. Yeah. Yeah, it, definitely some complex interactions. And we do see her thinking a lot, but if I can tell, it's not so much that she's thinking about the ordering of this. It's almost more that she's thinking about what she's taking out of her discard to set up the future turn. Yeah, for sure. Um, which is where your decision points in game come in and clearly shows the practice that the, uh, the untamed turn is almost habitual, it seems. And it's really the, the variation of what's in your discard pile that's making the thought come in. Yeah. And another kindness to the opponent, she's taking the cards that she has ruled six out of her hands so that she doesn't end up accidentally playing them. And so that he can also keep track of what she's ruled six so far. Yeah. And then there's the Amber Storm played right after. And another just way to clarify, she's using the the actual tokens oh, yeah, to distribute the damage instead of counting it out loud, potentially creating some room for error. Yes. And it looks like that was plenty to clear your walk's board. Six cards in the Without that Jervy in the capture, though, uh, he is going to get to forge this key, it looks like. All right, so I have to ask now, knowing that we're uh, where the board state is, um, only two creatures on the field, you uh, Ewok just got to forge a key, but knows that there's a lot of amber on the other side of the field. Where do you think he needs to go with this to to keep things from continuing to snowball out of his favor? So we know his Equidon has a lot of steel. Um, unfortunately, a lot of it requires setup. I can see in his hand right now, there are three steel cards, but he's only going to be able to get one of them off the way the hand is right now. Um, two of them require sacrificing a creature. There's only one Equidon creature to play. June got rid of the rest of the board which set him up in a bad place. Um, rather, two of them require destroying a creature. The third one requires exhausting a creature. Mm-hmm. So he can only play the one creature, and it looks like he's opting not to do the Equidon for probably that exact reason. Yes, and so he picked up his archives, and I remember now that he put the UFO as one of those um, mm-hmm. in there. Um, so that makes total sense that he, he um, at this point, wanting to play this, trying to get that off the field, because um, then, of course, the... the um, which of the eye can't come out readied. Um, sure, so yeah, that's, that's going a to... very importantly timed War of the Worlds because the way that June ended her turn, all the witches she was rule of sixing are in her hand. So now, while she still has them, uh, they're essentially slowed down to the mm-hmm. point that it's going to hinder her um, her rush to the, to the top there. Yeah. So that extinction doesn't look like he's getting ready to discard it. So I think he's maybe planning on keeping it to clear out some creatures later. Yeah. Because clearly June's deck is very heavy in problem creatures. <laughs> yeah, and you know what what I'm interested to see what June does is again in the the last game we saw when the untamed um, turn went to, a, uh, I guess, into sleep mode because mm-hmm. Witch Queen was in um, Ewok's archives. She pulled out the unfathomable turn. And so um, knowing that the Witch Queen now is in the discard pile, does she do something similar? Do we see that a similar setup happen where then, of course, we start to see some of those action cards get negated till she can get it, things back on, on hand. But nope, she comes out with... Yep, that Witch of the Dawn brings the Queen back. Um, that is a huge issue here for Ewok. Probably for Saw that coming, which is why he held the extinction, so that he can try to wipe them again. But this is going to be another big turn for June. And unfortunately, looking at Ewok's hand right now, he is a bit in a bit of a tough spot because he did not manage to get rid of any of that Equidon. Um, so there are some almost dead cards in there right now. Yeah. Which is not what he wants to see. And and as we just saw, doesn't have anything in his archive, so pretty much all his gas is currently in his hand. Mm-hmm. And so he's got to make do with what he's got. 
Um, and that's going to be, I think, the most, uh, you know, the big, the big factor from there is yep. that, as you said, some dead cards in the hand is going to make this a little bit more um, a, of a trying uh, turn to, to turn things around. Yeah, without a board, some of those cards are essentially chains at this point. Oh, and there's the Octo and Charge. And setting up next turn. <laughs> and she ended her turn there. Yes. So again, you... Well, without that Kanga fan, she can't be destroying the, the witches. That is correct. To occur them because Ewok, uh, actually not having a board is benefiting him in that respect, that she can't fight them to recur them, uh, because that Witch of the Dawn does have a play effect. Yeah. But I don't know that that's enough at the moment. I was checking the discard. He's probably trying to consider how he can prevent her from ecto charging. Because if she hits next turn, has a fair amount of discard, that's two keys in the turn, and that's all she needs to win. So I guess right now is he's trying to figure out how much he can take away, which is probably going to be that Equidon turn, mm -hmm. uh, which will, will also get him the most amount of draw. So potentially drawing him into something to help with the next turn. But I think taking Amber away at this point so she can't potentially active charge next turn is, is the most important thing. Yeah. Because we saw that two keys in a turn last time won her the game. Yep. And that's not what you want to see on the York side. Yep. And he opts for the extinction instead. Now that is a one card Mars turn. So his draw here is going to be very important. Oh, actually, he has a chain, so he doesn't draw. Um, yep. I, unfortunately, I think that might be game. I think with her current Amber number, I don't know that he can even get her off check as is. Yeah, so there's the, there's the second key. And I think here's where it comes down to, does she have enough? Because remember, post uh, Master Rulebook update, Ecto Charge still requires six. That boo is going to help out a lot. That puts an extra 10 cards in the discard pile. Which, if she's at 20 now, she's got it right there. Yep, and there there's the go. Ecto Charge with the pip, and there it is. That was a much quicker game. Wow. As we saw how important it was that she took that lead early. Yeah, very much so. And that means, of course, that June is your back-to-back -back Vault Tour Roseville Archon Champion. Wow. Um, with a different deck this time, and I would say a, a deck that definitely is extremely scary to look yeah. at. It's very interesting that we're seeing the same people with two different decks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it shows exactly what we've kind of talked about, um, you know, here on stream. But, of course, it's been talked about across the uh, about the space is that, you know, sometimes, um, you know, it's the deck. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the, the driver. Sometimes it's yeah. a combination of both. And I think it also, we know the veteran um, factor of uh, June and Ewok, mm -hmm. how, much, how much they both practice, how much they both know the game. Both season players, both top, top placers. Yeah. And, um, and obviously getting a, a returning um, spot here. And so, again, congratulations to both of them for yeah. not only, um, you know, making it last year, but returning uh, to defend uh, their spots. And then, of course, congratulations to June for um, becoming a repeat champion here. Yeah, and we all got some great games to watch. Yeah, and we have more really great good. games yeah. to watch. Yeah, we have <laughs> more great over. games. We have Sealed coming up here. This guy has got to go join uh, the Sealed competition. So, Mammon, thank you so much for joining Absolutely. here um, on the, here. the casting Obviously, everybody, I hope you all are excited. I'm going to go get my water, so I hope you guys are getting water. we got more things to come at you guys. And make sure that you guys are all ready for more Key Forge action coming from Vault Tour Roseville in Roseville, Minnesota. So be right back.
Thank you.
everyone. We are back here at Voltour Roseville and I now have a new person sitting on my side. It is the lovely face, Drazcore. Draz, thank you so much for being here. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. And of course, we have a, a great matchup uh, here on stream. It's going to be Ed, uh, Sydney SC Steel going against Vargas. Vargas qualifying in the top eight of every single one. Uh, obviously, also uh, took the top spot in Alliance earlier, got top four in Archon, and now trying to see what they can do in sealed um strong players both across the board um but you know you were talking about you played vargas not necessarily in sealed but earlier how does it yeah. feel going up against him uh in these kind of matchups and his play style yes yeah, so we matched up in uh archon and uh he is a very thoughtful player and with his archon deck he's got a lot of moving pieces that he wants to think through very carefully so he was playing very deliberately and um, very thoughtfully. Um, I, I didn't detect any mistakes and uh, that, that, that he was making. I think he's a really, really strong player who has a good chance to uh, to keep pushing, uh, yeah, to get to the top table. Yeah, and no, of course, flashing the 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 new pins oh, that he yeah. just got on stream. Nice. Of course, uh, getting the the champion pin there as well nice. as a little intimidation, yeah, you know, for your opponent. Yeah, oh, Mike's just looking at Sydney. He's like, yeah, you know, I got two of them. You know, yeah. of course, Sydney got one of them earlier as well. But you know, we're now looking at, of course, um, you know. This is our final tournament that we have here, the quarterfinals for the Sealed, and obviously a lot of strong players still uh, on, left in the field. Uh, we did get to see, not yourself, but of course earlier um, on Friday, we got to see Sydney play here on stream, and her deck is pretty nasty. I was talking to you a little bit before of it. The Brobnar pod in there um, was really strong, really drove the game there. Um, so I guess just in your experience playing against, uh, you know, uh, Grim Reminders, yeah. playing against a, a strong Brobnar pod that mm. brings, uh, you know, Beanstalk and Memorialize the Fallen. Right. What are things that you would be looking for to try to get around some of the, the strengths of that kind of a pod? Well, I got to think about, all right, so if I'm up against a Beanstalk, I have to ask myself first, do I have any artifact control? Beanstalk is so powerful, uh, it might be worth holding on to your artifact control for some time mm -hmm. in order to deal with that. Uh, depends on your own game plan and, and how important moving through cards are, but it's something you have to consider mm -hmm. uh, in that scenario. It, let's say you don't have artifact control, so you're not going to be able to stop that Beanstalk from just spamming out ready giants. You got to think about what are my board control pieces? Do I have board clears? What's the right time to use them? Um, do I have a lot of them? Do I only have one or two key pieces where I really need to save them for the, the absolute correct moment? Um, I think that's going to drive a lot of the decision making that Vargas is, is uh, going to make here. Uh, and then, right, Sydney on her side, I think she's trying to say, hey, how do I lean into these strings that I have in my deck? To uh, to come out swinging, and I think we see, I, I, I think we see the beanstalk. We do there. see it, and yeah. and you see yeah. with it, it has a draw pip on it, oh, nice. um, which yeah. is uh, one of those things that I also thought was really strong. Um, seeing it on. Um, in our previous time, because of course, you know, normally Beanstalk doesn't have that pip. Getting that draw pip could potentially puts you into something that, you know, might be that giant that you get out there, get it ready, and start to, to get things going for you. Absolutely, yeah. I'm I'm expecting that. Uh, just guessing what's in her hand. I don't know what's in her deck, so so there's certainly more information that I, I don't have. I'm I'm thinking she's probably going to push out that Beanstalk early to create that early pressure and try to make it hard on Vargas. Um, now, interestingly, as yes, you do see, Vargas has uh, has a recklessness up there. He could try to just out of hand hit. Oh, he did not. Okay, so that was interesting. Sometimes, when your opponent does not mulligan, it can be a good move to early to just turn one, throw down your recklessness because you know they like their hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, uh, being the first player just plays the one card, the unfathomable there. Um, important to note for those newer players, you know, first turn, you draw an extra card, but you only get to play one. Um, so now we'll see, of course, what Sydney decides to do. And I see, of course, she uh, puts the beanstalk down right away. Um, and, of course, uh, we did see in her hand she didn't have a whole lot of Brobnars, but it looks like she did draw into an extra Brobnar. Shock herder, yep. So she's just getting set up right now. Putting, putting down the intimidation. All right, and gets to that that six. 
So I could definitely also see the, the first turn play that Vargas made in terms of saying, hey, I've got a way to exhaust your giants. So your giants are not going to be as strong as maybe, as maybe they sometimes are. So I can see him not knowing what she has in her hand, right? Just saying, hey, yeah, I am going to uh, put up this, this pressure artifact. Yeah, and it, and it comes out at a good time, too, knowing that, again, he didn't know that she had the beanstalk, but the right. beanstalk comes out right after, and it's probably in that say, sense him going, all right, that was the, that was the smart mm-hmm. time that it came into play. Yep. Uh, he suspend his memorialize early here for uh, not much effect. Oh, look at that. Look at all those pips on that wow. recklessness. Yeah, with two d- discard pips, a damage pip as well. Yeah. So that is basically just chuck your hand. Okay. So I did not notice that in his uh, in his that had all those pips on it. So I actually now I, um, I, you know I could have gone either way, but I, I even more so think that he um, made the right play uh, turn one by putting down the uh, the unfathomable artifact to exhaust enemy creatures instead of he probably he was gonna have to ditch it if mm-hmm. he played that recklessness. And he he thinks it's an important piece, so yeah. that makes sense. All right, and there's the soul bomb coming out. Now, Soul Bomb can be a little tricky in that you need to be haunted to, mm-hmm. to trigger it for damage to all creatures. This is one of the cards, for whatever reason, I, when I first started playing GR, I forgot a few times, and I had to do it wrong a few times before I was like, wait, no, I have to be haunted <laughs> in order to, to trigger this effect uh, when we were still getting used to the haunted effect. So, um, Hey, you know what? That gives credit technically to those newer players who yeah. make mistakes. Even oh, yeah. some of the veterans, of course, yeah. when a new set drops, you yes. gotta, it takes a lot of time sometimes to, to learn the new mechanics, and the Haunted mechanic being one of those in the Grim Reminder set that released earlier, uh, or last month, I guess, yeah. actually. Yeah. April, April's already here. Time flies. I tell you. We already did all our April Fool's jokes. Right? So, yeah. Oh, man, you guys should do a sweet April Fool's joke next year. I think you should start thinking about that. Start planning ahead. On what the GG April Fool's joke is. All right, I will yeah. put that in my notes. Yeah. Don't do what Jazz said. No, <laughs> well, that was already in your notes. You just need to underline it. So. <laughs> All right, so we'll see what things are going here. Um, All right, get some taunt out with Gatekeeper. So I see a Trawler, I think I saw there. Trawler really strong, uh, but only triggers when haunted. So she's just playing it out, right? You gotta, you gotta keep moving cards. You can't wait to play every card optimally. Mm-hmm. Um, you gotta, you gotta pick and choose. Yeah, we talked about that actually in the the last match, and mm. so it's important that you talk about that. It's how one of the things with Key Forge is sometimes you want to you know get rid of your hand quickly because you want to draw up into things, um, but sometimes you want to hold on to a card. So there's that there is that actual yes. um, good thought of like when do I hold on to it and when is it just I need to do it as yep. you said in a less optimal time, but I need to move things along. Yeah, compared to other games, other card games, it is much more advantageous on average to discard a card than it is in other games because you're just drawing back up. Yeah. So, uh, and cycling your deck to get back to cards is a thing in this game. It's not like you get to the end of your deck and you're toast, right? So, mm-hmm. um, it is, I think it adds a really interesting uh, dynamic that discarding stuff is potentially valuable. Picked out the Smith. That's cool. A little burst. That uh, as he steals taken away from Vargas. All right, and of course drawing back up. So now we'll see what what Vargas has uh, up up his sleeves. I like that as he steals lock rocking the classic Vault Tour 2019, one of the first Vault Tour uh, playmats. Yep. From uh, from the old days. And it and it uh, makes total sense why yeah. she's using it. Uh-huh. You know, knowing of course the podcast. Yep. <laughs> yourself is that's the card over on the right with the time traveler. Yep. 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 yep, yep. Okay, so we can see that Vargas has the Winds of Death, which is what many would consider the the strongest card in set. Um, really game changing to be able to say I'm going to archive everything, all the creatures in my discard pile and then destroy all creatures uh, my opponent also, right, your opponent also gets to archive stuff that's in their discard pile so there's some timing mm-hmm. uh, things but hey, this is a sealed match Sydney does not know that Vargas has this card Yeah. however, it's also a common in set, she knows that uh, this, uh, he's playing a deck with Geistoid so um, she, I think a card of that strength, she has to assume that it is a card uh, that he has. Mm-hmm. 
She ha she can't ignore that he might have it. Better off assuming that it's in his deck uh, and trying to play around it than just assuming it's not there and, and getting hit at, at a bad time with it. Yeah, and using again from our last match that we just saw in the finals, mm -hmm. the one thing that Sydney could have that helps counter that, but we don't know if she has it in her deck, is if she has Bryozark, you know, being able yeah. to um, blink that text. So that would be one of those things that could also counter it, but as you said, it's not it's something you can't ignore. You, yeah, absolutely. Knowing that he brought the Geistoid pod, that's always, you know, a chance that he has it. Chance he has it. It's also got Bromnar, so he's got beefy boys that can take out Bryo. Um, and so... She she can't rely on Bryo 100% protecting her. Yeah. This looks like uh, Vargas is haunted at this point, coming in ready with the LDS Stray. Mm -hmm. So 10 cards of discard or more. I like a little wooden token, looks like. Uh, yeah. He's using there. Yeah, so that was actually a token that was created at Keyforge Celebration 2023 oh, nice. from our uh, very lovely uh, judge, Marcus. Oh, okay, um, and Marcus, so yeah. Marcus has brought those out. And then, of course, you see Sydney has the token that was handed out by uh, some of our community yes. members, Jason Wallace, yeah. um, with the Warforge podcast. Mm -hmm. um, and so helps us out here at stream when we could look at directly yeah. at those tokens and say oh, are they haunted or not yep. okay as long as they remember to flip it we should say there you go <laughs> yep yep it is like it is a little tricky sometimes to remember to, 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 count, to keep it active uh, appropriately every time so all right so it looks like it's sydney's turn so she is waiting she's not pushing hard into the beanstalk right she's waiting to get him a bunch of Brobnar in hand before she brings in, uh, you know, goes searching for for a giant, bringing it in ready. Mm -hmm. um, you know, her opponents for it, right? Vargas board is is kind of beefy right now, right? Yeah, I see. You know, four, six, seven, eight. So bringing out big Brobnar dudes, they they can die uh, yes. pretty easily um, uh, to to their opponent here. Um, but um, so she, she may be waiting for a big play as opposed to incremental plays here. Yeah, for sure. So now, of course, we haven't been able to see uh, you know Sydney's hand quite a bit at this moment. But just based off of what you're seeing so far, where do you, where do you think she might be wanting to go um, at this turn to try to, as you said, deal with the, the, the beefy board that's starting to get there and obviously um, not knowing that the uh, Winds of Death is there, right. but knowing that that Well, it is. Play. It's in the discard oh, pile. Oh, it's in now. the discard pile. So, you're right. So she has seen that. Um, so now I don't... He could have two. Who knows, mm -hmm. right? But um, there's some level... That is important knowledge, right? Because now she knows that her folks in her discard pile are going to have value. Um, and uh, let's see. She hasn't really done much with Mars yet. I did see a Psychic Haze, which is a really interesting... Uh, art oh, she's going to Brobnar. Okay, so she's going into it. She's going to she's gonna start triggering and pulling Brobnar dudes. Okay, so... And we see the Crim Tooth there. Mm -hmm. and, and, oh, ooh, with two discard pips. Oh, wow, yeah. So... She's going to... A feeding pit, and... I didn't catch what the other one was. You see a UFO... Uh, or maybe she just chose the first one so far. Yeah, she, sh she just chose one so far. She Okay, she ditches the hike Psychic Haze, which is, which is interesting, right? I think... So, Psychic Haze is a really interesting card. It... it it's an artifact that um, allows you to action and uh, enrage uh, all enemy creatures, and then those enemy creatures cannot fight your Mars creatures. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a really interesting effect. I'm guessing that she she sees the winds of death, and she's saying to herself, "Hey, he might have more. Who knows? Like the UFO is going to flip cards and get in her discard pile. She might be saying to herself, "I want to keep the UFO because." It's going to um, it's going to get me Mars stuff when I call Mars, and um, it's going to help beef up my discard pile uh, in case in case um, Vargas has ways to get that Winds of Death going. Now, just uh, for our newer players, there obviously uh, Sydney um, got searched her deck, got the Brick Nasty. Can you explain how that worked out? Why she, why she was able to do that? Well, so Beanstalk allows you to action and look through deck. I think discard pile also, if I remember correctly, and find a giant, 
put it and then put it um, into play ready. I don't know if it's play or put into play, but one of those two uh, ready. So, um, and Brick Nasty, the nastiest of bricks, is uh, is one of the strongest Brobnar creatures that, that we've seen. And so upon fight, you get an Ember, which turns fighting from a trade-off to say, hey, I'm not reaping to make Ember, to, well, I can still fight, kill something, hopefully, and still get Ember. So it's it's a pretty it's a pretty strong card that, that changes quite a few things. Yeah, and I thought it was important to point that out because we talked about the Beanstalk bringing the Giants out ready, mm-hmm. um, but we didn't talk about that extra effect. And so, of course, that is one of those things with, uh, you know, a number of the cards. Sometimes they have dual effects. You know, yeah. sometimes it's a persistent effect with an extra effect on top of it. Um, and so wanted to make sure that our, our newer viewers knew um, about that, that extra, um, you know, action uh effect on Beanstalk. Yep. So she gets some Ember, and she's uh, putting damage, uh, splash damage from Krim. Um, and she's got the ready Brick Nasty, uh, which I assume she'll just reap with, not not sacrifice it, force Vargas to deal with it. Now that mm-hmm. she's got the Beanstalk. Oh, fight to the end, so give it Skirmish, nice. Ooh, uh, yeah. So she'll be able to pull off the the Ember off of um, the eight power, uh, eight power demon. Um, and she's gonna give it. Is she indicating she's gonna give it to the uh, gatekeeper? I think so. So she's gonna. Um, so that's interesting because um, she's not gonna get. Oh, doesn't that give it skirmish though? Or is it only if you're haunted? Uh, it might only be if you're haunted. Here, we can double check that while the yeah the, the game continues to unfold. Okay, it, I think it might be when you're haunted. So, so that was a good play then. She she didn't get the ember from fighting because Brick Nasty only gives for for Brobnar, but uh, she would have triggered the destroyed effect. Hmm. Okay, let's let's. I thought the, oh, the destroyed effect on that is when your opponent is haunted. That's why. So, your opponent is haunted. She was not at the time. Think. I think that's why that played out that way. Yes, and so you are right. It is if you are haunted, yeah. you get the skirmish. There you go. So clearing the board was was big. But now Vargas right goes right into the soul bomb. Says, "Hey, this is the time. I'm going to kill everything except Brick Nasty, and even up the board a little bit." Oh, and there's a damage pip on the yep. on the under pressure. So we're probably gonna looks like he's gonna yep. So and then immediately kills it. Nice. Very nice. And gets the easy amber pip off of it too. Mm-hmm. So of course puts him at a check with six. Mm-hmm. The uh, playing um, upgrades on your opponent's creatures is one of those things I think sometimes new players. What, on their first real read of the rules, don't realize that that's a thing that you can do, or even sometimes like should do, because mm-hmm. it can be beneficial. Um, and so uh, it's it, it that one is a you know, offensive upgrade, but even um, upgrades that are good for your creatures, there are scenarios under which you might want to play them on your opponent for the ember, might want to um, give your opponent an ability for for various reasons. Yeah, you know, um, you know, not. For saying, for instance, like sometimes if they're uh, an upgrade where it forces enraging, uh, maybe you put it on a card that has an after effect, uh, after reap effect, right? That it all of a sudden makes your opponent no longer able to use that effect, um, as long as there are, of course, uh, creatures on the field to fight. Yes, yeah. Or something interesting like skirmish is an interesting one. If you give your opponent skirmish, in many ways it'll be like, wait, isn't that a benefit? Don't I want to give that to my own guys? Sometimes yes. Sometimes you don't want your opponent to be able to kill off their own creature because they've got a cool destroyed effect, or yeah. they've got some some interesting scenario that they're trying to to trigger. Maybe they captured a bunch of ember on it. Let's do it. They've got scam, scaling ember control, so they want to sacrifice it at the right moment mm-hmm. to to create a big swing in the game. So there's some interesting dynamics you can generate there. Yeah, very important to think about. Uh, you know, take it take it from the veterans here on the on the cast. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes play the upgrades elsewhere. <laughs> okay. Oh, UFO into UFO. Okay, that's kind of kind of fun. 
Um, so she is now searching for um, Mars creatures or Mars cards. And so she was. She did. All right. So she has a. She has a second trawler. So that's that's important information, right? So when you're when you're haunted, trawler captures all of your opponent's ember. She's got two ways to take Vargas off check uh, from no matter how much he has uh, in her deck there at least. Now, yep. she, now, she, now she's going into Mars. You were saying earlier we haven't seen her do too much with right. Mars and now here we're starting to see it a little bit. Yep, and the target, really, really strong card. I think she just archived the Brick Nasty from her discard pile. So, um, so she's prepared to not have to spend the Beanstalk on Brick Nasty. She can spend it on something else. Now, we didn't talk about um, uh, the Tangy Manji that uh, Vargas put out. That's a really useful card because that's increasing key costs uh, on SC Steel by, by three. So slowing her down a little bit. It's probably something she, she's going to want to take care of. Mm -hmm. um, plus, the, the Menelith next to it, uh, while Sydney's haunted, which she is right now, it can steal two on Reap, so that, that's a big deal. Mm. And uh, by going into Mars there, uh, she wasn't able to deal with those things, right? So Vargas may have set up a scenario where, hey, I'm gonna wait until I can blow up the board and then go in to put these two creatures out that are a little bit easy to take care of if you if a board exists, especially with these big Brobnar guys, um, and then challenge her to say, hey, are you going to spend your beanstalk to get one dude out to kill one of these guys, right? Mm -hmm. And there's um, the, the re. Yep. There you we know. go. And steal it. Bunch of steel. Yep. So that was good. That was big. And he can use the, uh, the, the Nightmare Inducer artifact to exhaust the Mars. To, pulling out uh, the crushing deep. Yeah. Yep. So this is a good turn. This is a very good turn. Yeah, Vargas set this up nicely. Oh, he can even just bounce the Mars guys. Doesn't even need to um, exhaust them. Very nice. Ooh, and already uh, mm -hmm. back with six amber. Yep. Yeah, big turn, big push. Yeah, that that Memelich reap to steal two. That's a that's a swing of five right yeah. there. Uh, so that's 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 a big deal. Or yeah, net of five, I guess I should say. So nothing to exhaust, but hey, what's the what's the thing I would least rather have she she have? I wonder if he'll pick a creature here just to so that Winds of Death can't pull it back. So oh, we put the trawler. Okay, so this is interesting. I was gonna say maybe he'll put the the, um, uh, but I think trawler is a good choice because now. Although she has two trawlers in there, so it did, he didn't necessarily lock up the the um, where he doesn't have to worry about the trawler uh, when he plays Wind of Death, uh, and just based on where she is in the deck, she might be able to get to that mm -hmm. trawler uh, through traditional draw means. So I, I, that was a tricky one. I don't know. I don't know what I would have done there, but I see. I see what he's thinking. Yeah. All right. So you know. We can kind of glance at the, her hand. Obviously, uh, her hand hand size is very much past the standard one, so we know she has quite a bit. And, of course, that's what I was going to get at. She saw a lot of big Brobnars right there. So here's the here's where things started to get um, pretty nasty, in a sense. Uh, the last time we saw Sydney here brick on stream. Nasty. A little bit of brick nasty, <laughs> you know. And, of course, there's the, there's the Krim. So she should be putting out those creatures. Uh, or no, they are ready because it is being stopped. Correct. Yes, yes, yes. So she's not. Yeah. Yep. So this. That. Yeah. So she's countering with a big play here. Now, I don't know if she has Ember Control here in Brabnar, so she might be relenting, uh, giving up the second key to build this really strong board condition. Yeah. Um, which, if if Argus doesn't have much in the way of creature control ready to go that could be could be a big swing but uh vargas will be up two keys to to zero so um we'll, yeah this is gonna be interesting yeah we'll see what she decides to do here because of course you as you had said earlier having the brick nasty out she gets an advantage if she fights um i think yeah heavy late mark will kill both upon fight with the splash too and there you go so i think that makes a lot of sense 
So we can't really see Sydney's ember pool. She has it just off camera, so I'm not actually sure how much ember she has at this point. Yeah, and we can uh, do a, a quick check there. Um, we'll step... You hold down the floor. Oh, oh we'll you go, find out? We'll, we'll find out. All right, all right. Investigative reporting. All right, very... Yes, get that Pulitzer. <laughs> All right, grabbing some enraged tokens here because uh, the coffin is riot. Really, I really like this card. Um, readying three creatures, and in this situation, you can just reap. So that's a, that gives you four ember right there. And enraging your Brahminon creatures when you have a brick nasty, and later on you can fight. Uh, it's it that's pretty strong. That's pretty powerful. Uh -huh. Oh, there we go. She's moving up the mat just slightly, so we can see it's a boatload of ember. She is sitting on a mountain. I was wondering, I guess I was like, I know she's making ember, like, <laughs> she must have just had five, or, or I guess last time maybe she had eight or something. Now she's got a whole a whole boatload. Yeah, I won't I won't lie. When I walked out there to check, um, and I visually saw it, I went immediately like, oh, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. So Vargas is forging here. So he is up two keys to none, but his opponent's got a ton of ember. Now he is does have unfathomable. Does he have trawlers? Does he have um, good ways to slow her to take her off? Um, he doesn't necessarily have to use it right now mm -hmm. um, because he's two keys ahead. But it's something he he's going to have to think carefully about the timing, right? He's checking how many cards are in his deck. He's checking how long he's going to stay haunted for. He's ch thinking about do I need to make a move this turn or um, or can I wait a little bit, depending depending what cards he, he's got there at the end of his deck? Mm -hmm. He might be waiting to draw into what he needs to to slow her down. So he might be saying, "I got to call a certain house so I can draw those four cards without flipping the deck." We'll we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, and I and I will say, and as you talked about, oh, the there trailer. it is. Ooh. So he does have a second Winds of Death. Okay, so we're gonna see a big archive here. Um, Getting all right, getting his Tangimanjis, getting yeah, he's getting a lot of creatures there. I'm looking for the Ember Control where he can slow Sydney's push here. Okay, he's got a Covetous Hama. Um, big push, a big dump into the the discard. All right, but we know that Sydney also has a Trawler. I believe, unless unless we missed it. Uh, she did um, remember the trawler did get put. Which well, she has two. Oh, she did have yeah, two. You're correct. Two. You're correct. So, so I think she's got one. So Vargas is checking here. Hey, what are you putting under there? So I believe we'll see. Oh, no. Okay. So maybe. Okay. So there wasn't a trawler in there anymore. I believe she has two. So I think one was put on the bottom of the deck. Oh, she archived a target, so it was already moved. Mm. That's right. It was already moved. Okay, so she did have two, but they weren't there anymore. So that's probably for... Okay. For, for Vargas, that's probably a further reason to say, yeah, just go ahead and, and do this. Get all my stuff back. Blow up her Brabnar board. Yep, yep, because she already has the way to slow me down, uh, ready to go in her archive. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that, was, that was the right move. Now, Vargas does not have Mars, so uh, the, the big combo I've been talking about this tournament has been Winds of Death key abduction. Yes. And with the massive amount of cards that Winds of Death allows you to archive, often it can be a very cheap or free uh, key. Mm. And so that has been uh, a big player in Archon and Alliance uh, today. In sealed, right? A little yeah. harder to get the, yeah, the sure. perfect, you know, the, the perfect, the nuts jar, the nuts cards, right? As, as a poker player would say. Uh, so uh, we're not going to see that here. Yep. So the, all of a sudden, there's of course the. Uh, she moved the amber off, but she didn't pull it. Yeah, I forgot to flip the key. Right. Well, the judges will figure that out with her in a moment. <laughs> She is thinking carefully about this turn, thinking about her options. Yeah. Um, she doesn't necessarily have to counter the board here. 
but she does need to, she needs to, she wants to pick up the pace a little bit with her Ember. She, her, she doesn't have much of a deck left, I don't think. So she might be thinking about that target and what piece do I want to put into, um, um, into my archives before I flip my deck again. Yeah, and, and I'm looking I'm looking at the field, and it looks like she may have drawn the last card of her deck. That's what it looks like, I'm yeah. not seeing anything there. So, of course, yeah, that okay. means, obviously, once she, once she drops to five cards, she's going to be shuffling her deck and no longer be haunted. Yeah, Zvargas is not showing pressure on board right now. So I think she's considering whether or not to draw her um, archives, which would also prevent her from flipping her deck. So that's another way. You don't necessarily have to spend the targets. Yes. Spend the Mars right now. Um, and it looks like she did pick like up her is. archives. Yeah. She's going to do it. She's going to archive some key pieces. Uh, and she's still got the Beanstalk, right? So she's going to also have the ability to... Uh, now, what's going to be interesting is what is she going to archive, right? She's going to... Trawler. Okay. Yep. Yep. Get those trawlers over there. Get yourself into position. Oh, she's got a third target. Oh, wow. Okay. Target is so strong. So she's thinking about this one a little more carefully. Yeah. Um, I wonder if she takes... Hmm. This, I'm forgetting. Okay. Yeah. See, it, it, keeping your archives all of one house generally makes the archive... Ah, she there she, the there she There she uh, floods it. <laughs> generally makes your archive stronger because right, you can take take that in, play it, use all the cards, and not inhibit your next turn with the with, with card slowing you down. So um, it makes sense you'd go that way. You know, there's an argument, hey, should she have grabbed uh, a key different piece um, just to have it in in a certain situation? But but what would that be would, would be the question. Fire Chicken, I was getting ready to, to go out there to to make sure that uh, Sydney did flip the key, but we saw the key get flipped uh, finally. So we are we are back to a um, the correct game state. Mm -hmm. We're also uh, we learned yesterday when I was I was uh, doing some some casting. We saw one thing that was wrong, so we like tried to run out there, but it's on a delay. So by the time they got out there, they already figured it out. They're like, "Yeah, we know." <laughs> <laughs> we're like, All right. <laughs> So we ran back in, so we, we're a little bit of a delay. Well, I will tell you, this one currently we are on, we are not on a delay, so you are going to be, oh, this is we are able to, the second? Okay. we are to the second, so it was, we'll be it able was, to jump out I want to say it was like 30 second delay or something last <laughs> time. Uh, you know, probably Josh was like, I don't trust these guys. So, uh, <laughs> Got to put them on a delay and keep them really dead, so he's a, he's a wise man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So Vargas is thinking here, Sydney just presented a huge board. Now, Vargas has access to all his dudes, yeah. right? all his stuff from the Winds of Death. Um, he knows that there's a whole bunch of Brahminar coming behind this. So if he's got a board clear, he might not feel comfortable playing it at the moment. But at the same time, if you just leave these six out there, right, she can... Reap for six, increase key cost, and archive for targets for for later use. So that this is a, this is a tricky spot that Vargas is in. So he's got to think about what do I do here? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of decision points in this this moment right now, as you said. Um, I know that of course Sydney still has to forge two keys to get to, uh, of course, uh, pushing it to the end. Yep. But you know. This is a turn that could decide how the rest of this match unfolds, as yeah. you said. So it'll be, it looks like he might be going unfathomable yeah. this turn. Yep. So he's going to bounce, but he, ha he can't not bounce the targets, right? So I think this is why he's, he's hesitating, because putting targets with archiving back in hand is, is a big deal. But uh, he feels like he has to, he can't not deal with his board, otherwise, he's on a two turn clock. So he's going to put one target back. And uh, also prevent the reap for a key cost increase uh, on the next turn. So the interesting question is, is he going to be able to get to check? Um, oh, and puts the weak link on there. Weak link is interesting. It, it really requires combo pieces, but he has the combo piece, right? So he can come in and exhaust Mars. Mm -hmm. So 
um, which we didn't really talk about, right? But yeah. th that that is a great counter for having a big board. So so he doesn't need to clear the board if he goes into unfathomable. You know, and just pointing it out again for our newer uh, um, watchers, what does weak link do? Okay, so basically, when the creature is exhausted, your keys cost plus six, and so uh, now that's normally a state that doesn't happen on its own, right? Because you always uh, ready your creatures mm -hmm. at the end of your turn. So your opponent would have to have some mechanism by which to exhaust your creatures for it to ever have an effect. So it's it's on its own without help. It's just an Ember Pip. doesn't do much yeah. of anything. But in a deck like this, or there's other various cards that allow you to um, exhaust opponent's creatures, particularly in Unfathomable. Yes. Um, it could be good, right? Now Sydney will have to... Um, consider uh, hey, if if Vargas goes into uh, Unfathomable he can increase my key costs by, by 6. Yeah. And interestingly, that would have been that would have been a, a big play before for, for Vargas if he had it and a good way to do it. When she had that Mountain of Ember, it looked to my eye like she had at least 12. Maybe she didn't. Um, there is right, so there's there's sort of two ways to play with that key increase in cost, uh, increase key cost, right? You can either go uh, and say, hey, I'm gonna, you know, you're at 11, I'm gonna make your key cost 12, so you just don't forge. Mm -hmm. But another way to do it is, well, I'm gonna engineer it so that um, you have 12 ember, and your cost is 12, so you have to pay 12, yeah, so that you're you're paying way more. Than you, than you would want to for your key. So two different strategies that you can employ based on the based on your decks, based on situation. So it looks like uh, Sydney activated the Beanstalk and now is carefully considering what she wants to bring to the table. Um, it looks like she was looking between the Crim as well as Brick there. Um, she seems to kind of keep going between the two. I think they're just doing a clarification of what pile is what um, at the moment. And I think Sydney was clarifying that the, the two piles that you see between the Beanstalk and her Archon cards right now is her hand. Yeah. Um, she just had separated them um, currently based off of like houses. The one on the far right is her archives and the one card right now face down is her deck. <laughs> is it, she is giving away a little bit of information by separating her hand in that manner. Mm -hmm. uh, now. How useful will that information be to Vargas? It's hard to say. Um, he already had a sense of what was in her hand because of the Winds of Death play. Um, but, uh, um, okay, she's discard. You're, okay, got it. She's got the scrap effect is triggered off of the, uh, um, the scientist. Okay, in the second scrap yeah. effect there. Yeah. Yep. So she's gonna grab those two ember for herself, and she's gonna blow up a card with a weak link on it. That was a good move. Yeah. So now, of course, key costs have returned to normal for her. She's at four amber. Um, doesn't have to worry about the weak link and um, Fargas, you know, exhausting the creature to, to raise the key cost. Oh, nice shock I was gonna say excellent. Uh, deploy for Shock Herder, get another reap out of there. Now, Shock Herder normally forces you to fight, but because there's no enemy creatures on board, can't fight, therefore the effect ends when you have a ready creature, therefore, as long as it's of the active house, you can reap. Yep, and now with that, because of that, uh, that reap, she's at six, so threatening her second key and potentially mm -hmm. evening things out a little bit here. Yeah. We'll see if Vargas, what does he do here? He, uh, so we know that he, I believe I saw in his archives, we, we saw some a bunch of creature control, or uh, uh, excuse me, ember control. Mm -hmm. So he can definitely stop Sydney from forging here. Um, so it's an interesting question of, does he pull his archives now? Does he stick with what he has of Brobnar? He might be able to get to check in Bra. It's a little hard to tell there. He want, what he really would love to do is both to get to check himself and take Sydney off check. So he's going to Brobnar. 
Uh, okay, he's going to get the Iron Obelisk. That's a little creature control there. So this will be... Um, yeah. All right. Ooh, that Shark Herder has a, an Ember Pip on it. Very nice. Yeah. So he's going to... Yeah, fight with the Thunderdale deal. Get some damage on it. Um... And uh, put some damage on Crawl Tooth. Importantly, he uh, has damage on uh, his own Brobnar creature, and because of the Iron Obelisk, he's going to be able to uh, increase the key cost by by one in this case, because one of his Brobnar creatures mm. is damaged. And with that lashed out, does a good job of clearing the board, and then bursts with that Smith. Nice, nice move to get up to check. At eight. Wow. So he's putting pressure, and he's saying, "Hey, I know you've got. I know you have those um, trawlers. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to do something to take me off here to stop me from winning the game." Yeah. So he know he knows that's not a uh, definite victory right now. All right. Uh, oh, so does she have seven? I think she has some amber um, that are have gone back uh, off screen okay. again. Okay. Okay, so she had more than we realized. Yeah. I was, I was uh, a, yeah. you know, we saw the big amber pool, yeah. and then it disappeared, yeah. and I was like, you know, wondering similarly, like, did, was there some things uh -huh. that happened that, you know, burned her amber pool? But I think it's just some of them have gone back off screen. Yep. Um, and so yeah, she. I'm curious, actually, because of that, how much amber she still has at the moment. Obviously, we currently see the five um, that are there. I believe that it looks like five. Um, it does look that way. Now, does she have the ability to take them off in anything other than unfathomable? If not, she could. Sydney could end up in a situation where she's stuck in unfathomable. It looks like she is. She um, picked up her archives. Well, so... And She's certainly going this route. Um, or at least she's considering it. I don't, we don't know if we've, she's actually pulled it into her hand or she's just considering her options. I guess you are correct. I, I thought she had, because I see the one Mars there. I mm -hmm. thought originally that this was uh, how we had seen her before, separating the houses, getting ready to play, how she was going. Seeing that one Mars there... It might not be yeah. pulling up her archives. We'll see. We knew she had access to it. She might have pulled her archives last turn. I can't actually remember now. No, she she definitely had her archives here to when she was forging that key. Uh, and I, I, my gut tells me she pulled her archives. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, she absolutely uh, did, right? Yeah, um, but yeah. And she, and as you said, it kind of, with the plunder. So she's trying to figure out, how do I deal with the Brobnar on board, increasing my key costs? So she chooses not to scrap for an exhaust there. Um, she does There's get a one capture. capture. Uh, and a discard. Yeah, she'll get used to the... Uh, get the target yeah because she wants to turn she wants to draw cards after this if possible i think okay she's putting the average under taunt interesting so So she's opting here to actually allow her opponent to capture one more so that... I um, wonder if she can get one more. If this saves her from having to play a trawler this turn, then, then that was worth it. Um, yeah, it's interesting. So she's playing Plunder now. This, this is where... Oh, she's, she's waiting to see. So she's going to do Beam of Forgetting. Yeah, so she's going to ping something out of... Uh, Vargas's hand before playing the plunder. Um, 
And okay, gets a stray, gets a basically reap for capture out uh, of hand. Um, and all right, so she's thinking about. Okay, so plunder's really strong. Right? Plunder says, hey, I'm gonna reveal one card at a time from your hand until I see something that I want to discard. So, yeah, she's gonna probably, oh yeah. All right, oh, so she just it. takes out the winds of death. Um, that's big. That's a, that's a clear way to wipe, to get rid of the trawler, right? Mm -hmm. And she's gonna exhaust, yep, exhaust the five power. Brobnar guy. And we are under five minutes now, so this oh. is this is where it is getting very important to how these next few turns go. Alright. Mm. So she did not put the trawler under taunt. That is interesting. I just wonder if she's doing it. She wants to draw him into a fight? I don't know. Hmm. Well, she has enough amber over there to forge, and we don't know if she has any more amber off the... Off right. the... So she's, we have, she's at least seven. Cost is seven to her right now. Yeah. So he is... Uh, did he just concede? Or is he... No, why is he putting down... Oh, he's letting her... Okay, she shuffled. That's why. Yep, yep. And he's just... He's playing Brobnars. He's like, ah, whatever. <laughs> Here's my card. I'm just playing all these. <laughs> so he does have Memorialize the Fallen. Right? We saw that before. Um, and... Um, um, okay, yep. See, the... Uh, so the Krim actually could have killed the Trawler under Taunt anyway. Um, but it would have blown up more of... Um, I know oh, it wouldn't have because she's not haunted right now. So, or it's Vargas. Whether Vargas is haunted or not. Vargas is hard to, is haunted right okay. now. So, so he's putting more. All right. So now keys are costing up to eight, and as he still spent one of the two trawlers. And there's the memorialized the fallen coming out. So burning a whole bunch of ember, increasing key costs, showing a strong board position. All right. So eight in pool. Now we know Sydney's got a trawler. So now I can relax. So she can stop again. But um But she's considering if she has other options. Alright, and with the time clock in the upper left-hand corner, that's not necessarily the official time. We did not hear the, the uh, official start time. Um, but So we are getting pretty close to time at this point. And, of course, then it goes into the, uh, for those that are newer, uh, the, um, the time rules first, which would be whoever's uh, turn it was when time was called gets to finish their turn. Their opponent then gets to do a full turn. Then it goes back to uh, the uh, original player to get a forge a key step, and if that doesn't end the game there, then we go to end of time rules. And if we get to that point, we'll see how things shape out. So Sydney's not haunted right now, so she her trawler actually is not live. So this is a problem for Sydney. She is trying to figure out either how does she get haunted, or um, is there something else she can do. Mm -hmm. Don't know that the UFO would help her get. Uh, don't know that she has anything on play out of Mars right now that she can take. Um, so they're discussing something. Something that happened before. She might be in a tough spot here. All right, so it looks like she went unfathomable just based off of that play. Yeah. So she she's gonna fight to get the ember, reduce the key costs, and then maybe. 
gatekeeper blow up Krim and the flanks. Um, Assuming he's actually haunted. I'm going which to it looks like. I know the tokens has haunted, but the discard power is pretty thin. I think probably not haunted. Okay. So. Um, They're trying to fool us at the caster desk. Yeah. So, Troller comes out. Is she haunted? Maybe she got to haunted. Well, she hasn't flipped her haunted, so I'm not quite sure. It looked. It didn't look like she had. Oh. Uh, okay. She, uh, yeah, so it's like she conceded there saying, yeah. oh, no, I'm not haunted. You're not haunted, so yeah. that was the game. And yep. so, of course, uh, Vargas taking taking yeah. that win. Um, what did you think of the, the match and what you saw from there? Well, they both played really well, right? I, uh, I thought that they both were thinking through. They were making good decisions. And, um, you know, the early Beanstalk uh, was big. Um, but we saw that Vargas was able to take advantage of the earlier turns uh, uh, more so than, than SE Steel mm -hmm. and uh, build up that advantage uh, even though she had that turn one beanstalk. So he played very well around the beanstalk in order to, to get ahead. Sydney was starting to draw, gain some momentum there with that huge burst turns, but Vargas was too far ahead. Mm -hmm. So an uh, interesting question I think that Sydney may be asking was, hey, was there a way to just hold off Vargas from forging that second key uh, another turn? I don't know if there was. I didn't see myself a, a big move, but um, um, you know, when I play high level like this, I think about, oh, what could I have done differently? Those are the moments that I reflect back on and try to think like, oh, was there something I could have done there? Yeah, I didn't, it, nothing uh, jumped out to me um, mm -hmm. as well at that point, to, like trying to think back on that uh, moment. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and there was really, of course, no way um, there towards the end to avoid um, reshuffling her deck, yeah. which is made the plunder not work you know so that was kind of the tough part i think on her end um trying to figure out what is what is my play there um, but vargast obviously played extremely yes. well as you said and mm -hmm. you know obviously making it to three top eights uh, is impressive enough making it to the uh winning alliance making top four in archon yep. and now top four as well yeah. in sealed that's really impressive. a really impressive weekend really impre yeah this is a the weekend of Vargas, <laughs> <laughs> or something. For, uh, yeah. for sure, for yeah. sure. All right, so what awesome. we're going to do here, uh, we're going to take a small break just to make sure um, that we stretch our legs, get some water, and, of course, get ready for the semifinals of Sealed. Um, I don't know if Drascore is going to be joining me just back again yet. It'll be dependent on what he has to do here. What flight times we got, yeah. But, uh, but I will say, if anything, I'll be back here. So make sure you guys get some water and get some food. We'll be right back here with some more Keyforge action at Roseville, Minnesota. And stay tuned for some more.
everyone welcome back to more action of the seal tournament at vault tour roseville we are at the semi-finals and we have air on the streamers table ewok and mammon um obviously Draskor joining me again and we are getting ready to start of course things are looking like we're about to see a straight archon deck make its way into the sealed finals as you might remember uh, those that um have been around the sealed now allows you to build an alliance, or you can build a, a straight Archon deck, and both of these people have elected to do so. I think so. We should. Do, I'm actually. Not, I didn't talk with Ewok. It's possible that um, I missed a card when I quickly took a snap of his of his uh, deck. So if we might have to change last second here, if we uh, find out that I was wrong. Just <laughs> but I know Mammon uh, is definitely uh, just rocking a single deck. Yes. 
and uh, we will we will find out. Now, we'll, I will we'll say, check that out. Yeah, I know we'll, we'll find out. when Ewok was on the sealed stream yesterday, he yeah. said he was rocking a straight Archon deck. Okay. However, yeah. of course, you can, with, you can swap out during between rounds, so there yeah. is a chance something's different. But yeah. looking in the corner there, I'm only seeing the the one uh, right. Archon card. So That is all that I saw when I went over and just, for, for the cast, right? didn't show the <laughs> opponent, just snapped a big picture so we can, we can chat about the deck. Although it's a little blurry as <laughs> on the camera. I just did that quickly and ran away. So uh, you obviously right now um, uh, have uh, Mammon's deck pulled up. Yeah. Uh, what are you thinking about that, uh, about his deck? So let's take a look here. So if we look at this deck, uh, Honorable Ender, uh, Thero Dually, how do we say that? <laughs> um, it, so there are some strong cards in this deck. So I'm seeing in Brobnar, he's got Memorialize the Fallen, huge, one of the only real big scaling Ember Control with cards in set. Um, then he's got a whole bunch of beefy Brobnar boys, which, uh, from a perspective of sealed, having just a lot of big dudes can sometimes win you the day. He also has the Smith to burst out of the, those, those big dudes. Plus, he's got the Fiery Jark to blow up the opponent's creatures uh, on play there. So he's got both Ember Control, Creature Control, and the ability to, to uh, burst uh, in-house. So uh, that, that's a pretty strong house there. Equidon, um, seeing some, some stuff that, uh, that, that we like to see. A generous offer to get some stealing going, uh, out negotiate more stealing, uh, and then Transitory Philosopher, if his opponent plays a bunch of artifacts, can uh, put pressure, potentially steal from that. Uh, as well as a Talent Scout, great way to get your opponent's best creatures out of their hand. Finally in Geistoid, Double BR Geist in order to uh, bring guys back out of the uh, out of the discard pile, as well as double Junk Restoration to turn cards and uh, get your best one. A haunted house to get you haunted and get you Ember. So lots of good stuff you like to see. Plus a uh, spontaneous awakening for a little artifact control. So um, very well rounded deck. And uh, lots of discard tips. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of, of discard. discard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten discard pips. So there's there's a lot going on there. Yeah, for sure. And obviously, uh, you know, looking at um, uh, Ewok's deck, uh, what are you what are you thinking with his deck? All right. So assuming this is what we think it is, <laughs> uh, he's Brobnar Mars Untamed. So I'm seeing in Brobnar. Uh, so I'm seeing. Uh, some things that, that we might recognize from the last game, the Soul Bomb, the Recklessness, I'm seeing the Brick Nasty, as well as the Cacophonous Riot that we saw uh, generating a bunch of Ember last game. Uh, and then a bunch of big guys. Um, also, he has memorialized the Fallen for uh, for that Ember control. So some similar things going on between uh, the Brobnar pods and those two houses. Now in Mars, uh, let's see what he's got here. Uh, the deep probe to get stuff out of your opponent's hand, to get those creatures out of your opponent's hand. Double don't believe your eyes when at the right time, uh, basically capturing two from your opponent's own side. Big swing cards. Uh, Grabber Janner is, is great to see. Uh, Plague Wind um, will be, will, could potentially be effective if, uh, in this match because your opponent isn't playing Mars, though Mammon's playing some big, big creatures. Finally in Untamed, we've got a Pester Grove, which is a card you don't see very often. That's an artifact that comes in and basically all creatures come into play uh, enraged, which can really throw off your opponent. So uh, we'll see how that plays here. A Cauldron, really strong uh, card to play multiple uh, multiple cards out at once, once you've built them up. Double Till the Earth to flip, uh, to basically unhaunt folks, which maybe will come in handy. We'll, we'll see. Um, but. It's, there's lots of enhancements that on those cards are useful. But importantly, double Haunting Witch to burst for Ember, and then the spooky charge to, he hopes, to lock out the game, mm -hmm. uh, as well as a Witch of the Eye to recur some of the important pieces. Um, and uh, so so lots to like in uh, both decks here. We'll, I'm, I'm excited to see this matchup, because we've got uh, two of my good friends here. I've got my... Local friend, Mammon DG is a local uh, Philly guy with me. And Ewok Jr. is, uh, you know, on the AC Archon's Corner cast with me. Uh, you know, you've talked to him once or twice. A little bit, causing all sorts of problems <laughs> with each other uh, online, as well as a fellow Team SAS member. So, 
uh, I'm excited to see this this matchup and, and how these guys how these guys do here. Yeah, and so we've already obviously seen the action getting underway here. Um, Mammon uh, getting into haunted status right away. Uh, so of course those discard pips really helping out um, in that factor. And now we already see you know reaping starting to get towards uh, towards that first key. It's not quite at six yet. Yep, he's getting some shock collar action going on here. Shock collar is a weird card, right? This is we talked about uh, upgrades you play on your opponent last time. This is an interesting one. Once you reap, you you stun yourself and your neighbors. So um, it sometimes it can be strong. Sometimes it's, it it can be awkward. But uh, you know, in this case, it's um, I think uh, it actually looked like maybe Mammon forgot about it. But uh, I think I think playing you know reaping with those guys and getting the amber is the right move if you. Um, uh, fully remember there so yeah and of course plays the infiltrator um on ewok side which is going to destroy the creatures uh, next to it um an interesting question is what does he take here so in one sense you say take the card of the house you're in but he's just gonna be playing it for the ember or holding it so okay so he, he took the smith so he's gonna have to hold on to that card but he's looking at the rest of his hand and he's saying to himself i think i can burst i played that infiltrator on the other side where I'm going to be able to uh, mm. kill off a bunch of creatures on my opponent's side. So I think I'm going to have a bigger board than him for a while. And so even though I'm slowing my draw a bit, uh, I'm going to be... Um, um, oh, that was cool. Uh, even though he's throwing a draw, I think it's the right move. So, okay. So what he just did, notice how he very briefly put Talent Scout in his discard. That BR Geist has a discard pip on it. So you can play the BR Geist and basically take a card from your hand, temporarily put it in your discard pile, and then play it. So this allowed him to play this talent scout and see his opponent's hand. Ooh, look at this. Wow. Yeah. He's going to take that fiery jark, move the talent scout over. He's going to blow up his Mamet archive. What did he archive? I, I think he missed it. I don't think he's archived anything yet. So we just blew up the Met. So the Mamet on destroy trigger... It should have archived. Unless I missed that was card there. that's on top of his deck. That is possible. He might, Yeah, that's possible. That might be his archive. He's just not using the archive spot. So maybe he did that and uh, I just missed it. Yeah, it did happen very quickly. Yeah. So I'm right there with you. I did not see uh, necessarily what uh, he archived. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if anyone in chat has... Uh, caught anything on that regard and then we've seen a number of players doing this uh, that I do want to call out for newer players of course Mammon putting his hand down not looking at it just sitting there um, and just of course uh, not trying to give any information over to Ewok that Ewok could potentially use to his advantage uh, and it looks like uh, in the chat Dataforge says that Mamet archived be our geist ah uh, okay that makes sense that makes sense it's a good one to have to hold on to So we got the um, spooky charge um, for for the I think just for the ember and the shuffle. Oh, looks like a judge yeah. call coming in. Yeah, I think yeah, the ordering of what was where in the discard pile is a little bit off at this point. So, okay, the shuffle was from... Yeah, maybe the spooky charge... Yeah, the spooky charge might only shuffle upon uh, forging the key. So the shuffle's actually from the Till the Earth. Okay. So he was checking to see if the card on the discard pip gets shuffled in and the judge confirmed it does because the discard pip is going to fully resolve before the play effect uh, is then triggered for um, 
for Till the Earth. Yeah, and that's obviously, again, um, why it's great to always have, uh, you know, the judge be there, call over if there's any questions. Even veteran players like both of these uh, people can sometimes, um, you know, need to have these clarifications or at least just reassurance. And yeah. so um, thanks to our judges, G and Marcus, for being here this weekend and helping out so much with a lot of these. I will sometimes ask, even if I'm you know, 80% sure of something because I want to make sure that we're playing the game right. And, you know, especially at this high level, we want to make sure the, uh, you know, the game has the right, in, right integrity and that um, you're, you're playing correctly. Yep. So, of course, Mammon forged a key there and obviously going into uh, Brobnar to, to start this. Um, and there is the double discard pip, so... Discarded, I believe it was a Mars card before he discarded uh, that Brobnar there. Oh, the ordering on that Smith was interesting. Okay. All right, and in chat, uh, Ace of Keys is saying spooky shuffles even if you don't forge a key. So okay, so he probably shuffled twice, really. And that's anyway. probably what. Yeah. 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 So that was probably some of the back and forth with the. Yeah, probably making sure. Look, I'm shuffling this time for the spooky, and yeah. then I'm putting, you know, till the. Uh, uh, so till the, the end. double haunting, which comes out, but uh, but is not haunted. So this is, so it's interesting. I think, I mean, typically you'd want to hold off a little bit, but he had almost no cards mm -hmm. in like his card pile there. So I think he walks in himself. I just got to play these cards out and uh, get something else. And hey, if I happen to get value out of this, awesome. Right? Mammon does not have a board at the moment, so it could possibly, um, you know, work to uh, to the favor here, but um, 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 oh, do we write in Fathom? Instead of no, of we uh, the um, the file did not save, oh, so okay. of course it did not. Um, yeah. Thank you, Davo, for uh, for pointing that out in the chat uh, about yes, the the file did not save, and so of course it didn't update. So I just quickly hit that Control S. Uh, very got that useful, saved. Very useful key. <laughs> it's a very, very useful command. Unless I'm using a Mac, then it's uh, command S. <laughs> uh, well, you know. <laughs> so, uh, Ewok is at check. Okay, here we go. Uh, so we do, uh, we do take Ewok off check, get to Ember. You know, one thing that's interesting here, actually, I'm noticing, is uh, the keys that each player is playing with. These small uh, year-numbered keys are relatively uncommon, mm -hmm. and so. But Ewok has the 19, the 2019s, and uh, Mam and DG has the the 2020s. The 2020s are particularly rare because well, the whole world shut down in 2020. So <laughs> something happened um, there. <laughs> there are very few of these in the wild. I don't know. Maybe you guys have some in a back room somewhere, but there are definitely folks who would love to have the 2020 small keys because uh, there are not that many of them around. No comment. Let All me right. put it that way. Right. Uh, no <laughs> comment. Well, you can tell. Yeah, maybe we'll talk after the cast. Who does? But yes. Uh, uh -huh. But but you're you are correct, of course, because of because of the situation that happened. You're right. Uh, you know, the 2020. Um, uh, I believe they were called the the Grand Championships. Did not uh, fire. Right. So big move right here. Talent Scout coming out again uh, and taking the brick nasty from Ewok Junior. Um, that, that's pretty big, right? That's an important piece for Brobnar, for Ewok Jr. Uh, now Mammon, he gets himself a, a Brick Pat Nasty. I believe an additional Brick Nasty, if I uh, recall correctly. Uh, let me just double check. Uh, nope, oh, no, he does not have the Brick Nasty. So he was missing that piece. He's got a lot of beefy boys, but he does not have the Brick Nasty. Now he does. He had to add to the Nasty Squad. Yes, yes. And he got the Ember off playing it, too, that enhancement there. So that was big. Ammon goes to check, and uh, Ewok is a little bit on his back foot right now. Now, Ewok does, uh, he's got a deck that can burst. Um, and Mammon did not take care of the Haunting Witches. Mm -hmm. But I think there's only that one card yeah. in the discard pile. So, so Ewok is, 
he walks a little, he's, he's got to think through, hey, what does he do here? How does he set himself up to, to position his burst? Yeah, and we're getting a slight glance at his hand. Obviously, you see a Mars there, and mm -hmm. looks like three Brobnars. Oh, now we get to see a little bit more. Um, so, so there is a Memorialize the Fallen yeah. on his end that could help, you know, pull back on Mammon. Well, maybe a little. I mean, there's not that much in, in either player's discard and, pile. Yeah, that's what I was about to say, actually, yeah. too. Is like, But we did see, you know, things haven't been going into the discard pile too much at the moment, so... How much is that going to help? Yeah, and also I saw a Don't Believe Your Eyes, which again requires Haunted. <laughs> yeah. You'd be Haunted in order to do the big version. You can capture one, but really, Ewok wants, wants more here. Yeah, and look at it. There's his, there's his discard. So even if you memorialize the Fallen... It's for one. Yeah. So I think... If I were Ewok right now, I would be thinking a little bit about this turn, but I would be thinking more about what do, I, what do I think I need to do next turn, and how do I set myself up for that. Based on what we saw in hand, I think I think this is a... Uh, he's not really going to be able to stop Mammon from forging his second key. So how does he put some pressure on Mammon to pay more attention to what he's doing here? Uh, let's, let's see what he does. So he looks like he's going into Brobnar, which we, makes sense. Most cards in his hands, trying to get to something. Yeah, if he can kill, he can kill a creature or two. Um, make make the loss a little more. So he's playing. Oh, had to draw and a discard pip yeah. on it too. So, so what is he dealing damage to? Um, see, he he would really love to kill one of his opponent's creatures. See, even killing Brick Nasty doesn't doesn't help himself though. Yeah, he does the memorialize the fallen. Yep. So I think he was also just considering, like, well, do I hold on to it for next turn? Do I need to use it next turn? But unless he gets a bunch of creatures into Mammoth's discard, it's not gonna matter. So I, I do think um, as he was thinking ahead to next turn, he's I don't I think he was correct in saying it's not going to be a big play next turn either. So yeah. just, just move cards. Just get cards in your discard pile. Draw new cards. Set yourself up the best you can for next turn. Hope Mammon doesn't put on too much pressure next turn. And uh, maybe maybe you'll get some good stuff under Cauldron here. Those, those they're good. Yeah. And the recklessness can be good. Um, but uh, this is going to be a little, this little, little tough here for... For Ewok, I think. Yeah, so, so he is a check, though. So that is that's something. That is something. It of course um, makes it a little bit more um, closer. Mammon obviously forging there just has the one amber towards his third key. Um, obviously, we haven't been able to see really Mammon's hand, so we don't know what he quite has. But we do know he just picked well, up the BR, BR Geist. Yeah. Um, so here we go. It looks like he's gonna go Geistoid. I would assume, of course, because of that. Junk Restoration, such a good card. So he's got to discard two. And it looks like, it looks like Mammon might decide to to discard the uh, Memorialize the Fallen himself, knowing that obviously at the end of this turn, you know Ewok will forge a key, but doesn't have any Amber to really burn after that. Right, and he and when he's pushing for third key, and your opponent's trying to catch up, Memorializes often not going to be the right move mm -hmm. unless unless your opponent has a huge discard pile and you don't but right now they have very similar discard pile sizes yeah it's checking for haunted doesn't appear to be quite there yet and well he might be at nine in which case this would put him at ten with that discard Looks like not. He might now be a ten, maybe. Uh, seems like he is. I mean, I don't know what I'm really expecting when uh, it's just late. Little bombs. Just considering what to take out. From what you've seen, what do you, what would you think you'd grab here? Um. I would take out something to continue to put pressure. I might take the. 
Is that a blunder bore? I think I'm, I might consider the blunder bore. I've already got the brick nasty, um, and the, my opponent's brick nasty. Blunder bore to, to um, remove my opponent's ember. My opponent has to come back, right? Um, so they're gonna need to burst for a lot of ember. Um, I would, I think that's the one that gives your opponent the most challenges. Now he looks like he's going, so there's a, so there is an argument for the Awakened Titan. Oh, I missed the two discard pips. Okay, so that, okay. Okay, so the two discard pips means, hey, I can cycle my hand. It's not gonna ready, I don't think, because he's only at nine. So, so that was part of the reason I dismissed the uh, Awakened Titan. But the two discards means draw more cards and you, you create a taunt situation. Oh, is he at? Um, maybe he w Okay. I think he might. All right. I don't know if that was or wasn't correct, but uh, I, I had thought he was at nine there, but, but I mean, I could be wrong. Um, but with the two discard pips, uh, even without reading him, I, I think that's a, a very very doable choice. Yeah, I mean, he did get to draw up a full six hand um, at the end of that turn, so you know, potentially getting himself towards what he's looking for right now at four amber. Ewok, of course, did get to forge there, so of course now Ewok has that one key. So I'm thinking the dice that Ewok has there is how many cards are in the discard, so if he's at five, he's got to do something interesting to get there. Now, he, does he have a UFO? I feel like he's got UFO. He, he does, does have a UFO, so he could, in Mars, suddenly get himself uh, haunted in that in that manner. So it looks like uh, because of the discard pips uh, resolving, that's what put him in haunted. Okay. So thank you, yeah. thank you, Devo, for uh, for that. And Fifth Planet, thank you so much uh, for the love there. Um, we obviously are enjoying bringing this to you guys, and I hope you guys are all enjoying it, all of you guys that are lurking and chatting. Hold on one second. So our uh, judge just came in um, and told us that in the other semifinals match, uh, Vargast has actually moved to the finals. Oh, wow. So uh, he's made the finals of two of our tournaments this wow. weekend. Wow. It's the weekend of Vargast. Yeah, you did say that earlier. So, <laughs> yeah, so congratulations to Vargast. And, of course, mm -hmm. we'll see which one of these will be the one that challenges him uh, for the, the title. Yeah. So there's the third card that goes under Cauldron. So now each card is going to get played one by one. Um, and I pointed out on Friday, but it is something important. Of course, there was the um, clarifying errata that did happen with Cauldron, um, which made it, if it's three or more cards that go under it, um, get played. Because there were situations where there could be a fourth card put under there, and as written, it would not have triggered. Um, so it is important to know that as, uh, as the season unfolds. Yeah, you may be asking yourself, how does that happen? Well, they, they had mentioned uh, stealth mode is one way if you can't play actions and then the cards go back to where they came from. Um, but there's, I think there's a couple others as well. Yes, yes. And I will tell you, of course, uh, I do not know all those, but of course the, the people who help with the, ch the rules and the clarifying, they, yeah. they're the ones who pointed it all out. Yep. trying to decide if it's um, worth fighting or not here. I think the answer is no, right? Because you want to keep that key cost up. Just running four points of damage into Awaken Titan doesn't doesn't really help Ewok, so I think that was the right the right call there. the recklessness we're gonna see what we hit here oh we hit the other recklessness yeah it does take away the uh, security detail so that is a ember control piece and uh ewok is up into check so that that could have been uh that could have been very useful for getting yeah, ewok sorry, back weird. into good position all right 
so is he he is haunted so the double haunting witch is now live so man did not deal with the double haunting witch and uh now okay so we got ufo so we could get a creature here we could get value from those double haunting witches what i've been this is what i've been going for uh it's something oh <laughs> yeah. there's the pasture yeah grove. It, it must have been something yeah. insane. that was like, the pasture grove that, that's saying. the card we were referring to before the wild the, the crazy one then okay plague wind interesting so that is not i don't think what you walk wanted to see because the plague wind kills his haunting witches the plague wind kills um, doesn't kill any of his opponent's creatures, so I think I think he's going to discard it. <clears throat> so plays out that shot collar. Discard. Does have to discard a card. Yeah, he's trying to decide if he wants to hold onto the jark. He, yes, he wants to hold onto the jark, so he discards the plague wind. And um, and he's a check at eight. So this is, you know, they talk about, you know, always kill the witch, right? <laughs> and uh, here's a little bit of why, right? Like Mammon felt he had a lot of time uh, and uh, uh, potentially thought he had time, mm -hmm. right? But also at the same time, he, you know, made some real good plays, good turns, didn't prioritize the witches. I don't know that he had a perfect way to take care of them, but now uh, this is the fuel that Ewok is using to get back in the game. So we're at a point right now, though, uh, Mammon being with uh, four Amber. Obviously, Ewok needs um, is going to forge uh, next next turn. Um, Mammon obviously is threatening his third key. So the cost is nine right now, and that's what I was going to say. Yeah, it's like, what would yeah. you do if you're on the side of Mammon? Um, so I can't see his hand, but I would um, if I can take care of Ewok's board. Right, if I can disable the burst. Here we go. Okay, so this is going to take take out... Um, yeah, so disable the burst. Put... Yeah, you got to take out... Yep, take out that jammer pack and the haunting witch. Oh, I'm putting your own discard. Oh, yeah, it is. That is his own, yes. Oh, um, that's the one that you don't want to put in there, the shot yeah, collar. <laughs> I knew there was some upgrade out there that I... <laughs> And then get back his own talent scout. Yep, that was the that was the I think that was the optimal play there. So now cost is six, so he is at check. Now he he knows that Ewok has the spooky charge, mm -hmm. and um, I don't I don't know if we saw it go into the discard pile after the reshuffle. So I can't actually remember where. It, it currently is so I think it's in the deck. Yeah, Mammon's, but Mammon doesn't know that it's not in Jr's hand, right? So Correct. he's gotta he's gotta be concerned <clears throat> that he's gonna be able to get there. Now he just burned the two haunting witches, which is his biggest way to burst. He also we also know that he has the circle, uh, the what call it, the circle of life. But Mammon's also haunted, so Jared doesn't want to use that. Oh, oh. Yeah, no way to do it. No way yep. to take them off. No way to do it. There you um, go. Great, great game from both of them. But obviously, Mammon yeah. there at the end doing just enough to, uh, to burst the field, get the key cost back down, get back into check. And then, as you said, the, the, just the hand was not on Ewok's side there. Right. right. That, was, that was a great game. See, this is part of the reason I love Keyforge. You can see... You can see the swings. You can see things go back and forth. And even though Ewok wasn't able to come all the way back here, you can you can see how, uh, hey, there's totally decks, there's totally game states where that could totally happen. And in a sealed environment, you don't know what your opponent has. And so mm -hmm. you're worrying about, oh, do they have this? Do they have that? How do I, you know, um, uh, hey, if you're just thinking about, hey, what cards are in set, what could he do to, to, to come back? And um, it's it's exciting. It's exciting to be in that uh, at that top table or, or you know the quarterfinal and uh, um, work to uh, um, you know just play your heart out and try to get that win. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, I just uh, even though he his uh, journey in sealed ends now, a big shout out to Ewok making the finals of Archon and obviously the semifinals here of sealed. Um, a very strong showing again this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and and Mammon uh, putting in work here. Oh, yeah. You know, that's a great. I'm again. You oh, said yeah. a local, so I'm yes. sure you're pretty happy. You were happy yeah. either way with how things went, but Absolutely. you know. 
it's Absolutely. a it's great to to see that. So of course. Um, Draz, uh, I know you're going to be taking off very shortly, I, I flight um, but I do want to yeah. just ask you overall, yeah. like, how did you feel about the, you know, everything you've seen this yeah. weekend and the matches you've seen? Oh, awesome. I mean, we had so many great players here, and, uh, you know, Grim Reminders is a really fun set, so we just saw Sealed, Grim Reminder Seals, so much fun. Um, Archon, we saw some really powerful new GR decks come out. I was really excited to see what would happen there. And we saw, we saw a lot of Grim Reminders decks. Decks books can pick up, you know, go by now, right? Come in and do well. Um, I was curious to see within GR, what was the meta? What was going to be the balance of some of the cards that we saw that we had been talking about in advance of the event? Um, were we going to see a ton of them in the top, uh, top cut? Were we only going to see a few? Uh, and I would say it's a little mixed, right? So mm -hmm. we saw, a, we, I think we saw three decks with some of the combos we were really expecting to see, and then uh, another four without some of those key ones. If 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 I got all the decks correctly, that might be slightly off. Uh, and then we saw a classic, right? We saw uh, Jacques, Nova play Jacques come back into the, the Archon uh, top eight, uh, but GR was able to take take that down. Alliance, I was uh, happy to see that the field was as diverse as it was from a set perspective. Um, you know, I think in, you know, in Archon, you unsurprisingly, hey, strong set, new set, people want to play that and, yep. and try it. It was cool to see so many people in Alliance trying to play counter GR, uh, which I thought was, was really interesting. You saw less of that in, in Archon. So a little bit different thing you saw in each tournament. Great players uh, across the board. Lots of, lots of good times. I had a blast. Uh, even if even if I didn't make a top table myself, uh, I'll be coming to a lot more of these. Well, you made a top table. You made the commentator's table. There you so go. There it you go. the top right. list of tables. Exactly. <laughs> All right. But everybody, thank you so much for that. Yeah. Again, we will be coming back with the finals for Sealed. So don't go anywhere. But Draz, have a safe travel back. Everyone Thanks, else, Thanks, make sure you got your water because we're going to have some great matches here. And we'll be right back after this.
right, everybody, we are here for the finals of Sealed at Vault Tour Roseville. And joining me now is Gorlami. Gorlami, thank you so much for joining me on this. Thank you for having me. Obviously, um, a strong, strong player. So I am going to be leaning on you to help with, uh, you know, telling us a little bit about what's going on on the table. But just in general, I got to ask you, you know, you've been obviously seeing all these players and how they've been playing. How do you think the, the level of competition has been across this weekend? This is big. I mean, the every single player here is probably able to get to these top tables. And Vargast, we've seen him twice now, so he's been real hot uh, the entire weekend. So um, I, I hope Mammon can kind of take him off his hot streak here <laughs> to see if he can come back because, uh, yeah, Vargas is running hot. Yeah, I yeah. think it's it's looking like his weekend, and if he takes this next one. That's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, Trascor had did say this is the weekend of Argas. Yeah. I mean, making the really uh, winning is. winning uh, alliance, mm -hmm. making top four of Archon, and now at the final table of Sealed as well. Yeah. Um, but we did just watch uh, Mammon on stream um, in the the last game. Played a really strong match against uh, Ewok, um, and obviously pulled it off in the end to make this table. So it'll be interesting. We've seen both of these decks on stream. Um, you know uh, Vargas fairly well yes. um, talk about the kind of player that he is and how he kind of looks at uh, you know his decks and how he wants to play yeah I, I mean he's very calculated uh, I it's been a while since I played with him in person and boy <laughs> he thinks through his turns a lot and yeah he really thinks about everything he's making sure to look at your Archon deck and see what his options are what your options are and what yeah at the end of the day what is going to affect him most um, going into those, those next few turns. So. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. And I want to just also give a shout out real quick. Uh, you know, they say that you, they're asking what your shirt says. What's your cool shirt say there? <laughs> it says Reap Out. So, <laughs> um, it's been a Reap Out team weekend. So, and uh, Vargas, June, congratulations to both of them for taking Alliance and Archon. And I mean, uh, crazy enough, Vargas is again, maybe being able to take the third tournament down for rebounds. So, yeah, uh, should be an exciting one. Yeah, I definitely wanted to give the shout out there because, as you said, uh, you know, it has been a team rebound weekend um, over here and, you know, a lot of strong performances and obviously a lot of strong players we've seen in the past and obviously here currently. Um, but obviously, things are getting going here for this match. Uh, with Mammon going Geistoid early, uh, using his Junk Restoration. We're going to see a lot of uh, those that did not catch the last matchup. Uh, Mammon is running a single Archon deck, and his deck has a lot of discard pips, actually 10 discard pips across the deck. Um, so we're going to see a lot of discarding um, across the board. So we'll see what he uses and how he plans to um, utilize that across the, the match um, in, in Vargas. I don't recall exactly what um, he is bringing to the table, but I do know, of course, he's got the beefy giants there. Mm -hmm. um, in Bromnar that uh, makes things uh, obviously a little difficult to clear that to board unless you got something kind of board wipe. Yeah, and he, Vargas just played a Memorialize of the Fallen after Mammon gained about three Amber there, and with the amount of discard he had that last turn, he had three creatures, so um, all that Amber got burned. Yeah, yeah, and that's actually something we saw, um, you know, in the previous matchup with uh, Vargast against um, SC Steel on stream. Um, you know, really using that Memorialize the Fallen at the correct time just really started to, um, you know, make it to where towards the later stages she didn't have an answer to, to get enough Amber. Ooh, recklessness going to ruin someone's day. Oh my, there's a talent scout in there. Yeah. Yeah, we actually saw a really nice. Card. We saw a really nice combo actually last time um, with uh, Mammon, where he has a BR Geist with a discard pip, and he put the Talent Scout in in the so discard and then play Talent Scout Geistoid. out of it. That's so cool. I love those interactions here. Um, I've seen a lot of people doing uh, boo on their opponents so that they could. Be our guys something in their discards. Ooh. So, always really nice. You don't have the answers. My opponent might. Let me take theirs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So the recklessness hitting some okay cards. Uh, tendrils under pressure, and I forget the last card. 
but um, not too bad for, for Vargast here. And overall, the recklessness was really good for um, for Mammon to clear out. I don't think he got more Brobnar cards, so that's the only unfortunate part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can... Vargas is doing the friendly caster favor, showing us a little bit of what he's got in his yeah. hand. And I see that, obviously, he's not in Geistoid right now, but he does have that Winds of Death in his hand. Um, so, of course, that is something to keep in mind. He has it in hand. He can use it whenever he wants to. Oop, drops a card right there. <laughs> he was giving us such a favor, he wanted to give Mammon a favor. <laughs> and I think... I think uh, uh, Mammon and Vargas are friends, so they they they, they play with each other, um, and so they yeah. I'm pretty sure this is a nice and a little bit more relaxing game than I, I think a finals would be um, for them. I mean, probably still a lot of pressure, but a little bit a little bit less. Always a little bit of pressure, especially knowing that this qualifies you for the World Championship, um, and of course, you know. Vargas has already gotten the Vault Warrior <laughs> title, but could get Vault Warrior, you know, as well. Yeah, exactly. Which I think he would prefer. <laughs> <laughs> he was not going into this weekend thinking he was going to win Alliance because he borrowed a deck from me and played it for the first time on Saturday. So. Yeah, we were. Uh, you were talking about that, obviously off stream yeah. about that, um, and uh, you know, Vargas able to deliver with it. Yeah able to handle and pilot it well so I mean that goes to show too like he's piloting this well and sealed and um, doesn't you know can assess a deck and uh, not have too many reps with it and take it take it to the finals yeah so um, man in there playing the return to rubble um, and for newer players can you tell, talk about what that card does so return to rubble um, it destroys all creatures on the board um, as long as you're able to put 10 cards from your discard pile back into the deck. So if you don't, then um, that, tr you that trigger fails. So uh, he was able to wipe the board there. Uh, Vargas building a pretty sizable Brodnar board. Uh, so that came just in time for Mammon to... And even better, I would say, there was a lot of really good guys third cards in his those first ten, top 10 cards of the discard pile so he got back i think double ru junk restoration one of his booze his br geist so um we're gonna see those cards again um, yeah a, a big big turn there um i'm gonna let you gorlami hold the fork just for a little bit it's got to do some ghost galaxy things for here a quick second good. but we'll be right back um gorlami's got it all right okay so I think it's going over to Vargast here, and I don't, sorry, I don't have like visibility to chat, so if you guys are telling me anything, uh, I, I can't see it, <laughs> um, so I apologize for that, but going into, he's going unfathomable, looks like he's putting a weak link on his own creature, I wonder if there's any other card that kind of provides a little bit of support there, I think weak link is on the other side, so probably not. Um, Crushing Deep, going to discard a card, get some a little bit of efficiency here. Hmm. Thinking about what he wants to discard, I assume he has recklessness in hand. I hope he doesn't discard that. Um, I don't think he will. Maybe checking to see if he's haunted for another effect. And I think I just noticed that, yeah, he... Ooh, he did discard the recklessness. Wow. Okay. Doesn't value the recklessness. Maybe there is something else that is a lot more important at the moment. Um, all right, gets rid of the lifting buddy with the, uh, I think that's a dirge of the deep. Uh, discard the bottom card of the deck and exhaust all creatures of that house. Vargas drawing up to six for a total of five cards drawn. Um, very nice turn for him. All right, haunted house goes off at the beginning of the turn. He, Mammon is now haunted. Gains an amber off that immediately, just in case. 
Oh, I like to see that transitory philosopher with two artifacts on the other side. That is some heavy steel. So um, I do think we'll see that be a priority to be taken care of. Um, that can really add up over time. So. Alright, going over to Vargast, I see some spicy cards. He's holding Guy's Toyd. Is Guy's Toyd the move here? Gives him over the Infiltrator. Alright, but he has Winds of Death in hand. Is he going to play it? I mean, probably a good decision here with the return to Rubble putting so much into Mammon DG's deck, there's probably not that many creatures in there. So we see a total of five. And on Vargas' side, we see four total so far. Yep, so only four. Three Brobnar creatures and an Albia Stray. I think that seems good overall um, for, um, he probably came out a little bit on top there. That, like I said, that philosopher definitely needs to be taken care of. Stealing two is, is huge, so uh, getting rid of that is really nice. Ah, the animating force, and now he can, <laughs> well, I guess he would have had Omni no matter what with the haunted house, but it's a versatile creature. He can. He can reap an Omni with it, so he'll always be gaining one even if he's not haunted. Um, that's pretty funny. I like that. Okay, ending the ending the turn at four and going up, going back up to six, drawing three cards. Mammon dr does forge his key. Oh. <laughs> Mammon immediately just chucks the memorial as the fallen enemies. <laughs> so, to Ambergon, knowing that he has a few creatures, the Winds of Death actually brought that down a little bit. Um, otherwise, he would have lost all four. But I'll take that too. Uh, I think that's that's real good. So, get the value while you can. Um, and he's got a nice Brobnar hand coming in here. That looks real, real good. And a discard pip. Getting rid of the touchstone, I would say? Maybe? Ooh, okay, gets rid of the Aquadon. Yeah, I guess he went Aquadon last turn, maybe. Uh, not gonna go into it right away um, in the next few turns, so. Probably the right discard there. All right, I see the stream is safe. The computer hasn't exploded. Gorlami's been holding down thank the fort, so thankfully, thank you so much for yeah. that. Thankfully, I didn't drop your water bottle all over the stream um, <laughs> and short circuit everything. So it's going okay. I, I'm 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 able to keep my composure here. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so while you were gone, Mammon was able to forge his key. Uh, we saw winds of death. Vargas uh, archiving four and Mammon archiving five. But it did get rid of some pesky creatures that I think Vargast was prioritizing that he needed to destroy that turn. Mm. So uh, they're pretty pretty equal footing. Um, one Amber to two for, and both have one keys. And Vargast looks like he has a pretty spicy turn. I think he's thinking it over. Uh, probably, yeah, gonna think through this turn a little bit He's got plenty of Brobnar creatures in his archive. I wonder if he's going to play Brobnar or... Yeah, it kind of looks like it. We yeah. do call yeah. it. He's going Brobnar. It, it's looking good. I mean, he's got three creatures. He's got, he's got four creatures. And he's got a smith. Maybe trying to get rid of this Blunderbore because that will hurt. And funny enough, both of them have Soul Bomb. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of just Soul Bomb going off, dealing four damage to everything. Um, 
Who Shockcutter with a hammer pip, able to fight. I assume he'll take out that blunderbore. Yep, and there it is. Yeah, there it is. And uh, I think that's two. Is that two splash? Yeah. I know the other card. That's how you put it in. Two splash. Nice. And don't worry, one star peeps and Nick. I will hydrate, uh, but just like I did the last time, I left my water bottle out there. So <laughs> post this match, I'll uh, I'll grab the water bottle and, and get some water in here. <laughs> Chat's doing a great job trying to make sure I stay hydrated That's as good. we uh, yeah, as we should, get through this. You should get a uh, a hydrate um, uh, just uh, is it an emoji or something so everybody can just spam hydrate. <laughs> All right, and uses the other shock quarter to kill off the Ornar after the two splash attacks. So perfect in terms of the amount of uh, damage needed to get rid of it. And he does have the Smith, so this will put him over the top, um, giving him three total amber and putting him at seven. And a really great turn there yeah. from Vargas. That was a nice burst going from two to seven, so total of five amber that turn. And I think he has one more card. He's contemplating wanting to play or not. And he does. <laughs> All right. Ends the turn there. And only drawing one card, but a great turn there for, for him. And, and threatening that second yeah, key. Threatening that second key. And on Mam on DG's side, that soul bomb's looking spicy. Yeah. I mean, you got to get rid of some of these creatures. And it there looks it like is. there it is. Yeah. Yep. Get him off the board. <laughs> and Thunderdell living with one health, fighting for his life. And and doing uh, as typical uh, veteran players. It looks like he was trying to decide uh, which order which did he order? want to put it in yes. the discard pile, which is always a very kind gesture um, to do, um, mm -hmm. especially here at the top table. Yeah. And much more important in, in GR, so. Yes. Ooh, ooh, that Spontaneous Awakenings actually might be really good here. Um, maybe taking that Iron Obelisk for himself. I know that Iron Obelisk is so good in, in Brobnar, this, this set. Um, so many big creatures. It, putting that key cost up even by one or two can be absolutely just insane for for the other player like uh paying eight for an, for a key can can just change the entire the entire game yeah and i will say again just for our newer players can you explain the that um that card for them so that they understand what's going on with it right right uh so iron obelisk is a artifact and its effect is that uh for any brobnar creature that has a uh, damage on it the opponent's keys cost plus one so um, for right now, if the Iron Obelisk was on the on Vargas side, his Thunderdell is damaged, so his uh, Mammon DG keys would cost seven. Um, and since Mammon has Brobnar, this is perfect for him. Stealing it is really, really good. Uh, now Vargas doesn't get the benefit of it, and he might, yeah, it might be real, real bad for him later. Yeah, for sure, and and especially if uh, Vargas doesn't have artifact control, mm -hmm. um, because of course then he doesn't really have a way to get it back on his side. Right. Yep, and I think the artifact control is gone. That animating force. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I think that's his way of getting it back. So he needs to get he needs to uh, flip his deck in order to get that. So that's probably staying on Mammon's side for quite a while. Ooh, a singing scythe coming onto the touchstone. So. Singing Scythe is really interesting. You can always get it back um, during any point in your turn from the discard pile. So, And when you reap, you're able to, I believe, purge a card from the discard pile. So um, very nice to get rid of some of those pesky cards that have hit the discard and you don't want to see again. Yeah, yeah. It makes your deck more efficient. And that's, of course, some of the, you know, some of the things that you want to do in Keyforge is how can I make my deck efficient Obviously, you don't have deck building, so sometimes yeah. you have cards in your deck that's not really what you'd like. So it's like, let's just get out of it, and then I can cycle to my, my more important cards faster. Yeah. Play the good cards. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, Dragnet. Okay, so um, that'll slow him down a little bit. Dragnet definitely causing a lot of disruption um, in terms of 
I would assume Mamma probably doesn't want to go back into Geist Toid next turn, so um, putting that extra card in his hand will probably slow him down for at least for at least a turn. Mm -hmm. Vargas looking through his discard pile. I wonder what he's he's thinking about. I did see another dragon in his hand, and that's not the most ideal thing because he doesn't want to bounce his own, and you have to bounce creatures. Okay. Um, so um, that'll be chaining himself. So. Yeah, and it's one of those things where, uh, again, I know in a lot of card games it's like this, but very much in Key Forge, uh, you the the text is so important, mm -hmm. and so if it doesn't say may um you, you know you it. have to do it yeah. and that'll that'll really hurt you if you don't if, if you don't read that correctly and you think it's a may Ooh, hey he is doing it to himself i think he so he values the amber a little bit more or is dragnet is dragnet only for the creatures that share a house I think I might be thinking of tendrils. So it looked like he picked up uh, the card there and then just was like, I'm going to play it anyways, right. and so just put it right back Correct. down. So it might be creatures that share a house with it. Um, I might be thinking of Trenzels from Beyond, uh, which is slightly different. It's when you're haunted, you return to all creatures and its neighbors next to it. So, yeah, I think Dragnet is when only when it shares a house. So in that situation, yes, you return the Memleach and you just play it again So and gain the Amber for it. There you go. And so it looked like, of course, uh, Vargas passed turn. So now we're looking at Mammon. Um, so in this situation, with how things are going, it looks like he's going Brabnar. How do you? What do you think would be the approach you'd be going for in this situation? So he, Mammon definitely needs some board presence here. Um, Vargas, I feel like, has controlled the board for most of the game, and he needs these beefy Brabnar creatures to come out. I think he picked up his archive um, since the Awakening Titan was in there. So mm -hmm. um, he's looking to get a little bit more on the board and hoping that Vargas does not have an answer right now. Yeah, and there's in just those alone, you know, the three discard pips I was talking about mm -hmm. earlier. He has 10 discard pips. There's three of them right there. Very efficient. So that means he has one more card in hand. No, wait. Yeah, he should have one more card. Yeah, there you go. It's lifting, buddy. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, beef up that blender boar. And this is where the obelisk is coming into play. Yes, um, already yes, has some damage is. on the blender boar, so, mm -hmm. of course, key costs now at seven. Ooh, and playing that smith for Amber, he's doing it right back to him. So Mammon going at going to seven now yeah now he's at check on his second key yes. and so we'll see we'll see what Vargas answers with yeah, it's a pretty tight race here uh, if Vargas is not able to stop the key here I think these last few turns are going to be real crucial going into um, that race for the third key yeah, we are nearing uh, the 22-minute mark of this match, uh, uh, over halfway done mm -hmm. um, at this point. And obviously, this is not one of those uh, slow ones. They both are... are They're playing know, pretty quick. Pretty quickly. Say. Yeah. Oh, I see Winds of Death. Okay, they're in here somewhere. What's he doing for Smith? Ooh, okay, so he's trying to set up for um, the Brobnar play after Winds of Death. So he's going to just spew out a bunch of Brobnar creatures um, after his Winds of Death, and he'll be able to play Smith and go up real high. Yep, and there's, there's there it the... Is. But this is always also going to be Mammon. He has a lot of creatures in the discard pile. Yeah, it's quite a bit, especially because of all those discard pips. You yeah, know, he's, he's, sure he's had quite a bit of them. Uh, he's got a lot of Brobnar too. Uh, yeah, look at all that. Yeah, that was a big, big one there. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, Mammon archiving more than Vargas, and I think that's the second time this, that's happened this game. So.
but getting rid of that big brown art board, that definitely would have been scary to keep up. So um, I don't disagree with getting rid of that. Oh, I did not draw in the last turn. Ooh. I haven't discarded anything. So he played Albia Stray. I wonder if he is haunted. If the key... Uh, we, we've seen some of the players forget to flip their, their checks that they have on the table. Right now, it still says that it's uh, that Vargast is haunted. Yeah, after the Winds of Death, I'm not sure if too many cards got archived. And I think that's what he's like checking right now. And so it looks like, you know, he is still haunted even with, uh, even yeah. with that. It looks like it. That's one of those hard things. That, that's, that's, hit, that's bit me um, many games now. I'm like, Winds of Death. I play it. I'm like, wait, I'm not haunted anymore. Damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's where, you know, talking about Keyforge, just sometimes it's it's so important on the timing mm -hmm. of when you decide to play cards because, as you said, it's like sometimes you're like, yes, this is when I want to play it. However, it now throws off the timing of your next card. Yeah, ordering things is very important, and that's why he did in here somewhere first um, to, tr to make sure that he was haunted. Because if he went to death, he might have not been haunted. I'm assuming that's why he was counting the, his discard pile prior. Um, so the in here somewhere could archive cards, and then he wins of death, and then that wins of death would be in this card, and I'll be straight will still be on mine. So, yeah. Um, I'm, I assume that's how he ordered it. So very good by him. Ooh, when we see an out negotiate, I didn't. What's going under the, the deck? Ha, under pressure. Fantastic. Fargas does not want to see that, and he's making him see it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, and I love Talon Scout. I'm gonna let you look at it first. It's so good. Um, maybe too good, but it's, it's great. Yeah, I think it's a very well designed card. Um, it can be feels bad sometimes, but uh, I think it's really, really good, and it provides that uh, that little bit of disruption um, in, in Equidon that I think is needed. Yeah, and unfortunately, we're not getting to see exactly what's, uh, you know, Mammon yeah, is looking what, at and thinking. What, what is he choosing? Oh, he, he took another I'll be a straight. <laughs> <laughs> right. That is good. He's taking some of his Amber Control, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's a freelancer? Enhance. Oh. No. <laughs> this is always the tough thing when you, uh, when it's an upgrade and it gets played underneath. Yeah. We can't, we can't bank on the, uh, the card art that helps. <laughs> I think it's a freelancer. It's, it's pretty, um, I think there's another upgrade that in Equidon that's, um, that also does something similar. Oh wait, what is it? I, I, win, I missed uh, it. Win. Still can't see it. <laughs> so, shuffle. Ooh. It, it looks like it's the <laughs> Phobivore. Phobivore, okay, yes, that looks correct. What does that card do? Uh, so that card is, this creature gains while you are haunted, this creature cannot be used. Ooh, that is nice. Definitely. And I think that's part of why he put it, you know, he used it that last, at that point. Forces uh, um, Vargas to try to figure out something for it. Right. And then, okay, and he had a generous offer here, so he's getting rid of that creature. He drew a card, so he had to flip. Um, but that puts Mammon on check. That was a great turn. Yeah. Um, and it looks like the Fovor was played, but he wanted to take it back um, and do it in a different sequence, which Vargas allowed him to. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, for the most part, I think that's probably, like, not going to be a big deal. Yeah, it's one of those things where, as a you know, at the top table, it's always a yeah. player's choice if player's you're going to allow that. Yeah. And you did say earlier that these two know each other, so, so there's probably, again, going back to what you said, a little bit calmer in a sense yeah, of a final. Casual, and you're like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Like, and yeah, I mean, it's it's looking really good for Mammon here. This this he had that that this Equidon in turn has been quite a swing. So 
that talent scout, that out negotiate, that generous offer, the full reward. He played quite a bit of cards and gained, um, I think, what was that? One, two, three, four, at least six at a minimum. So let's see if Vargast has an answer. Don't see it. Don't see it in his hand so far, but. And the crazy part is, is that Mammon did shut down his Albia Stray, mm -hmm. so he cannot use it because he is haunted. Because that would have been his one way to take him off check. Yeah. Use a, a very key timing of using that card. Mm -hmm. And as you said, he took he took the other Albia Stray from Vargas. So, so he wouldn't be able to do it this turn. Yeah. All right. Okay, so he has Hollow's Eve. So that is an answer. There there it is. Okay, so um, taking him off a check. So capturing onto... Ooh, okay, so the Touchstone can reap and draw two cards... So then, Farkas is not haunted because you resolve it while you are haunted, and then I'll be a stray can be used. Yeah, that's actually really good. G really good to, to process, but also as a as a thought window. Right. And Talon, uh, I'm gonna point out again, Talon Scout is so good here because he has, I think. They share two houses, so a talent scout taking a creature is, for the most part, going to be something that Vargas can use, or sorry, that Mammon can use on his turn the next turn. Or even if he had, yeah, like played it out of Geistoid with BR Geist, he would have taken that I'll be astray and been able to reap with it immediately. Mm -hmm. All right, and here's the touchstone. So he's able to reap, draw two cards, become unhaunted, and... Those two cards might be pretty crucial. If you can put them to six, um, Mammon needs to respond. So there's going to be a lot of back and forth here in the next. These next few turns are, are pretty crucial. It's coming down to uh, these last few turns here. Yeah, and I and I will say, I mean, they've been playing pretty quick, but things have started to slow down a little mm -hmm. bit. Of course, now we're getting to that point where, you know, both are trying to force to that third that third key, yeah. but both are doing a great job answering each other yeah, and, and preventing that from happening. It's like one one, two one, like just fighting back and forth for that one or two ambers that's taking them off off check. And so, of course, at the moment, um, Vargas has not flipped his uh, Haunted Indicator, but of course we do know, since there's nothing in his discard, he is not haunted at the yeah. moment. And those are awesome, by the way. Yes, that is a, a shout-out again to um, our judge, Marcus, who made those at Keyforge Celebration 2023 um, as an um, extra item to get yeah. when uh, we were doing the preview for Group Reminders. They are awesome. Ooh, okay, so he is booing? Is he choosing? Is he going to choose himself? If he chooses himself, he's already used Albia Stray, so he doesn't need to worry about not being able to use it. Right, but I'm wondering if he values it for next turn. Oh, you know, he decided to opt yeah. for Mammon. He opted for and Mammon. there's a BR guys. There was... Two Junk Restorations. The Smith is gone. The Security Detail. The Out Negotiate. Ooh, some real nice Amber Control that could have helped him uh, maybe in the later turns if he's able to stop him here All right, and I believe those cards to the left uh, is his hand and the ones of course that are on Mammon's deck are his archives so he was looking at his archives trying to decide does he want to pick it up um, I did not see what he's had archived in the past so it will be interesting to see if that is what he potentially does because right now of course uh, Vargas sitting at six amber. Mm -hmm. It was off the winds of death, so this iron obelisk might come into play. I wonder if he can damage his his Brobnark features and put him just over that six 
uh, six for the key. So, because Vargas is threatening check, so he needs to stop him. Oh, wait a minute. That historian Lee Darkin is actually great. <laughs> the out negotiate coming out right on top is perfect. So, I wonder if, yeah, let's see, maybe he has an answer in Brobnar. Okay, so is he, he's destroying everything. Fiery Jar coming in and blowing up the entire board. All right, so of course that gets Mammon back on check, but now yeah. he still has to find a way to get Vargas off. Yes, and he memorialized the fallen. Ooh, ooh. Okay, but how? So he at bad. least we know we got three. Yeah, that's or at least two, right? No, because the talent scout goes oh, back no, into discarded. Mammon. He discarded. He discarded. He discarded. He discarded. Oh. They're not, they're not removing Amber, so I'm pretty sure it's a discard. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah that would have been... I feel like that would have been worse for Mammon, so it makes sense. It would, over, it would have only made sense if that was his only way to get rid of... Uh, or to get Vargas stop check. So he has to have something else. Lunderboard coming down. With the discard pip. Yeah, I think he's able to damage one of his Brobnar creatures. Another Blunder Boar. Yeah, there's, there's going to be big bodies everywhere. Oh, and there's the scrap oh, effect. There there's is. the scrap effect there to deal is. the damage. Yep. Yes, putting him at seven now. Onar's skull face saving the day. <laughs> We got a Countryside Crusher allowing him to ready and reap to just make sure that Vargas cannot take him off check. Yeah. Currently sitting at eight. And a recklessness. Ooh, I don't know about that. Does Mammon think he has an answer? Because I wonder if he... If Vargas didn't have the answer and he draws it here, I think he's I think he's probably one playing it for the pip, but two just hoping in a general sense that you like you said is that he does not hit what Mammon is looking for, and at that moment, I mean nothing was a Brobnar, so it's not saying that that's the case, mm -hmm. but there's a chance, of course, that that right. it didn't hit what he was okay. uh, going after. Right. All right. Because I'm thinking about Memorialize the Fallen, because Vargas has it, and that would be his one out. Oh, and the Lifting Buddy. Oh boy. Put it on that Blunder Boy. And I love it. I, I knew the Iron Obelisk was going to come to save the day at some point in this game. And right here was the key point, right at the end. But well, we don't know if it's the end just yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, okay. In clarification. True, true, true. <laughs> right at the end, it seems very important here. Yeah. It, it helped Mammon keep Vargast off check here and, and what seemed like a very crucial uh, state in the game. It definitely was. And again, if if he didn't have that scrap effect to yeah. deal the damage onto his own Brobnar creature, it was it definitely was going to be yeah. third key for Vargast and we're moving into game two. Um, so it was a clutch timing. And of course, now... The, the pressure is on Vargas. What can you do to get uh, Mammon off of check? Because he's currently sitting at nine. Correct. And the crazy part is that 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 scrap effect was facilitated by Vargas's Winds of Death. Yeah. All those Brobnar creatures were in his archive because of the Winds of Death. Yeah. So it'll that allowed for that turn. I mean, I'm sure he might have had other answers, but that was that was big. So, Vargas thinking this over, I'm pretty sure this is like, this is going to be the big, the big swing here. It's either he has memorialized the fallen, or I can't think of anything else right now. But, or 
Are you gonna have a bunch of? Do you have a bunch of Bromar creatures? No, it's tough to say. Tough to say. Margash showing us his hand. Always nice of him. There's a Tangy Mangy. Does that do enough? I don't think so. Nope, yep. that is it. Yeah. All right. So Mammon takes game one here of the sealed finals. Gorlami, that was a, a really impressive match. I yeah. mean, it was very much out from the gate. They were sprinting. Yeah, they were. And then we slowed down for a bit, but it was a nice, grindy fight at the end. What did you feel, or how did you like the matchup, and what did you think overall when you looked at these two decks? I, I mean, it looks pretty evenly matched, honestly. They have... Great board present, both of them fighting back and forth. Um, I think it really came down to just that. I mean, that Iron Hall list was was great. Um, taking it away from Vargas probably slows uh, or puts a dent into his game plan overall. And he wasn't able to see the enemy and he forced back. So uh, to to take it back and prevent that type of situation from happening. So really good match. Uh, I think both of them thought through all of their outs, and yeah, yeah. lots of good stuff there. Yeah, and, and uh, again, that, that last turn, um, really, you did call it, though. Technically, at the end, it came into play. The obelisk came into play. Yep. Um, and so, you know, the, the taking it of er, uh, early on, yeah. you kept saying, at some good. point it's going to yeah. come up, and there it was. So, of course, that is game one. So, Mammon taking game one. Uh, we're going to take a small break before game two. Uh, so, don't go anywhere. We'll have some more action coming from you from the Vault Tour 2024 right here in Roseville, Minnesota. So, be right back. Thank you. 
right, everyone, we are back here for game two of the sealed finals. Uh, because of timing, the players had elected to not take an extended break, and they're going to go right into this game. Um, so we'll be getting things going here very quickly. Uh, but again, uh, Gorlami joining me once again to, to commentate with this. And obviously, everybody is ready. <laughs> Thumbs up. We're ready to go. Timer has started. Uh, that has been, of course, our, our little indicator to help us know about the, the start of the match. Um, so I got to ask, Gorlami, you saw the last match. We obviously saw how things unfolded. Where do you feel right now uh, has the advantage is between the two players outside of, of course, Mammon having that win? I, I, think, I think that things can swing in either direction. The, the matchup seems pretty close. Um, if things had gone just a little differently, I think Vargas could have taken it. Uh, so this game, this game will, if, if Vargas takes it, there's going to be a clear just like, it's, it's a struggle. Like it, anybody, it's anybody's game. There's, um, there's a, just a lot of things that need to go right for both players to, to edge it out, right? Mm -hmm. um, ooh, now this is great for Ledgerman. Uh, usually don't get that much value from that, but that one damage pit bomb in Historian of the Dark and allows him to get that extra amber, so that's awesome. Uh, but I definitely do think uh, I, I like Mammon's deck a lot. Mammon, yeah. Mammon has a lot of amber control, and uh, uh, this disruption, <laughs> the disruption, the talent scout just taking something. Um, I'm sure Vargas is not happy about that. <laughs> yeah, especially this early on. Because yeah. because he kept most he kept his hand. So he didn't mulligan. He was seeing creatures that he he wanted, and he takes the Thunderdell. Yeah, so I think taking the Thunderdell takes his Smith offline. And for uh, newer players, what does Thunderdell do? So Thunderdell is a creature, five power creature, and when uh, while you are haunted, it deals splash attack five. Uh, and why he's important here, and why I'm sh I'm pretty sure Mammon took it, is that. Vargas has Smith, and when uh, Smith is played, if you have more creatures than your opponent, you gain an Amber for the bonus pip, and you gain an additional two Amber uh, because you have more creatures. Mm. Uh, so here, he's not going to be able to gain it, and I assume he's just going to play it for the pip, and that definitely isn't the plan he had in mind, so it's going to hurt. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, again, so early on, um, getting that uh, talent scout out pr definitely threw things into play. Yeah, that was that was a crucial talent scout um, take right there. That would have put Vargas at, what was that, seven going into that next turn. So uh, really good hit by Mammon. And again, I want to thank all of you guys in uh, chat have been here all day, a long day of finals matches. And of course, it's been a long day for Vargas too, <laughs> being in the finals yeah, of uh, final Alliance and being in the uh, top four for Archon and now, of course, the finals of Sealed. Um, so I hope you all are enjoying all the action here uh, because, of course, Vargas is putting on a show as much as he can. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to say... What an insult to injury here to Vargas. Mammon playing his own Smith off of off of his Bromnar creature. So he reaped for two and played Smith, gaining a total of five Amber that turn. Big swing for Mammon. Yeah, and of course already, you know, first key ready to go, second key starting to build up there. Yes, so a uh, really good start for Mammon. It, it's looking really nice. So. Yeah. We'll see how we'll see how he respond, how Vargas responds. Um, hoping he has some answers to try to get rid of this board. This board is, I mean, yeah, gaining two and uh, that Smith just putting him over the top. Real, real nice. Yeah, we we talked about last game coming, both coming out with a sprint. This is another one where we're seeing that sprinting coming out again. Yeah, both of them just gaining a ton of amber. I mean, it's been like what, like two, three turns at this point. Um, so definitely just going real fast <laughs> I 
saying bye to Luke there. Yep, saying bye to uh, a, one of our fellow Ghost Galaxy empl- uh, employees and, of course, a long member of the community, Luke Olson, who is helping out here this weekend. Um. Ooh, okay, playing Dragnet. So he's choosing Brobnar. had chosen Bravnar, he's thinking it over, making sure it's the correct choice. Uh, not quite certain, and again, Mammon letting him take that uh, and make sure that that's what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. And you had talked about it before, that again, this is this is Vargas, you know, typically really thinking through yeah. his turns, trying to make sure everything is, is what he wants to do. And of course, that is going to bounce that back into his yep. hand. Yep. And that's, that's what he... I, I don't think Vargas was aware of that, so unfortunate. I think he was thinking it was going to go to his hand, but he forgot it was his creature. All right, and reaping for two, the talent scout being versatile, allowing him to reap. So versatile, uh, being able to use the creature, um, doesn't matter what house you're picking, it's able to be used at any point in the game. to Historian Lee Darkin. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This actually, does this actually work? Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so we have Nightmare Inducer over on the other side. So it says, pick a, pick a card from the discard pile, put it on the bottom of your opponent's deck, and exhaust all creatures of that house. So Historian Lee Darkin gets exhausted with weak link on, so that makes Mammon's keys cost plus six I believe and that yeah. usually doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard so yeah Vargas fighting that niche situation in sealed uh, to be able to make that work and yeah G pointing out <laughs> saying hey you should be forging and weak link weak links actually online G yeah, yeah, because you said it normally doesn't work, so even even our judge was caught off guard by it. Yep, I would. It never works for me. Well, that's just because you're not bar guys. Uh, yeah, I was kidding. Uh, I mean, this is, that's why I'm not here. That's why I'm not at the top table. Hey, like I told Jurassic but you are at the top table. You're at the commentator's table, so here we go. We're at the best table. Right? <laughs> this is the big kid's table, right? We get to eat the big meals now. Right. Okay, so Mammon has answers. Uh, he has Memorialize the Fallen. I don't know how many creatures are in the discard pile. I think he just checked. So I wonder if it's enough for him to use it. He is discarding it. He Interesting. Dis- so then he used the scrap effect. To kill the Memo Leech. Yeah. And which... He's- yeah, I, I like. I like that. And so he's going to go ahead and just let Vargas forge that first key. Now I wonder, will will Vargas decide to do the same move like he did last turn? And I think that's why Mammon decided to scrap the Ornar Skull Face and take that route. Because Mammon each being able to reap and steal, and then the... Uh, the other infallible creature, I think, Echo Guardian. Echo maybe, Guardian, yep. Would have put him to six, and then he could have Nightmare Inducer it again and made him answer one more time. Mm-hmm. Um, and that would have just been just a really nice turn for Vargas and allowed him to keep some of those key cards in his hand that he has maybe for the next turn. <laughs> Apparently, I uh, when we said bye to Luke uh, in the chat, I gave some people a scare. No, Luke is <laughs> Luke was just going home. <laughs> He's not leaving us. He's been here all day. He's got. Here. Yeah, he's he's been he's been you know his bustling energy. He's he's tired out. He's got a family to go see. <laughs> So he is deciding on Winds of Death. So he's going to boo himself, I, I assume, to try to get that Winds of Death more online for himself. 
Yeah, so there's the boo. Mm -hmm. Now, he hasn't started discarding yet, so maybe he's still trying to decide, he's yeah, which which one he wants to go yeah. down. If he chooses Mammon, I don't think he wins of deaths. And he just did a check of his own discard, mm -hmm. I think, as well, just trying to see, is it, where, is it worth where's it? the best place to use this boo right now? Because there's maybe cards that he doesn't want to discard right now. So, yep. yep, he's choosing himself. Oh, and there's the animating force. Now, it's, of course, no use, but it is, of course, a card that did come into play last time, mm -hmm. could come into play again here. And the Iron Obelisk going away. We won't be seeing that. <laughs> yeah, yep, that's not going to come into play, at least anytime soon. Yeah, not anytime soon. Okay, so he is now haunted. Um, and has a ton of creatures in the discard pile, so I think this Winds of Death is really nice for him here. Um, he's going to discard Snippy. Huh. He kills his historian Lee Darkin. I would have probably... Hmm. <laughs> I'm sure he has his reasoning. Um, <laughs> But getting a ton here, and it looks like Mammon only gets two creatures, so. Yeah, this is, a, this, I think, the this first, is one. this is the first time the that the Winds of Death has done this, yeah. where um, Mammon has not put more, more creatures. creatures archived. Yeah, and that was, I, I think that was a big crucial part of the last game, so uh, it's looking good, looking good for Vargas in terms of what he's being able to set up for those future turns. Um, and Talent Scout going to the discard, so that's all also nice for him. And I'll be astray, just coming out, reaping, reaping once to go to check and capture one. And so because the, the weak link is not there anymore, or, uh, yeah, the weak link is not there anymore, Mammon was able to, to forge. Yep. Um, so we are at even keys. However, of course, uh, Vargast is on check, as you yeah, said. Only for check for second key. So now it's curious of what is what is in play for Mammon. What does he have in hand? We haven't been able to see his hand too much uh, at this moment. Um, but we do know, of course, because of the Winds of Death, uh, he's only had two cards go into archives. Ooh, and a security detail. That's that's good enough. That's going to be that is going to be good to take him off of check. And out negotiate. Going to put the lash out under to steal one, so he's going to go to go to five. Can he? Who does not get to check? Right? No. But still, really, re really good turn for Mammon to take him off of check and burst up quite a bit. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, again, right before then, he was at what two? I think two, two amber, amber yeah, and was amber. facing down a second key being forged mm -hmm. and. You know, if you look at the, in a sense, the swing of things, he generates three amber and moves, you know, uh, Vargas down two amber. Yeah. So that's a five amber swing, yeah. right? Really nice, yeah. Uh, that back and forth happening, like like we've been talking about, um, both decks have good amber control and just can continually just pull back each other from check. And that second key, always really important, because uh, once you're racing for that third, it's it's. Put your put your foot down on 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 that pedal and don't let go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, so it's big Brobnar hand right now that we're looking at from Vargast. Okay, what's he doing here? I think so. I see. I see him memorialized. I memorialized. So yeah, he's gonna use the soul bomb, and that's what I kind of thought he was thinking when he first set, uh, you know, the creature down and then decided mm -hmm. to pick it back Take up. And obviously, up. it seemed like uh, it was allowed in that sense that yeah. I think he was starting to consider the soul bomb. And then of course, it makes sense that they decided that's what he was gonna do. I think it makes sense. Okay. So there's Krim coming out. There's there's gonna be a lot of Brodnar creatures coming out right now. The shock herder with an amber pip, so nice and able to ready, and since there is no creatures to fight, you are able to reap. Going up to seven, 
and I think he might hold on to this Memorialize. Um, no reason to play it, I believe. Um, I don't know if there's any other creatures in his discard we'll pile. I don't think so. So maybe he does just play it. Takes away two. Uh, takes away one from himself. Okay, so he did have the Echo, um, Echo Guardian. So it puts himself at exactly six. Might not be the most ideal situation for Vargast, since Mammon just needs one, um, one piece of Amber Control, but it does take him off of two, and it might be worth it. So. Yeah, and we will we'll have to see how things go. Um, as we said, the obelisk is in um, discard right now, so it's not like uh, you know long term in this sense right now that that's going to come into play. Uh, but building up that that big Brobnar um, battle line, of course, is making things look a little bit more intimidating on Mammon's uh, yeah. end. <laughs> and do I do I foresee a BR Geist? I think that is potentially what Mammon is looking for. Does he have an ans Does Vargast have an answer for Mammon to take? It looks like Mammon is taking, you know, his time really trying to think through what he wants to do here. Yeah. And this is a very crucial point. That second key is very important. It puts you on the back foot if you're not able to stop it. That's usually the big turning point. So. Yeah. And we did just see uh, Vargas kind of show what he has in his, his deck. He currently has only three cards in there. So he's getting pretty close to flipping his deck, um, which, is, of course, then is going to potentially bring in some of those cards yes. that are you know we were right. talking about being in the discard pile. Yep. And he still he didn't pick up his archive, so he still has all those creatures in there. Yeah, um, I think he's he's waiting on to use those uh, until maybe Mammon responds in a different uh, in a different way. So plays getting the, rid of his board control. Plays the future is past. Ooh, both of them are flipping. Okay, so we see a recklessness, a hollow's eve, lash out, and now. Vargast flipping and getting all those cards back. Might be pretty nice for him here. Yeah, and just so that players understand, again, newer players, what does Future is Past do? So Future is Past essentially just ex it, it exchanges your discard pile with your um, with your deck. So you flip over your discard pile, uh, your deck, that becomes your discard pile, and then now your discard pile becomes your deck. Yeah, and I, the reason I ha have you talk about that is because, you know, with seeing that, we just talked about, you know, Vargast about to flip his deck mm -hmm. and get those cards into his hand. Why do you think Mammon might have chosen to do it now versus letting um, Vargast flip his deck and then trying to choose to use it? So I, I think overall Mammon is probably looking at his discard pile and realizing that he wants a lot of those cards that have already been um, used, and he wants to see them again as soon as possible. Um, and the beer Geist. So, yeah, I think he's looking for something specific. There it is. Okay. Yep. So, the Fiery Jark. Uh, that, that is great awareness from, from Men. Uh, so, he, and, and I was thinking about it, right? So, I was, he looked at Vargas side and was looking at you know, maybe what can I be our Geist? And I think he realized there wasn't anything good. So he, future is past allowed him to get options yeah. on his deck. So, cause he didn't, he might not have had those options in his previous discard. Yeah. So. And, and then it shows your knowledge. You very much, you very much called that out very much ahead of time. And gets rid of the Albi Astray with the Mehmet. The Mehmet archives the Hoax Fatality. Not the greatest card to archive off the top of the, off the, top of the discard pile, but a good one, good one nonetheless. So, and clears the board. Gets rid of three creatures. Only leaves a Shock Herder. Um, brand new, brand new board. Just reset, and um, I think that's good. Wasn't able to take him off a check, but 
Mammon valuing getting rid of the board and not allowing Vargas to go Brobner again and just rebound. So uh, I think that was a good turn to take. Yeah, and in a three three powered shock herder is not uh, you know something that's um, scary to do. But when you have the five powers out there, the yep. eight powers, you know things like that. That's when it's like, all right, let's let's try to get those yeah. off the board. And uh, and as you said, while Vargas was able to forge, you know Mammon is right there. He's not able to forge yet, but he's at five amber, mm-hmm. and of course he's potentially setting up a, a future turn, knowing that he needed the board to be cleared pretty much to do that next turn. Right. Yep. Yeah, thinking about his options, um, but that second key was really good for our guest here. Uh, looks like he's going right at, right into Brobnar again. <laughs> so um, he just got rid of Brobnar board, and there is more Brobnar cards coming out. So all right, and just plays two cards. So Reaps with Shock Herder, plays the Thunderdale, plays another Shock Herder, and then Reaps with that one. So uh, going up two and telling telling him I'm gonna go. I don't think that's nearly yeah, and he still Vargas still hasn't picked up his archives, so that's that is something very very important to keep in mind. Yeah, I think I think he doesn't want to. He just wants to play all all the pips in his deck. Um, he has a lot of good good cards um, that have amber pips, and maybe he's just thinking, I don't need these creatures. Ooh, Ledgerman, yes. <laughs> he pulled it off earlier and he does it again. And, and Barrios moved just like I would expect. He's like, well, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it never works. Uh, so that's great. I love to see that. Um, there's so many things that have been working that I don't think you ordinarily see work. So um, it's really nice. And especially in Sealed, like it's kind of, it, it's, it's so cool to see that um, these players are making these types of interactions that I think most players would probably agree don't fire as often, but these guys are making it work. Yeah. Huge burst turn. Yeah, and, and we just saw the, the um, Fobavor getting played mm-hmm. again, and Vargast is haunted, so of course that's going to be important that he put it on uh, uh, that creature there for the, the fact of, like you said, when they're haunted, the splash attack five. Yeah. Can't use it. That means he can't get rid of the Historian Lead Arkin. Ooh, Ooh, crushing deep. That's going to hurt. So, Mammon was at five. He is now at ten total. And he's going to have to pay nine for that key. So, that's going to be an expensive key. Yeah. And that's really going to hurt him. Here we go. Tendrils. Tendrils. Tendrils from beyond. Putting the Historian Lead Arkin or the. He's gonna put the shock herders back in his in his hand. Oh, he's putting the he's putting the shock herder. Dragnet. Give me the other one. Ooh. Okay, putting putting a card under his under his deck. What is he thinking? Give him back card. There you go. Yeah, infiltrator. That's actually what I was thinking. And why, just for the newer players, why would that be a good decision in that regard? So it's, I feel like it's not a creature you want to see ordinarily. Like, sure, it provides you some board control, but it, it takes a turn, and it also potentially gives your opponent an amber, and it's sealed. I would say every every amber counts, and it's really crucial. So um, Mammon probably doesn't want to see that card. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Vargas putting it at the bottom, Forces him to see it again. All right, so there was that expensive, that expensive key. Nine, nine amber for that key. Now Vargas is not at check just yet, not of course, yet. for his third key. So you know, Mammon has some time. Yeah, Mammon needs to play the offensive here and and try to take maybe one or two and try to burst up as much as he can. Um, maybe even try to uh, call check and put Vargast on, on the defensive for next turn. The Historian Lee Dark is coming down. Talent Scout. Talent Scout. And the Talent oh. Scout. <laughs> How many, we're going to see this, this card at least twice every year. <laughs> yeah, it's coming, it's been a, a big factor every time for Mammon, I believe, uh, and yep. here we go again. And he, he 
you put that shock critter back into his hand, I wonder if he ends up taking that. I think that's probably his best option. And he gains an hammer for it. Fights the talent scout. Yep. Bring it back. Play a beer, guys. Play it three times this game. Yeah, because it has to. Yeah, I think Vargas making gestures like, you just take all my cards. <laughs> oh, wait, wait a minute. Yes. Where's where talent scout go? Uh, it looks like the judge is looking at it. Oh, no. Picking a different option? So... Decided not to kill the shock herder instead? Okay. Hmm. I wonder what happened. I'm, I'm curious what happened there, too. Maybe, yeah, Mammon just valued the Brodnar creature a little bit more? So decided to kill that one instead? Well, I guess we'll, we'll maybe we'll find out later. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to ask a little bit after that mm -hmm. to see what what's happening. But of course, uh, turn is passed back over to Vargas, sitting at the five amber. So of course, not enough to forge that third key, uh, but is threatening. And if he gets a big turn off here, then of course, then it really puts the pressure on Mammon. Yep. And he is. I think he's picking up his archive. Yep, he is picking up his archive. And it looks like he has a bunch of guys stood in hand, so I assume that's going to be the play. Um, and Historian Lee Darkin actually threatening some... Yeah, he's it, it's threatening Amber Control. So uh, that security detail you see over that discard pile, Historian Lee Darkin, when he, when he reaps, uh, allows you to take the top card of the discard pile for both players. Um, so being able to security detail and then uh, doing it again with the other historian Lee Darkin is going to allow him to capture six. So definitely needs to get rid of at least one of them, if not both. And uh, just, to, just to give a clarification, it looks like uh, Devin in the chat said that Talent Scout doesn't move until the playability of the card it plays resolves. Ah, okay, so that's why it wasn't in play. All right, that is why, okay. Um, good point so it wasn't in play until uh, shock herder shock herder's effect was over all right and he is going guys toy plays i'll be astray first then booze gains an amber discards himself Gets rid of both winds of death. Ooh, now he's gonna. Sh uh, he's trying to reshuffle. Yeah. Hmm. Like I said, I think he needs to get rid of one of these. One of these historian Lee Darkins. That security detail is important. Start sleeping to destroy. <coughs> yep. Okay, so now Historian Lee Darkin is on the top. So the other one that's on the board will not get the security detail. In here somewhere, taking back Crushing D. So looking for his amber control, making sure that he has options for if Mammon is able to take him off, he's able to respond right back and make sure that he's not forging his key either. Yeah, which is, of course, uh, at this point of the game, uh, probably a really smart play to mm -hmm. do, knowing that he, of course, has the the, the amber the, in the driver's seat at the moment. Yeah, he is in the driver's um, seat. And so it's going to take a... a a big turn for Mammon to even get him to that right. point, but having that that backup just yeah, in case exactly. is great to have. He's thinking ahead because he he knows that it's possible for Mammon, right? Um, that he has the options uh, 
I'm thinking he might be looking at Memorialize the Fallen. I'm not sure if it's in this card, but um, that could be a potential option for Mammon to take uh, Vargast off the key here. So he has that crushing deep just in case if he's able to burst up. Um, yeah, there's the Memorialize the Fallen there right there. Yep, and he plays it. Yep, that's the option. He needs it. How many creatures does he have? Mammon didn't even look. I think that's his only option, but it might be enough. I think Mammon very much, of course, knew on his side. I got, yeah. it's this just is, my this, two, it's fine, but this is, this is now where it's going to be deciding on. Yeah. And I was laughing before, he in here somewhere the weak link. I don't think you would do that in any other game unless you had that, <laughs> in, that Nightmare Inducer. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Five. I think I counted five. Nope, counted. No, mm, there was much more. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was six. I think there was six. I believe he was at nine before then. Okay. So yeah, great memorialize the fallen. But of course, you know, Mammon now obviously no amber, and as we said, is uh, you know Vargas having that crushing deep, having the the weak link, right. uh, is, the weak link. <laughs> is now going to yeah. be interesting. He has his options, right? Like, and that's exactly what he what he was planning for. Mm -hmm. Ooh, he's beefing up the infiltrator. Oh. And bursting up, gaining three amber there. Wow. So even being at zero, zero amber, immediately <laughs> jumps up back five. up to yeah. five. And this is playing out very similar to last game, yeah, right? It, it started off as a yeah. big speed race. We got to the second key, and now it's just you know, toying for position. They are, they are just fighting, slugging it out for that last key, just taking all the amber they can, and then just trying to burst as much as they can. I, and, I mean, unfortunate for Mammon, he wasn't able to get the check. But if he, if he did, then that would be a real bad position for Vargas, since right now he has a little bit more flexibility to go a different, um, any house he wants. Yeah, it doesn't um, necessarily have to go that right. unfathomable. Correct. So we'll see what he chooses. He does have a lot of Unfathomable in hand, so he might just choose to uh, go Unfathomable. Where I wonder if he will is just because of two of them, as we know, are Crushing Deep and um, mm -hmm. Weak Link. So if he's trying to save that, then, of course, his hand, you know, is is not as skewed towards Unfathomable. Of course, he still looks, if we're looking at it, you know, the four, four creatures yeah, there. Yeah, he's got four creatures and... He doesn't have to pick up his archive, so he can wait a little bit um, to to play the crushing deep and only use it when he actually needs it. So, yeah, and of course that uh, that fourth amber there is of course the bonus uh, capture pip. Mm -hmm. Playing an echo guardian to protect it. Playing a memo leech to the right. Tangy Mangy, and yep, leaving his archive. He needs that crushing deep and that weak link for later. Yeah, and so it looks like, of course, uh, I was I was about to point out because of the Echo Guardian. You know, he it went haunted, gets the plus two power as well Ooh. as poison, but now looks like he had to flip, and so now he's not going to have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but it, it does help with the. Uh, uh, the Fobivore is now offline, right? Yes. So that is good. He's playing Return to Rubble, but he has no discard, so unfortunately it does not work. And I think he's... Yeah. I think he's realizing it does not work. Unfortunate. Um, I will say, um, Vargas did not reap with the Talent Scout. He missed it. So that was one extra mm. amber that you could have had. Yeah. Oh, now he plays, Mammon plays an infiltrator of his own. Yep. <laughs> Two infiltrators on the board. Yeah. Because, yeah, I noticed that as soon as Mammon uh, reaped with his infiltrator, I was like, oh, wait, that talent scout's also versatile. But it's one of those things that you really do need to uh, pay attention to because 
I mean, you think about your you're in house in Fathomable, and you're not going. Um, yeah, you, you don't think to reap with any other house. And what did he play? What happened? I'm I'm not quite sure actually. I missed it. Oh no. Wait. Is that game? I think Mammon oh. conceded. I think Mammon conceded for time. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go double check that just real quick. Um, but. Uh, We'll be right back um, for that. So once I get a clarification, we'll, we'll be there. So don't go anywhere. back so we did get confirmation there that uh, Mammon did indeed concede there um, due to timing and move us to game three um, so of course we are tied one to one meaning now of course winner takes all for this uh, this match and you were saying right before when we found that out that it made sense for that that move to happen right right yeah it it, it seemed like he was on the back foot there um, and I think Mammon was just like I I don't win from this situation he just dropped four unfathomable creatures. He's gonna reap next turn. He's gonna draw four cards, potentially gain even more. And he has that crushing deep and that weak link. There's just so many options that Vargas had to close out that game. So I think he just thought it was in his best interest. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, in, of course, knowing that you know you had the third game, mm -hmm. you have a you have a chance, obviously, to to still come back. Yeah makes complete sense to not try to do a Hail Mary. Uh, right. Just move on to the third yeah. game. and Shake it off. Don't, like, yeah, don't bring that, or don't burn that brain power on, on trying to make that comeback if you feel like you're, uh, you're not in it, right? Yep, and there, of course, is the start timing indicator. So, of course, game three, there's the, 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 the big shake. Yeah, because they know it. this is the one, right? And and we were like we were like you were asking me when, right when we started right it's like what do we what did we think about game two and I was thinking it could go either way and it it went in Vargas way so now it's one one and I think we're gonna see more of the same it's just it's a struggle yeah they're gonna go real fast right out the gate and going into that second and third key they're gonna be real they're just gonna be slugging it out for all that amber control that they can squeeze. Yeah, and um, I think I think it's one of those things where just like it was in game one, and in a sense, just like it was game two, it's going to come down to those key cards at the key time because these decks are so evenly matched yep. against each other. Yeah. And uh, obviously, both players are hoping they're the one that gets the key cards <laughs> at the right time. And I'd love to see it, right? That's, that's it. It's been a fantastic series for, for Sealed. Like, um, both of these decks going through a insane field of, of other decks um, that people were able to put together and uh, yeah just really uh, like I said slugging it out in, in, in these games um, so uh, Vargas did decide Mulligan so he is he's going first and at six cards here I believe is that yes yeah kind of correctly um, and starting off with the Covetous Hema okay yeah, not many other great options in his hand, so uh, probably good enough. Bad fold before making an appearance. <laughs> now, of course, right now being played on turn one, not not, not a big deal. Um, you know, we're not 
uh, Vargas not in any concern of being haunted at the moment. But, of course, the longer it stays on the field, the more that, that effect will come into play. Right. And a great, great starting turn for Mammon played, uh, was able to play four cards, discard one, and uh, drew up five cards. So uh, getting almost a brand new hand going into his next turn. And generating three amber. And generating three amber. Yep. Very nice turn. All right. Going to kill the transitory philosopher. He's going to smith for three. Which is fantastic. And does he play the Iron Obelisk? <laughs> yeah, we do. Yes, there is the Obelisk in hand. What well, are yeah, we... he, he's doing exactly. He does. He's not sure. And I'm right there with him. It was such a crucial part of game one. I feel. He's discarding it. Yes. He's discarding it. I think he. Yeah. I think he. I think he kind of learned yeah. in in a sense that. You know, if Mammon takes this, I don't really have too many answers to get it back into my mm -hmm. side. And that's where, from since both of them are using Brobnar, mm -hmm. it becomes so tough if, if Mammon takes it. Yeah. It's so cool to see, though, right? <laughs> I love that he's like, I can't play the Iron Obelisk. It's, it's so much better for you. <laughs> <laughs> and getting a nice recklessness here. He had to discard his talent scout, but... He has beer, guys. It'll be back. Yeah. Three cards. One Ooh. wins a death. Crushing deep. And the other wins a death. Oh, okay. That that might that that that's gonna be setting the pace. That that's was gonna set the pace. That was a really good. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really, really good, good recklessness. And then, of course, the lifting buddy comes out, just makes those, those beefy giants beefier. Those winds of death would be nice now. Yeah. 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 Those yeah. are going to gonna be hard to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, and so he did ready uh, the Awakened Titan there, but, of course, it's not ready. Uh, can't ready yet. Yeah. You're not haunted. You cannot ready. It's the typical thing. End of term. I ready everything, yeah. right? <laughs> Going unfathomable. He has the dragnet, so he can slow down Mammon for a little bit, uh, put the Awakening Titan and the Lifting Buddy back into his hand. So that will be nice. Tangy Mangy coming down. Putting a weak link on his own Shock Herder. Dirge of the Deep. Gonna discard the bottom card. Oh, that is nice. That is nice. I mean, also, it was at the bottom of his deck. Yeah. That was, that was unfortunate for Mammon. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It is one of those things where it's uh, definitely, if, if he was able to have that in his hand right yeah. now, it'd be great because, of course, there's not many creatures on right. the, you know, in the discard pile, but he could get Mammon or uh, Vargas away from his first key. Um, but, yes, it, being at the bottom of the deck. That's just funny to see, right? <laughs> like, you're like, ah, oh, fine, I'll discard the, the bottom card of my deck. And I was like... I was memorialized, like, if I would have been looking for that, I would have never found it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, taking the Infiltrator, giving it over to Vargast. Take it. It's yours. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Oh, ooh, and he has ooh. bold BR guys. I love it. I love it and I hate it at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I want, okay, so this is going to be, is he going to be your guys? Talent Scout. And then is he haunted so you can trigger the soul bomb and then play beer guys to get talent scout back Ooh, that would be quite the play here we go we're gonna find out here's the first <laughs> br guys because i'm pretty sure he's haunted yeah he should be haunted because he's playing beer guys talent scout there it is so is there two creatures that are valuable enough to bargast that madman decides to play talent scout twice and pop the soul bomb. All right, so he's obviously still just getting a lot of information irregardless. Yeah, um, taking a look at everything, right? Takes takes the Morik. He pops the soul bomb. Is he doing it? Did I call it? 
<laughs> yeah, make sure to give all your, each other your cards because there's so much. Yeah, there's a lot of so interactions much there. Infiltrators. And there's the that second is, DR guy. Does he take the Tom Scout? Does he take away Vargas's creatures and his answers? Leave him, leaves him with a bad turn next turn. Or does he take something else and just builds up the board? You didn't see what got put in his hand just yet. I'm discarding the historian Lee Dark. Yeah, because of the discard pip on the DR guy. There so it there is. it is. I called it. You nailed it. You <laughs> nailed it. It's almost like you know these players. <laughs> <laughs> so which one does he take this time? He's taking Snippy. Can he? Does it kill him? Does that work like it's that? Is G calling it out? It's on my side. I mean, like, yeah, no, got... It hasn't resolved yet. He or has to hit the Morik, or or no? Never mind. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not good at this game. <laughs> yeah, uh, it looks like it looks like that worked. I think because the playability is yeah. I mean, it's in play. So yeah, I think he can deal the two damage to the town scout and. and um, it's fine. All right. So obviously now passing turn. Vargas was able to forge, but that was a really big turn that was for a really good turn. there. Look, look at his amber pile. He destroyed his board, made a ton of amber, disrupted his hand. He only has four cards to play with now. Um, not great. Yeah, choosing the Brobnar creature. I think that's correct. Halsey, you only discarded one only captured one unfortunate but I don't think he could have taken him off a Kia otherwise anyway so um, just trying to see if he could uh, get some decent amber control uh, going into the next key all right and at this current moment we are currently completely even both one keys both three amber yeah that last turn really just swung things. Yeah, that was that was a massive turn for Mammon. Um, and again, I think the rec the recklessness it, it, he's he's riding that momentum off of um, uh, the two winds of death uh, being in the discard. Yeah, right? there's he has no reason to be uh, scared of winds of death right now. With the draw pip. Yeah. Having another just explosive turn. Already threatening that second key and building up towards the the third key. The third key. Yeah. One key, eight amber. Calling for check. And so it looks like there is the weak link in his hand. But he's going to have to try to figure out the best way to try to make that happen if we get to that third key and yeah. he needs to start to stall some. We did see him do it creatively before. Yeah, so. it, it can happen, right? Shows the snippy. Okay. I think, yeah, it probably makes sense. He's probably not going back into Geist to it. So it, or sorry, back into um, Equidon after that last turn. So... The guy's toy is probably the correct answer to stun and exhaust there with the phantasmal visit. Uh, plays two albeit strays. They both come in ready since Vargas is haunted. Um, he's going to reap first to draw two cards off the touchstone since he is haunted. Let's see what he gets. Doesn't give him any good answers. Reaping for two, capturing two. All right. Going to four amber. Is he going to be able to get him is off? He going to? Is he going to boo himself or is he going to boo Mammon? What do you think is the correct play in this regard, or what would be your play? 
knowing that both Winds of Death are in his discard pile currently. I'm trying to think if the memorial lies for... I think he chooses himself. I think he wants to flip, get into back into his cards. Um, no, he chose, he chose Mammon. All right. Okay, so Mammon will be flipping next turn if he plays even a single card. All right, so there's the second key forged. Fargas not quite at check just yet, but not too far behind. But as you said, that second key is normally where things start to turn. Mm -hmm. Yep. Discarding two off the Awakening Titan. I did see the Fiery Jark. So Fiery Jark, you're going to put in some some nice board control here. Get rid of, you're probably going to get rid of the Snippy and maybe the Awakened Titan. Oh, the Lifting Buddy. Okay. Rid of the lifting buddy, snippy, snippy, and fiery jark to get three amber. Yeah, I think he, I think he pretty oh, much yes. just wanted to get that the the power counters uh, right. there, and then just was very much like that was the that's what I wanted out of lifting buddy. I'm yeah. good going from there. I, I I like how he he values the historianly dark ends, and based on the actions that I've seen in mammon mammon deck, I I would agree. The Historian Lee Darkens can put in a lot of work for him because um, there's a lot of Amber Control in in Equidon. So getting those cards back after playing them can really be brutal. Yeah, and I was going to say, just for the newer players, what does that card do? Historian Lee Darkens, so after after you reap uh, the topmost card on both players, uh, discard pile get put into their hands. So um, there is a lot of cool plays where Mammon has... A generous offer, security details, or an out negotiate. Um, those are three of probably the best cards in a sealed deck that I've seen so far. But you can play it, reap, get it back, play it again, um, and that's that. That would just be a massive swing, um, put him in a great position. Yeah, and so I just want to comment again. We we saw it in the first game, we saw it in this game, and here in the third game, we're hitting 30 minutes, not even 15 minutes into this game yet, and the, the speed race had happened, right? <laughs> yeah. And this is where we usually get to that point, right? Like, we're at 30 minutes, um, someone already has two keys, but this is where things start to take a turn, um, and we start to slow down a little bit. Yep. <clears throat> There's the under pressure. What's the under pressure on the fiery jar? Okay. And put the damage. Uh, yeah, and put the damage on. Uh, pip on there. Tendrils. Oh, okay, that's why. So we're gonna put the historically dark in back in his hand. I okay, that makes that makes a lot more sense. But yeah, make him uh, force him to have to play Equidon again. Oh, and puts the other one into his hand. Just a lot of disruption. That's very good. And going up to nine, just made a ton of amber and. Cleared the board, slowing Mammon down just a bit, so um, it's looking good. Yeah, we see obviously Mammon having a lot of. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I know you. I, I was waiting for it. And I was like, he, he's done it twice so far. Is he gonna do it a third time? But I don't see if he has the ledger yeah, in hand. I don't think he does. It's worked every time so far, is why. <laughs> oh, what's the? Fobivore on his own creature. He has to. There's no other, there's no creatures on um, Fargas' side, so. I would assume he was just really wanting to play that for the Amber Pip? Yep, you gotta play it for the Amber. Every Amber counts in Sealed. It's, it's really good, unless you know that your opponent can take it, I, I think you definitely play it for the Amber. Mm -hmm. Okay, we see the memorialize in Vargas hand. Does he have a lot of creatures in the discard pile? I know Vargas does. Yeah. He does does I, Mammon. I don't Because think he recently many, right? flipped, yeah. I don't think he does. There's not that many, right? 
does he hold he holds it I agree yeah does he flip one two he does that's big so held the memorialized knew he was able to flip by just playing three cards um, and now as much as Mammon bursts here there is a certain number that he can probably take him off for. So, um, gonna be a big turn. Or Mammon has to have a big turn, so the Memorialize does not take him off of check. What card do you think uh, Vargast is hoping he hits here with this draw? Smith. Smith with group would be great, because he can clear the board memorialize Smith so not only has he taken him off of check he's put himself into check and his Brahminar creature is still alive so he can still reap for two and that would be a big swing ooh so Mammon went Equidon Lane ooh and this is a this is a great um, instance of this where historically dark and affects both players right mm -hmm. but since Vargas just flipped. He doesn't get the benefit. Yeah, that's right. He does not that's get the card in his hand. That's actually a really good point. And like I said, Mammon is bursting. He is bursting as much as he can. Ooh, and then the security detail. All right, so there's only going to be three creatures in Mammon's discard pile, so the Memorialize actually does not do enough. Does he have the weak link play? <laughs> I mean, does he have the weak link play, or does, does he go off with Soul Bomb? Do you... The Soul Bomb can't be activated because he's not Oh, you're anymore. right, yes, because he doesn't have yeah. the discard pile, you're right. The Torch Tooth would be enough to get rid of everything. So he can go the torch tooth, but there is, there's really, I think there's only, he would only be putting these three creatures in the discard pile. So he's going Brabnar. But I. All of us, including uh, the viewers in chat, are just anxiously awaiting each yeah. tr each card play, trying to figure out if if our gas is going to have enough. Will Does he, he will he be enough? a a two time winner on yeah, the same weekend? That would be crazy. Uh, He's going to reap. He's going to take himself to six. He's going to memorialize. How much is it? Let's find out. Is it four? two, three. It is. It's enough. He takes him off a check. Ooh. There's still one more go. Ooh. They're still fighting. The game's not over yet. Oh, boy. That was good. And now Vargast is at six. Yep. This is here. Now, I did see a BR Geist in um, Mammon's hand. That doesn't necessarily mean he goes Geistoid. Right. know if he's haunted is he he's not haunted yet so he okay well never mind <laughs> that will make him haunted oh and there's the, the second junk, junk restoration with the for, discard yep, pips look for what you need that is good it's gonna dig for the answers right mammon needs to look for those answers and i think he's going to find them of course this is where turn order or play yeah. timing comes into play yeah. when does he want to play which card and what when, yeah. when is it key there is yeah there is a lot of decisions that need to be made here um, I think it's coming down to the last few turns and Mammon yeah thinking it out making sure everything gets played in the correct order so there's the second chuck restoration, the two discard pips. Here we go. Two, three. Oh, gets rid of the Memorial of the Fallen. I don't think he wanted to see that in the discard pile, but he can take it to hand. 
Alright. Can use it for next turn. So. And he should be haunted now. Yeah, it definitely looks like he's haunted at this point. Just hasn't really flipped that token. Yeah, it's one of those things you forget. And that archiving the junk restoration. He has the BR Geist. Is there a card in his discard pile that allows him to capture one amber? Spontaneous awakening. What's it gonna be? Nightmare Inducer. Okay. Beer Geist. Does Mammon have an Albi Astray? I think he does. I think there's one. I could be wrong because I, I mean, know there's, Vargas there's, has two. I was like, he Vargas has, has two. Vargas I know has two. Vargas has two. There might be a third one. <laughs> so Mammon's looking. There's not a clear answer. He's, he's thinking everything over. Talent Scout would have been great because maybe, maybe Vargas has an answer in his hand. <laughs> That's it. That's Vargas it. Vargas takes it. Oh and Vargas is your winner of Sealed. Wow. What a performance. That was incredible. Uh, that game was... And, and Mammon was was in the lead going into uh, that third key, right? Yeah. And honestly, holding that Memorialize the Fallen to flip and uh, gaining that uh, gaining that momentum essentially to make sure that he's not losing his Amber and taking that Amber away from Mammon. Um, and just enough too. Yeah. Four creatures. If he had any, any less, he would have taken him off key. Yeah. So everything lined up really nicely. Very well played, Vargas. Congratulations, that was that was amazing. Yeah, that was that was great, and I think it comes back to something that you said earlier about Vargas is um, always very methodical, very yes. calculated. Um, probably did uh, look at the you know enough on the field, and also with what was in Mammon's discard, and kind of was like, well, I think I can do just enough to get it happening, and then like you said just hitting that four just pulled mammon off of check and then mammon just didn't have anything because on top of it with br guys um you know he couldn't get that talent scout uh talent scout to potentially do what yeah, he needed potentially get the answer that he needed from vargas hand yeah it was yeah it, and mammon played it so well like like i said he going into that turn he knew that memorial has fallen was probably something that vargas had and he tried to burst up as much as he could to stay away from that that threshold of being able to take him off a check but it just wasn't enough yeah just wasn't yeah. enough but again congratulations to Vargas a two-time winner congratulations to Mammon for making all the way as the runner-up but that is all the Keyforge action we have for you here at Vault Tour Roseville I hope you all have enjoyed what you've seen here on the stream obviously we have a lot of Vault Tour stops on the way both here in the U.S. and international coming up we'll have those international dates coming very very soon so be on the lookout for those um, but of course the next one if I remember correctly is Rochester Rochester um, so yeah. of course make sure that you're there the weekend uh, first weekend of may so until then everybody that has been everything here for ghost galaxy at vault tour roseville gorlami thank you so much again for joining thank me for here me. and also thank you for all the other people who have been joining here for the streams uh and commentating obviously we'll see you guys again in rochester but until then keep on forging enjoy yourselves and we'll see you next in the crucible <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.